Yo, what's good, y'all? It's probably gonna be just like a watch party or some shit. What's good, y'all? What up, Charlie? What up, Cartoons? What up, No? Man, where the fuck is it? I can't even find it. There it go. Make sure everything good. Wait for a couple more people to come up in here. Found you over at Twitch. Hit that follow. Yeah, y'all go follow me on Twitch. What's good, y'all? This live stream gonna be different. We still gonna do the freestyle live streams. We gonna do it at the end, but we gonna watch this. I saw this last night. I'm not even gonna lie. I think some of y'all already seen this documentary. It's about beef. It's called Beef. R.I.P. P.N.B. Rock. Yeah, R.I.P. Uh, P.N.B. Rock, bro. For real. I want to watch a documentary with y'all, bro. I saw this last night, and I thought it'd been good for it to be a little watch party. Hold on. Let me fix something real quick. How you get this shit off my screen? Oh, there you go. As Sparks, what's the word? What up, Toe? <laughs> what up, Toe? Yeah. I'm waiting for a couple more people getting up in here. Y'all get them lights up. What up, bro? How you feeling now? Bro, Jay, I just recovered from the shit, bro. Literally, like, when I came back a couple days ago, I just recovered from the shit. I'm feeling better, though. It's like a little bit of cost, but I'm feeling better. Have you seen the Sar Face MF Doom Super War album? Never seen you react to it. Yeah, I want to react to one of the songs off that project. I was supposed to review the whole project, but y'all know shit, shit come up. But I'm, uh, I'm probably gonna react to one of the songs off that John. Those videos that Quincy Jones son produced, right? You talking about this? This is beef. I wanted to react with this with y'all, bro. We're going to have a good live stream today. After we react to the documentary, we're going to do the regular freestyle live stream. So, Yeah, I, I took a lot of vitamin D, bro. I ain't going to lie. A lot of them. Yeah, I feel a lot better, though. It's like for three days, two, three days, I was feeling horrible. Then I started feeling a little bit better, but I was just like coughing a little bit. Let's see. I'm glad you're watching this. I'm going to fill you in all the beef. All right. So, any of those that just came through, like I said, get them lights up. This live stream, we're going to watch beef. Now, this is a three-part documentary. We're going to watch... I don't know if we're going to watch all three because all of them like an hour long. I don't know if y'all want me to react to some of the parts of the first one. And we're going to do the regular freestyle live streams. But I want to react to this with y'all. Because I like doing little watch party of documentaries like this. I'm going to start doing this more often. So, And y'all can fill me into the beefs and whatnot. We're going to have a fun live stream, man. For real. Quincy Jones produced three. Okay. I think someone says his, his son. You're the man. I love your reaction channel. I appreciate it, Brody. Yeah, yeah, you, you should. I recommend you. I got you, bro. Yeah, I got you. I gotta, I gotta react to more MF Doom songs on my channel. It's been a minute. React to all three, bro. Just do two, the other two on different. Like, all right, bet. <coughs> we gonna get this started, y'all. know I'm still coughing, bro. I, just, I, I think that shit lasts for like a, a long time, but the symptoms, damn, they're gone. Man, artist then. What, hey, what's up with you and Jason Kidd, the assist, man? Like, they gotta be, man. That gotta be the greatest uh, uh, 45 assists ever. How you doing today, my guy? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Uh, distant. R.P. Us, Pat Stay, bro. I I've been knowing about Pat Stay for a minute. Rest in peace to him. Yeah, we're gonna get this shit started, man. Like, like the live stream, get them lights up, man. We're going to sit back and enjoy it. This is going to be a fun one, bro. Let's get it. Angelo. Rock and Picasso were so similar in their cubist style. The Nas and Jay-Z beat the highlight of the first one. 
I'm already t I'm already knowing it's gonna be on this one. On on one of these. Uh, it was difficult sparks. to tell who painted. <clears throat> The traditionalist Brahms and the avant-garde Wagner created a division among classical music enthusiasts. Fights were known to break out before premieres. And long nights on the what road up, hoodie, provide bro? opportunity for musical warfare between jazz greats and bird and today. One musical art form born in the inner city with roots in Jamaican dance hall music. Embrace this spirit of competition like no other, creating a provocative world of words, taunts, and insults. This musical art form would create a culture. This is beef, artist. This is beef. This is like a documentary, bro. I want to watch this with y'all. I want to have one of these. Hold on. I don't even got this shit on the screen. It isn't on the screen. Hold on. It's on the screen. I'm tweaking. I thought this shit. Y'all can see it for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, this is beef, though. This is beef. This is called beef. Just, like, reviewing all the beefs and all the hip-hop history. This is going to be a They're called hip-hop, and thus began the battle I like of you. the Don't MCs. do Jay-Z like that. Bro. I never thought I would see the day where I met or heard the wackest rapper in the world, because I've heard a lot of wack rappers, but he very well possibly could be the worst rapper in the world. Dre is a BG. What are you talking about? I mean, a the baby Eminem? gangster. And he ain't even a gangster. <laughs> you gotta know that this nigga is a fucking freak. He's a phony. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? He's a fucking well, phony. Well, I'll tell you, I love you, Nori. Step your rap game up, man. Black child said it the best. Who beef with a snitch? Wow. My <laughs> yards running your mouth complaining about summer jam. I was in flip-flops in the south of France. So yo, 50, what's the definition of a wankster, man? I mean, what is that? Ja Rule, Irv Gotti. Alex, don't, don't play with Jay-Z so. like that. Man. Come on, give me a kiss, you little faggot. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say? Hold on. Wankster, man. I mean, what is that? Ja Rule, Irv Gotti. Fuck your little bitch ass up, nigga. Come on, give me a kiss, you little faggot. <laughs> <laughs> yo, they dissing you, son. Oh, he's, he's a hater. hater. He's man, a hater. No. This dude ain't saying nothing about it. I said, you acting like a bitch. He said, you acting like a bitch. Come at me. If I was writing about me, I would kill me. I didn't even know him. And I jumped in that shit head first and said, nigga, fuck you and whatever. What up, y'all? I'm going to get at 50. He's a... He yeah, this the beef. This the beef series. I'm going to watch this for sure. I ain't never seen this. He's the real wankster. You got about 15 different beefs that you can <coughs> throw Cold Crush and Fantastic. The real Roxanne and Roxanne Shantae. Homo D caught Busy B. Kane or Coogee Rap. I can out rap Ice T. Big Daddy Kane beef or Coogee Rap? Well, I got a lot more videos that's coming up, man. I'm doing, man, I want to get back to that uh, that whole wave that I used to do when I was reviewing with Beanie Siegel and uh, Jada Kiss. I'm going to start going Ice Cube versus NWA. I was a vicious battle. It was, it was from the heart. Jerry Allen. B.I.T. Snoop and Corrupt. Harmon and Cube. Oh, you don't like Hammer. Tupac and Hammer got into it. <laughs> Said Paul. <laughs> that's punk shit. Tupac, Benzino, West and Pink, and Biggie. Rest in peace. The East Coast and the West Coast. That East Coast, West Coast. East thing. Coast, West Coast. East 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 Coast, West Coast beat. But I'm not old school. Because I bust these new cats ass. Wow. Yeah, yeah this is part of one. Cool J went at Source people rush the loonies people. God damn, cat. Jay-Z made comments about Mob D. Yeah, a bitch ass nigga for saying that. He said, I'm about a dollar. Who the fuck is 50 Cent? He said, I'm a Mac 11. I'm a higher caliber MC. That's no question. I said, nigga, I don't give a fuck where you from. Nigga, you in L.A., nigga, and you a lose tonight, nigga. Jay-Z and Nas. DMX is cursing out. Jay-Z and Nas. Don't fuck with dogs. Actually, somebody got shot in the club that night. Jay-Z and DMX beat? <laughs> Karras versus Nelly. Nelly? Bad what the Chris. fuck? <laughs> These some crazy beef. <laughs> a gang of drama. Beef. 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 Hey, what year was this made? This looks like it's like made way back in the day. battle i think on history our most famous battle is busy being kumo d this battle took place over two decades <coughs> ago 
and is still being heard today. I heard about that battle in Brooklyn as a graffiti artist. That's how, like, an, like as an atomic explosion went out. That was in Harlem World Stage, 116th Street, Lenox Avenue. Right here, Harlem World, you understand what I'm saying? This is the place. It's a, old, it's a supermarket now, they got met food. But that's the world famous Harlem World right it there. Legendary. It do Harlem like to Busy B was more of a, what they would call a celebrity club rapper. He would just I need to start reacting to 1980 hip hop too, instead of just doing 90s a lot and early 2000s. I need to do the 80s. Kind of go into a club, you know. Busy B was known to bite people's rhymes. He'd take a little bit of your rhyme and a little bit of his rhyme, but he could go in and rock the party. Busy B represented the 50s, 60s, and 70s. R.P. DJ K. Slick. Bob and Dang Dang Diggy Diggy. And Kumo D was more of a serious rapper who, who wrote rhyme, rhymes and was more. He was in the treacherous three. Good, good look. This is the last time you'll ever see this picture. <laughs> Only a few <laughs> battle masters know how to beat the party MC, because in a lot of cases the party I MC will look Kumo like he won. D. But if you listen to it on wax or if you listen to it once you got the tape home. You would probably react to Ice T. Yeah, I gotta react. All 80s music. I gotta hear more poetic value Ice in the other too. Guy. But the party MC is about the live interaction. So this, I guess, this changed the landscape of hip hop for, for Kumo D to really battle Busy B, who wasn't really a battle MC. But Busy B was a battle MC. He just <coughs> battled in the old-fashioned way, which was to basically rock, who can rock the party the most. The battle with Busy B was spontaneous. It wasn't planned. I was actually the host of the MC contest. And Busy B, he's a character. He's one of the funniest guys in hip hop, without question. And Busy B comes in like Ali used to do at the training camps. I'm knocking out all bums. I'm coming in here. I'm zooming in. Because Chief Rock Busy B, you know what I'm saying? Let me take a picture with his coat, because this is my trophy. Let me take a picture with it right now. So he bent down and he was taking pictures with the trophy or whatever. And it was like comical. And one, it always takes one heckler. So one heckler looks up and says, you can't beat him. And Busy B says, I don't care who it is. I beat anybody. I, you know, I don't want 800 of these in a row, taking pictures and he's posing or whatever. Just give me the trophy right now, because nobody can beat me. I'm Chief Rocker Busy B. I'll be back to claim this in about 25 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I'm gonna let everybody else go ahead and do what they got to do, because I'm gonna win this thing. And the guy says again, but you can't beat Mo D. And he says, I don't care who it is. Anybody get in here is gonna be suicide. That's it. Fans I'm knocking out all bums. I'm knocking out all bums. I don't even know what I expected him to do. Like, was he supposed to turn around and say, no, I can't beat him? Because that wouldn't be, you know, that's not my cheese <laughs> That wouldn't work. So he did what he was supposed to do. It always be the fans that antagonize his beef that keep on riling it on. Like, supposed to do it was just fans. out of whack at the time. So I said, I can't believe he didn't acknowledge that he couldn't beat me in a battle. Harris so I go up to the guy that's, that's in, in Harlem World to so put my name on the list. He said, you getting in the battle? I said, yeah. I said, and put me on right after Busy B. I was on stage doing it. It was my turn to rock. I felt every time it's my <coughs> turn to rock, I like to enjoy the crowd, make the crowd enjoy me. So I get on the mic, I do my regular ball, I'm with the ball, but dang, the dang, 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 rock, and making the people, oh yeah, scream, holler, and all that, right? You know, the competition was supposed to be over. Busy B rocked the party. The best to me is beef too. I feel like that might be the best too because I think that's gonna like track like the early 2090s and that's when beef and hip hop was crazy. I'm gonna watch some of the first one though. Like if you listen to the tape, Busy B was already on stage. Had Hold on. already. I remember when Slick Rick was calling out West Coast rappers, peon chumps, and peasants in one interview. He rocked the party. Slick Rick. Completely, people were totally satisfied with him. Once again, MC Busy B with Cool D. So then they say, oh, we got one more contestant. You know, you know, we didn't know he was going to get down, you know, so we're going to let him rap. And at that time, me, I'm not paying none of that no mind because I'm not even worrying about nobody trying to snap on me or say something hey, about on, me. Yo. So I'm not even figuring that's going to happen, right? So I go downstairs, I'm partying. Jeez, man, I took some time and rocked the house. You know what I'm saying? Look here. <laughs> now we go to the hotel, cool out. I got the limousine outside, I got girls, I got the champagne. We're gonna have some fun and work it out. Two party people in the place to be. My name is MC Kumo D from the Treacherous Three. My man LA Sunshine in the place to be. We gonna get a little something straight here in the place to be. How many people think Busy B Starsky rocked the house? 
I hear that in the place to be. Yeah. He did rock the crowd, but this is a battle. But if y'all notice it or not, you know, I heard a lot of shit, you know, Busy Beast popping shit, saying he'll take out any MC and I all that. Do it I alone. give it to the man, he know how to rock the crowd, but when it come to having rhyme, no way he can fuck around, and I'm gonna prove that right now. So now <laughs> I'm putting in your mind that what you just saw wasn't really anything. What to do now? Hold on, Busy B, I don't mean to be bold. Put that bar, do the bar bullshit on hold. We're gonna get right down to the nitty grit. I'm gonna tell you a little something why you ain't shit. There ain't an MC cock that you don't hug. You even bitch your name from the love bug. Okay, not a fighter, nigga, man. Miss some low down shit. Shut up. If you was money, man, you'd be counterfeit. The crowd is like <laughs> going berserk. Money, man, you'd be Because they're like, I can't believe he's attacking him like this. And it's by surprise. Nobody knew what was going to happen. So I'm at the lower level. I'm partying. We down there drinking, you know. And they coming out. Still talking, yo, Biz. Yo, Biz. I'm saying, what happened? Yo, Biz, yo, D going crazy over you. I said, what, who? Kumo D disrespecting you, calling you all kind of this, saying this and that. I'm like, yeah. Kumo D just well, goes there. out of the field and just demolished him. He shut him down. Kumo D kind of took Busy B apart. And they actually got it on the radio. The mixtape that floated around the world forever. Is that From DJ that point K on, the tape Recipe. became like a record. Everybody it looked like had K the tape, and people would run up to me and be like, I heard what you did to Busy B. Cause you're faking the fuck And at the end of this rhyme You can call me uncle Modi rock shop the house Call me uncle Rock the house The house the Like this y'all Now imagine going from From Barbidi Barbidanga Dang Diggy This is The changing of the guard Hold on brother man Don't you say nothing I'm not finished yet I gotta tell you something Too hot to try I'm here to rock the spot I'm gonna rock your ass Whether you like it or not The battle between Cool Mo D And Busy B Gave birth to the lyrical MC So was this the first ever beef Recorded In like hip hop history Y'all let me It gotta be Or at least the beef That changed the landscape I think someone said in the chat Of hip hop forever Number one You're not even the best And you can't win No real empty contest You now have to make sense Of what you said in order for us to give you power. <clears throat> to tell you the truth, that might have been the best thing for him. It worked out for me, and we've been friends before that. Never stopped being friends. Chief yeah. Rocker. All right. So let me know when the anniversary's gonna be. Like oh, I said, said, no, no surprise oh, attack, yeah. no dumb shit. <laughs> this must have been like the first <laughs> big beat to change the word. That he's just cool mode beat, not busy beat. And I wouldn't see him straight down at all. I was like, oh, Did he respond to it? I have to battle down when the chief comes in now. If Kumo D had lost that battle, nothing we're saying today would be said. The way we're saying nothing. It would not exist. We would all today would have to start our rhyme with well, Bob and Bob and Dang and Dang Diggy Dick. We've always done something with words and we've always done it in a way where I think it's kind of competitive. What was uh, Socrates and Aristotle and all those people doing with words when they had these debates in Greek society all the way back to Africa? You'll find that there was word play and there was some sort of competition with words. What are debates about? War of words. How can you one-upmanship? How can you manipulate words and move the crowd or convince people? When you take it all the way from Africa to slave times, you're dealing with all types of word games that people have played, whether it was the Brer Rabbit Tales or bad. signifying the monkey, even mama jokes, where the object of ridicule was the master who didn't know that the slaves were just substituting somebody's mama to have him be the object of the joke. So they bring it as H. Rap Brown wrote a book called Die Nigga Die. Slave, and in like that book, he kind of outlines what he was doing in the 50s. And he describes okay. people standing around in a circle and what sounds like a cipher today, where you have a bunch of brothers standing around rhyming against each other. Number one, young nigga, pass the mic on a two. Pass the <laughs> mic on a three, young nigga, you pop hugs on you. One of the immediate predecessors uh, uh, to rap was this uh, game called The Dozens. Ice-T called Scooby D to get the okay to make six in the morning because it's cadence throughout the song. Hmm. I th yeah, that, yeah, that's the Ice-T song, ain't it? Six in the morning. Then The Dozens really was a, a rhyme game where you talked about people's moms. At your you mama house. Your mama? Oh, your mama's so fat. Well, your mama's favorite year was fight the shower. Ah, ha, ha. He said fight the shower. 
That puppy gave me blood. That gotta be good for me. I remember talking to uh, Rudy Ray Moore. You know, people know him as Dolomite, and he described how people had all this wordplay when he was coming up. Dolomite is my name, and rapping and tapping is my game. I'm the one that killed Monday and whooped Tuesday and put Wednesday in the hospital. Rhyming is a part of uh, Jim Brown. Uh, what you have to do when you do. What they got Jim Brown in here for? If rhyming is a part of. Game meditator. Or mediator. Jim Brown used to speak. <laughs> Lies, y'all lying. Uh, James, <laughs> Jim Brown. What you have to do when you do certain things. You have to make it rhyme. When you talk trash on a certain level. I just want to know the origins of beef, <laughs> for real. The DJ said, hear the microphone. Somebody tell everybody how great I am. That's why early rap records were always about the DJ. It was like, Grandmaster Flash cut so on, and my DJ is this, and my DJ is that. Now this MC has the microphone, so what he would do is say, yeah, you know, by the way, you know, the DJ's this, but I'm kind of nice, and I'm kind of fly, and I live in a house, and I got this, and the girls want me, and the girls would scream. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next guy would get on the mic and say, yeah, you know, the, the last guy was kind of good, but I'm a little better. And by the way, I was with his sister. Everyone wow. in their own mind, by their own right, thanks to number one. Dang I'm there. I'm tight. Wow. I see a lot of talent, but I see no <coughs> one But you will never fuck with me lyrically, because I'm on some other shit. You got to be able to... Shout out to Davey D and Jim Brown. Was Jim Brown part of a group or something? Y'all let me know. Same tempo, but really similar. PSKB was on the high, a sync, med type shit. They said it was high as fuck. Okay. He the blacks, black supreme. I don't know how to say that word. I ain't gonna lie, Jay. King. Able to do what I do, plus. We've heavyweight champions in the world for the last seven, eight years. Yeah, no. Nope. But you know, hey, I'm ready for anybody. We got the number one round niggas in the game. Right here, right here, sitting in front of you. Like I said earlier, I deserve a lifetime achievement award. <laughs> Rap started off as a, as a con, full contact sport. It was highly aggressive. It's gonna be aggressive. Hip hop is competitive. Find a rapper that doesn't think he's the best. I want to see that and, 50 and Cent and John Rule. I bet you it'd just be some guys playing around. The battle was like. The way you took your steps to showing that you was the greatest. MCN was about being the freshest, being the dopest. If you're gonna say you're number one, you gotta, you gotta prove it. You know, you step up money, then I'ma step up. Yeah, man. Two people can't be in the same room saying they the best. They gonna have to battle. I heard the uh, Big Daddy Kane make a new album. I wanna do a um, album reaction of it live and shit. Jim just teaching the critical race there. Okay. They got to prove it. Let's go to the stage. Let's hit me and you. Forget that rap. <coughs> Forget all of that. Just hit the drum machine and let's go. My man G Rap, pull this all on you. So get on the mic and do what you want to. No thanks. Back to him, Dick. Uh, it's not about how you look or what you did, how many bitches you fucked, how many rings you got, or none of that. It's who can rhyme the best. That's what it's about, yo. Straight up being on the street corners, you know what I mean? It was no disrespect. It was just a, a thing of a skills. Showing who got more. It was kind of like practice. If you ever was on the Little League. Jim Brown was help, was big helping in a lot of gang chain. Okay, that's dope. Shout out to Jim Brown. Yo, it's running around the hood. It's your practice to get set for the game. The exactly. game is out here in the industry. You know what I mean? So if you can't make it on the streets, you can't come out on the industry because anybody can test you at any time. And the thing is, you ain't got to be the one that's coming out dissing anybody, but they will come at you to see where your skills is at. So Try if you saw a shop, you got to do it and battle on the streets. That's where it's from. It's like the difference between a pro ball and a street ball. You know what I'm saying? Pro ball is cold, and that's where the money is at. But the street ball niggas is the nicest ones. You know what I'm saying? And the way they do moves like that, it's more personal, it's more competitive, you know what I'm saying? That's what battling is to rap. You're never gonna be able to get as deep into competition as you will in the ghetto community. In the hood, they really wanna win. You gotta win to get out the hood. Because you gotta remember, Thanks. being the best dancer is probably the best thing you're ever gonna be. It's all competition. You know, you don't have that many opportunities. So to be the best rapper is a big thing. I think any MC worth their salt has been in a battle 
has been in rhyme competition one point or the other. So even your most thugged out, street cat, hat backwards, go tooth wearing, I'm just hustling, has been in a battle or has had some sort of rhyme competition. Every year, I write a battle rhyme for the entire top 10 of Billboard. No wow. disrespect. It's just the way I practice. Always remember, if you're in the top 10 of Billboard, I have a rhyme to battle you straight up that will destroy it's your competition. Career. Check it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now listen. I say it's great in this world to always be an MC, but somebody in this world is always beefing with me. Every time that I could rock it, Supernatural does the stun it. But do you know what? Tim Brown was an original, was in the movie original Gangsta's movie. Oh, that's dope. One beef for we. That's why I'm thinking about doing Jason, for real. Just one, one of my reviews. One beef for we. Two rappers going at it, or a whole crew going at it. Real. It's like fun. to live the life of the hunted Everywhere you walk, yo, you're always a target Whether I'm shopping or buying food at the market Cats wanna battle me and kill my carcass Yeah, that's when the hour really is the darkest But listen to me, Spark, this as far as I can free I learned from Cool Mo D and Busy B When KRS-One, this MC share It's probably the one that I think sticks out in everybody's mind oh, I And I think probably set a standard <coughs> uh, Just Where's that, the battle between the Juice about. Crew and BDP, oh, Boogie know. Down Productions. As hip hop grew in the mid 80s, New York's different neighborhoods began to take credit for its creation. Was it the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, or Harlem? Me and my man, Dude, Shan, made a uh, <laughs> intermission record for Queensbridge party that we used to have in the park out there at Queensbridge. The 70s and early 70s is when. You know, the hip-hop started out there. They was playing in the park. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen we got MC Shan and Molly Mall in the house tonight. They just came from off tour. They want to tell you a little story about where they come from. Mr. Magic, who at that time in the mid-'80s was the pinnacle and the height of what it meant to be an on-air DJ who played hip-hop music. <coughs> he was the man. Um, known around the world, Mr. Magic's Rap Attack. And here you had up and coming artists, KRS One, Scott LaRock, uh, bringing their record to Mr. Magic and him not feeling it. What up? Bobby, let's go KRS One, Scott LaRock. This is how we barge in. Yo, this is Boogie Down Productions, KRS, Scott LaRock. Here's our tip. We're performing right there, <laughs> like this. So obviously, Mr. Magic is like, who are you? Get out of here. And at the <laughs> same time, Mr. Magic was also supporting. R.I.P. Mr. Magic. I ain't know he passed away. Recipes of Mr. Magic. Always oh, coming, unfortunately. Queens get the money. Uh, a number of. Oh, MCs yeah, I guess I guess it's going to be after this. Master huh? Ace and Craig G and <coughs> Big Daddy Kane and all these other folks that were collectively just called the Juice Crew. We the leave Juice frustrated. Crew. Magic dissed us. He wouldn't even give us the time. He wouldn't even. Who he think he is? Now, somewhere along the line, we get the impression that Mr. Magic said our tape was whack, whack, whack. He heard it and said it was garbage. I said garbage? MC Shan is garbage. So I went back Damn. to my shelter, sitting amongst 600 men, <laughs> bugging out. He said I'm sitting on the edge of my men. bed. I'm writing South Bronx. South, South Bronx, South Bronx. So my issue was what MC Shan said in the record. You love to hear the story again and again about how it all got started way back when. The monument is right in your face. Sit and listen for a while to the name of the place. The bridge, the bridge, the bridge, the bridge, the bridge, Queens Bridge. I said, uh-uh. It was $25 an hour. Shit got serious. Track studio. The bridge is over was a uh, classic Dixie. Bro, I reviewed that on my uh, on my channel a while ago. That that diss record was he dissed the whole hood like the two hours. Karis fifty dollars. <coughs> I reviewed that song. That, that what you hear on the South Bronx is one take. Scott was complaining that I took too long. The guy didn't even mix the record. There's no mix. And we kept one, and we gave one to Red Alert. <laughs> 
DJ Red Alert, one of New York's premier club and radio DJs, played parties at New York's Latin quarters. And that's when your heart stops right there. Heart stops. Because right then and there, Red Alert can tell you to get out. It's corny. Look, man, you ain't Says got a corny. shot. Red Alert will tell you in a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't like the record. You, you don't have a shot. Wow. And your career's over. Wait, and one song goes on. When he going to play the record? He probably don't like it. Now the song go on. Boom, our song comes on. The whole place stops. Oh, I see. Yo, what's up, Blastmaster KRS-1? And then doing like this. And by the time we got to, and I'm from the South Bronx, the South, South Bronx place erupted. South Bronx, South Bronx, South Bronx, South Bronx, South Bronx. Red Alert played that record three times in a row. And I think the South, someone told me the South Bronx was the murder capital of the country at the time. So they was the trenches for it. Uh, went the crowd every he tried to put on another record they sang the south bronx chant over that record damn so to put it on again and put it on again you can't imagine the feeling press for 86 suckers <laughs> go against sham was like meant nice. rock, so when KRS did that that's when the, everybody that listened to rap had to really sit down and take it serious after the triumph at Latin Quarter, KRS One star began to rise, with South Bronx on the radio as a direct challenge. With Shan, there was another beef with Shan and LL. This is LL on the song called Beat Biter. I got a review of MC Shan on my channel. Man. Chris claimed that I said I heard a lot that about him. started in Queensbridge, which I didn't. In the beginning of the song, MC you Shan. hear Marley say, "Oh, they want to tell you a story about the where Drew's they crew, come from." A group? That's the key word, where they come from, the bridge, the, 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 the bridge. Well, Chris took it, and he's like thinking, oh, more they talking about this stuff. Everybody knows hip-hop started in the Bronx, cool herc, every, you know. Time for the Bronx to come back, we came back live. So is there like a lot of resentment and everything after the record? Is it like a rivalry going on out there? Yeah, say that. Yeah. Yeah. My response to his response was, Kill that noise, cause you can't mess around. I don't really mind being criticized for those who try to make fame on my name. Die. South Bronx, killer, killer. So I just seen someone say LL bit. Trill, you think that? Cause I ain't gonna lie, just off put on. It kind of sound like LL Cool J on this one. Kill that noise, cause you can't mess around. MC Shan. I don't really mind being criticized for those Low who try key. to make fame on my name. South Bronx. Oh, it's a collective. Kill, kill okay. That noise. South All right, Bronx. Sure. Kill, kill, kill that, that noise. noise. And I was just like, yo, please, kill <coughs> that noise. Kill that noise. They said kill that noise. Then kill that noise came out. Then I put out the bridges over. Because it's all oh, right. shit. These are rhymes that I was saying. So I ran back in the studio the next week. And, and made this record, the bridges over. I didn't need to be in this hip-hop game with all the people in my camp, the cold chilling, and all, you know, everybody was negative. Even my own clique tried to play me low. Wow. Shan's my man and all that, but I think Chris, Chris kind of came out the victor a little. Didn't need the criticism, didn't need the people, you know, my own crew dissing me and dogging me. Ed <laughs> came out 85, Shan came out 86, oh, okay. I think I saw someone said it, and when he was spitting, it low key sound like LL Cool. Oh. What song is this? I found myself representing the Bronx. I mean, like, representing. I didn't realize how much a record did, you know, what a record did for pride, what a record did for esteem. The Bronx was alive again. <laughs> Bridge is over. I'm from Queens. Look how it's turned the crowd. Is. Keeps on making it. Brooklyn keeps on taking it. Brown keeps creating it. Queens keeps on faking it. Yeah. 
Shit was so hot, we still had to fuck with it. <laughs> and 50 Cent, ain't he for Queens too? That's tough. Shit was so hot, we still had to fuck with it. Nah, Tori, I think that's that's gonna be like later on. This is like part one. <coughs> so if you said anything about me, I was gonna get you, no matter who you was, where you was from, why you was there. I'm still the only guy in the whole game that represented and battled the whole barrel by myself. <laughs> if you thought MC Shan lost to KRS-One or if the Juice Crew lost, they were able to come I mean, back and still be end, legends Tori. because the hip hop community was forgiving. It's like, okay, they got you on that battle, but there's another tomorrow. That's dope. I've had the six cars in my yard. I've had the Mercedes. I still got the BM, the motorcycles, and all of this in my yard right now. Mm. I've had that. I'm in, I'm talking about planes and boats now. I ain't into cars and Chris. That's for you little punks. <laughs> I'm talking planes and boats because I spit shit directly being aimed at throats. I got doorbells with real bitches singing the notes. <laughs> Damn. I got new Chris lines, man. I got new lines to burn bitches. stuff. If there was no me, doorbells tell me would there ever be a notes. Chris? No QB? Tell me would there ever be a diss? Thank God and Miss Parker for the fact that you're here, but thank me for your career, you hear? MC uh. Shan could have won the battle simply by ignoring me. I'd be nowhere. There'd be no KRS-One, there'd be no 12 albums, no Stop the Violence movement, no Human Education Against Lies, no Temple of Hip Hop, nothing. It was because MC Shan understood hip hop that he said, oh no, this guy's stepping to me. Oh, shit. By the late 80s, LL Cool J had become a superstar, which increasingly in hip hop I meant see this. he had become a target. To the break of dawn, LL Cool J shot back at all his rivals. MC Hammer. Took my old gym teacher ain't supposed to rap. Cool he said, oh, I got the nerve to have him Star Trek shades on. And Ice T. Mr. Bushman, man, give me a fix so I can show you I'm immune. Said I'm a for room soon. You little hip hop raccoon. LL Cool J and his opponents brought the MC battle out of the clubs and on to the national stage where the rules were very different. I took the cover right home to the bathroom. And the immortal words of LL hard as hell. Your broad wears it well. She's the reason that your record sold a few copies. But your rhymes are slow. Where I was coming from, wow. being from the gang culture in the L.A. street, if somebody said something about you in the street, you immediately wanted to go see them. And it was like, you know, I could say something about you, but you yeah, can't I say see from LA. about me. LL murdered three people on one track. Y'all link down below what that track was. I'm gonna review it. Yeah, Uncle was mad. I love Biggie. I love Bridges Over, but I was seven and no. Okay. Y'all get the lights up. To the break of dawn. As crack cocaine ravaged urban America in the 1980s, rap music began to become a microphone for the rage and despair of the inner cities. That rage Be began to influence now. the music itself, and in no place like Boys Los Angeles. So Easy uh, told me to write a song for him. So I wrote a song, I wrote a song called Boys in the Hood. I talked to Eric and to doing the rhyme. The song was Boys in the Hood. He was like, yo, I ain't never rap before. I can't do this. So I eventually talked him into doing it. You know, he put on some it's dark glasses. To that and we cut the lights way, down dude. and the whole shit. You know, and he did it. Next day, you know, we had a hit record. Woke up quick at about noon. Just thought that I had to be in Compton soon. I got you know, one day they was like, you know what we're going to call this? We end up Easy. Right. Niggas with attitudes. Now, I don't know if Dre... Easy I gotta do some NWA reaction. I'm slacking. When they told me. So I was with it. I was like, cool. Before releasing NWA's. I see had a girl in the thong on his album cover. That's that's why I kind of. 
Yeah, that, <laughs> it was funny the way he said it. LL said first it. album, Easy E released Easy Does It, an Easy E solo album, written by Ice Cube, produced by Dr. Dre, and essentially made by N.W.A. That's the real album. It's new album, new Easy E album. For the fact, Easy Royalty statement came in, so I just know that this money is about to be broke up five ways. You know, and uh, everybody's gonna get paid because everybody contribute. You know, even though Easy was the name, N.W.A. put that record together. Okay, now a lot of people now see. I was just confused a little bit about that. Could you explain like N.W.A. and Easy E? Okay. It's an all-star group. It's all of us: me, Dre, Yella, Ren, Ice Cube. And uh, and it was me. like, nah, so, nah, this is this is Easy money. We getting N.W.A. money. I'm like. Easy, easy, and NWA the same thing. It ain't no difference. And mine is me solo. So he probably had a problem with all of them getting the cut from his own solo album. That's probably the, the main conflict of this. That's my album. It's by myself <coughs> solo. What he wanted to do was keep the Easy E money for himself, and then when the NWA record money came in, he wanted to split that. And cut himself into that. So that's when wow. it just started getting real hectic. People started asking me questions I couldn't answer about my contract, how long I'm going to sign, all these type of things where I didn't know. People have been telling me, you know, asking me about a solo album, I should do one. But uh, I'm all about my group, man. Established rock manager Jerry Heller was brought on to help run. I heard this, this dude was a snake. The good thing I like about Jerry, he don't care who hates him. You know, he's, it's business. It's, don't take it personal. It's business. You know, they say the same thing about Bill Gates. They say a lot of people hate Bill Gates, but hey, if it wasn't for Jerry Heller and Eric, it wouldn't be no Dr. Dre's. It wouldn't be no Ice Cube's. It wouldn't be a lot of this stuff going on now. Always into something so good. Don't NWA shit. Matter of fact, you should review the whole Niggas for Life album. I got you. Easy eat you. Nuts on your chain. <laughs> We were on the Straight Outta Compton tour, and um, some of the people from Priority Record came down there with the platinum records, and they came down and they set these $75,000 checks in front of all of us. What's this for? And he was like, okay, this is for, you know, record sales and for an advance on the next record. So we like, cool. But there was a but on the end of that. But NWA is not a group legally because there are no contracts signed. See, all, up until then, Everything was just verbal on a homeboy level. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And that's it. And this is how we're going to get paid. So Jerry like Heller comes in and he goes, yo, you guys are not a the group M5. until these contracts are signed. You can't get these checks. He's easy. He daddy. <laughs> I watched the movie, bro. Wherever easy went, he went. Uh, Jerry Heller went. Until these contracts are signed. So seeing $75,000 sitting on the table, so you stupid. know, we some kids out of Compton. We've seen most at one time two grand. So we like, okay, cool. Cube was the only smart one at the time. You know, he didn't sign the contract. They say the pen is mightier than the sword is, is also true. You know, that moment messed us up for a long time. Hmm. This Cube made me want to watch that NWA movie. And, you know, again. he wanted, he, he did it right. You know, hey, I'm not signing nothing. I caught Jerry Heller. Easy E hand in the cookie jar. And I was willing to say, you know, fuck it. I caught y'all, you know, just pay me what you owe me and we can keep on rolling. Mm. But, you know, they wanted to save face. They felt like if they paid me, they would have to pay everybody else. And, uh, you know, so they was kind of pretty much like, fuck you, nigga, what you gonna do, go solo? Ice Cube's first solo album, America. To Ice Cube, bro. That's what you call, that's what you call betting on yourself, man. That's what you call taking risk and really betting on yourself, bro. Because he could have flopped. He could have left NWA and just flopped. But we all know Ice Cube is that he a legend. Come on, bro. Erica's most wanted. Oh boy. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm more than happy on, on what's going on. I'm more than happy with the move. More than happy to really get my career going like I wanted to go. You know what I'm saying? You said a million copies later. Here we are. It's only five weeks into the album. You know what I'm saying? 
So, you know, I can't do nothing but be happy, you know? And some people told me, yo, I made a bad decision. What you think? When N.W.A. split, different crews went with different people. And, and he dropped no Vaseline to uh, Ice Cube the GOAT, man. You know, they, they was in, in conflict with each other. On the America's Most Wanted album, I didn't diss them at all. I didn't say nothing about N.W.A. Not even one word about nobody in the group. So for them to come out on they shit, you know, 100 miles and running and diss me, you know, that was their attitude. So now I spoke that the fifth couldn't make it. The numbers even, now I'm leaving. You know, I did a little diss oh, back in Jack and I'm leaving. And if I track you and you keep coming, I have you more than 100 miles and run. run. Hey, yo, yo, this is MC Ren from NWA. You I'll be back, yo. Uh, I'm going to give me something to drink. This, hey, this is going to be a fun one, man. Hold on, y'all be back. This shit crazy. West, you know what I'm saying? That fool Ice Cube put a diss on this record, yo. Hey, right, but why don't y'all tell them what we think about yeah, Ice Cube? Yeah, hit the light, get the lights up. You know what I'm saying? That's what time it is, you know what I'm saying? And that fool mine is playing tricks on him on our West. Check it out. <laughs> While the first songs contain only mild disses, the beef escalates with N.W.A.'s real niggas. They came back and did a bigger diss on me on their album, Niggas for Life. A message to Benedict Arnold. Yo, be original. Your shit is sloppy. Get off your dick, you motherfucking carbon copy. Only reason niggas speaking your record is because they thought it was up. Trying to be like us, sound like us. Ha <laughs> That's a good diss. He said we people bought your record because they thought it was up. Only reason niggas speaking your record is because they thought it was up. Trying to be like us, sound like though. us, dress like us. And then I came back with the death certificate. On his death certificate album, Ice Cube recorded No Vassal. I got that on my list too to review albums to review uh death certificate. Lean, a vicious attack on NWA and Jerry Heller. God damn it, I'm glad y'all set it off. Nah. Used to be hard, now you just went and soft. No Vaseline. No Vaseline. Living with the whites, one big house, and not another nigga in sight. I started off with too much car, go drop four niggas, now I'm making all the dough. No Vaseline. Yellow boys on your team, so you're losing. Hey, yo, Drake, stick to producing. Stick Calling to producing. me Arnold's butt, you Benedict. Easy E saw your ass and went in it quick. It was, it was <laughs> kind of hard. Cause you're getting fucked out your green by a white boy. With no Vaseline. We heard it, we was like, ooh. When I first heard No Vaseline, I laughed. And the first thing I did is picked up the fucking phone. I called E, I said, hey, what's up? I said, you and you and Q fucking or something? After no vaccine, <laughs> that was it. Now let's it's play so big crazy. bank, take little bank. Try to diss uh, Ice Cube, it wasn't worth it cause the broomstick fits your ass so Man, up the ante for this or battle record. He made a so lot of assholes. your manager, on this fellas. Way. Fucking MC Red, not the great. And yeah, uh, but if they were smart as me, easy to be hanging from a tree with no Vaseline. Just a match and a little bit of gasoline. Light them up, burn them up, play more. So that Jerry Kill is cool. I never knew the drama behind it would be his do death certificate for niggas for life. He said getting fucked by a wife. <laughs> Much a part of the success and the fame. This is dirty. You got the drama and the bullshit. I got the drama and the bullshit before I got the fame and fortune. You know, so. Yeah, I was real surprised. Shot. NWA never responded to no Vaseline, but the drama they within NWA responded. was far from finished. You know, one person decides he deserves a little bit more money than the other person, and that's when everything gets all, you know, crossed up. No trust no motherfuckers, because everybody in the music industry is out to get you. Several years after signing with Eazy-E and Jerry Heller, 
Dr. Dre also found fault with NWA's compensation practices. That's crazy. The white boy came in and kind of fucked it up. And his name is? Jerry Heller. <laughs> so Ice Cube left NWA because of money issues not getting paid is the same reason why Dr. Dre left because he wasn't getting paid. So that all this shit stems to that white white man, Jerry Heller, whatever dude name is. I've told y'all I heard he was a snake, man. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> kinda um, pulled easy to the side and he sold out, sold his soul. Bound by the contract signed on their first tour and with nowhere else to turn, Dr. Dre with an NWA bodyguard named Suge Knight oh, started shit. Death Row Records. Why did why did Ice Cube leave? Why did Dre leave? Same why reason. The ends wasn't right. Point blank. <laughs> Get funny with the ends. What up, Jordan? I had to do my thing, man. Try to make another people money. It's time to make Dre some ends. Hip-hop myth alleges Suge Knight and others visited Easy e and Jerry Heller with baseball bats to secure Dre's release from Ruthless wow. Records. It's easy said, like, y'all came with them at bats, you know what I'm saying? Nah, and man. Swinging and all that old thing, you know what I'm saying? Nah. Dr. Dre came that way at Easy, you know what I'm saying? Time out, because I have to ask y'all a question. Because I remember, I, I swear to God, it was like a couple nights ago, I, I listened to a... It was a Suge Knight interview, and he said, like, he was insinuating that he injected a needle into um, Easy e for him, that, that caused him to have AIDS. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. Y'all can let me know in the comments if that's true. I'm going to do my research on that, because if that's true, I, I can't look at Suge Knight the same no more, bro. I can't. He ain't this big, bad, tough guy no here. He, he, he a hoe for that, bro. Cause I heard you about know what that. I'm saying, Dr. Dre came that way at Easy. You know what I'm saying? Is that the way you got in the I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm innocent. Word, word, yeah. word. So what was what was the actual settlement as far as you know? What I'm Basically, saying? Dre was signed to me as an exclusive producer and an exclusive artist. So I owned him for six years. In order for Dre to make his oh, record yeah. deal, I had to make the deal possible for him to do yeah. it. So <laughs> he I said get a it's percentage easy, of his thing. record sales, whether he produces as an artist and whether he produced Snoop, Rage, Daz, Corrupt, or whoever else off Death Row. That's you don't see jack shit to come from Death Row. I make money off Dre's record sales. Yeah! How many niggas out there like Easy e Fuck if Easy motherfucking E! <laughs> you don't love that nigga! You can eat That's these Snoop. motherfucking nuts! Really now, just Death Row, big baby! Dr. Dre, Snoop, and Death Row came after Easy e on the Chronics. Fuck with Dre Day. <coughs> I'm directing, um... That's a rumor? Okay. Because that probably is a rumor. But I seen in an interview him saying, like, uh, oh, the person getting injected with AIDS. That's the thing. That's, the, like, the Easy e thing. Come on, bro. Like, when he said, like, that's crazy. Y'all gotta check out the interview. Some of y'all seen it. It was on a, he was on a talk show or something. Fuck with Dre, then. It was more vicious between Dre and Easy because that's the first time you really got to see, like, you know, uh, the belittling of a, a fellow MC, you know, in a video. The caricature of Easy E, the caricature of Jerry Heller. Excuse me, Dre. We're setting up the scene when we shoot Easy E. Do you want him shot with the 32 or the AK 47? Uh, use the AK. The AK. Fully automatic. Fully automatic. <laughs> <laughs> This one shit really got the to the streets for real. Fuck with. <laughs> yeah, we could do an NWA Reunion album if it's on Death Row. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. Yep. Yeah, bro. Without yeah. Easy. Without Easy. I don't know what talk show was on. NWE. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Niggas without Easy. Come, John, John, oh, shit. Easy E responded on wax and video with real motherfucking jeans. Damn, E. They tried to fade you on Dre Day. But Dre Day only met Easy Day Day. Wait, don't you remember Dre was back in the days he used to be in a world class wrecking crew? He used to wear <laughs> lipstick, lace, mascara, biker shorts, and everything. See, a lot of people don't remember all that when he did the cabbage patch and the fly and Dr. Dre, 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 Dre. And he didn't start hollering comp until he got with me. But that's explained. It was on the Arsenio. Y'all say Jimmy Kimmel Arsenio? It was some talk show. Something. 
Man, when I saw that, I couldn't look at uh, Suge Knight the same, bro. I couldn't look at him the same. I ain't gonna lie. And how it is in Compton. Oh, yeah. That, you remember he, like song called NWA did called Express Yourself? He said, I never smoke weed or cess because it's known to give a brother brain damage and brain damage on the mic don't manage. Now he's smoking weed and low ride and all of a sudden in 93 and claim to be an OG. OGs do stuff back in the day. Dre is a BG. I mean, a baby gangster. Journalist baby Kevin gangster. Powell interviewed Easy e for Vibe magazine just before Easy's death in 1995. And he, he was deeply hurt by the, 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 the belittling of him because Ice Cube had dissed him. <laughs> you know, yeah, Kim, okay. very hard. And then Dre and Snoop dissed him. It didn't seem the way, you know, like he had recovered emotionally the way maybe Shan or, or Karis Boyd could have recovered, or LL Cool and stuff like that. And I think that was the first time I began to think, like, man, this is kind of going in a different direction now. What up, Frankie? I think that the violence came into the whole sport of battling once the lyrical content changed. I won't quit. I talk a lot of shit. Fuck up it all up. Cause I'll be ready to throw them up. But niggas don't want to slang them. Cause I bring them up. 165, but I'm hot till I fucking die. So what you want to do? Bring your whole fucking crew. And my clock ahead of the niggas running up the block. Hip hop is an expression of all kinds of energy. Man, y'all seen that interview? Uh, I forgot dude's name. Uh, what's dude's name? Phase on Love. He said Tupac stole from, stole his fro uh, flow from uh, Spice One. He crazy, bro. I can't even believe he said that. I mean, whether it's positive energy or whether it's the energy of those who would be drug dealers but were instead afforded an opportunity to record music. But of course, there are artists who come from a real rugged oh, time shit. and a rugged energy Tupac and express and a rugged point of view. And so when they get into battles, battles get more difficult. Too. Like now, when you listen to, like you listen to uh, Brothers Battle and you listen to the lyrics they say, I mean, you know, they're going at it like, you know, like like straight up, like it's mafia threats. You take me out, I take your family out. I kill your people, you kill mine. What you say, motherfucker? But if you're trying to I'm kill your ass, break your fucking neck. I'm talking shit. I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna shoot you. And I murder this person. I hate you, you hate me. You hate me. Yeah, Spice One Cold. Shout out to Spice One. Your sister and your girlfriend. And your mother, your daughter. Yeah, and I Jordan. tie your he mother up. Throw your baby out the window. Cut your head off and bowl it down a bowl in the alley. Kidnap your kids and shit. Kidnap your aunt. I'll say something disrespectful to somebody else's kid about their kids. And when I say that, I'm saying it with intentions to go there. You know have hip hop don't have a heart nowadays. Tupac has no heart. What's that say? Heartless. And I beat them motherfuckers down. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Oh. Lyrically and thematically. West Coast gangster rap emphasized skills on the street as much, if not more, than skills on the mic. Like some rappers like mix a lot and all of them and try to rap about shit out here. They can't do it because they wasn't around it, but we could do it because we was around it all. Right. I you can't do everything. I've been killings, robbery, murder, thieving, and everything. The whole nine yards, dope dealing, everything. Everything you hear on our records is true. The ever-increasing need to keep it real further blurred the line between artistic differences they and street warfare. Guys in studio. Kami. Kami. It's West funny Side because Kami. when he first came out, I mean, he was doing like hip, real like old school hip hop records. You know what I'm saying with the scratch and hook, that and all. But what I used to love, I mean, we all know metaphors. You know, I, I've been in the game since I was 14, so I know metaphors and do this. I created I Used to Love It in 1994. You know, it was a story that I could tell about the evolution of hip hop and the stages that I seen hip hop go from. Bro, none of this rap beef never happened. So many rappers would be alive. Biggie, Tupac, Tupac, Biggie, Big L. I thought Big L passed away from like just street shit, but I see what you mean though. The bitch, yeah, I reviewed that track. I'm going to try to upload. It's on my Patreon. I'm going to try to upload on YouTube. It got blocked. My reaction to that song. Just the pure innocence. To, to the, along with Raw and just being freestyle, like, to, to the pro-black from pro-black and then going to the West Coast, which I said was good. Jazz, not black music, because black music, it is all good. I wasn't salty, she was with the boys in the hood. Yeah. I wasn't salty, she was with the boys in the hood. He talking about this girl that he was in love with. You know, she's supposed to be hip-hop, and he's so in love with her. 
But when she go out here, she get fucked up. What you mean, nigga? Why it was cool everywhere else it went, but when it came over here, it's fucked up now. Love NWA, Ice Cube, King T, Compass Mode. So they probably took that the wrong way. They felt it was a diss. So. Big L was because his brother not. Yeah, I was thinking that same thing. I thought his brother had was the one who killed him. Or one of his men. At least I did. I mean, everybody did, but, you know, I was the first one with the pen, so. That's how that started. <laughs> So it was fuck coming. Ice Cube took that as a direct attack and came back and destroyed Common. I think they Common took this one when the wrong that wasn't way, even the nature of the battle that Common was presenting. For their first song together as the West Side Connection, Ice Cube, Mac 10, and Dub C came after Common in West Side Slaughterhouse. Me, Cube, and W C, you know, got together in the studio one day and everybody just wrote their verses right there. I used to love her mad because we fucked her. Yeah, pussy wood bitch with no common sense. Hip hop started in the West. Ice Cube belling through the East without a vest. Yeah, he was raw with that motherfucker. I'm going to review this track. Yeah, Chicago is mine, nigga. He told Common his hood was his hood. West Side Slaughterhouse was so raw, man. I seen that shit the other day, homie. That was one of the best <coughs> rap videos ever. That shit was raw. <coughs> Niggas had khaki suits on with blood all over them and in meat markets and yeah, meat market. beef and oh, we was stupid with it. And I heard it, and at first I was like, man, I'm gonna let it go. My first thing was like, I'm gonna let it go. You know, he dissed me. I'm thinking like, yo, I grew up listening to Cube. You know, I was happy that he knew who I was. You know, when the sh when she went out to West Coast, she got burnt down. She Burned and tricked out. That's what he said in that song. Yep. Which beef is it? This is number one. I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh watch number two. Then we probably gonna watch number three. Another live stream. For sure. Well, you should react to Mac Ten with. Yeah, I should have did that though. I could still review it though for sure. But I remember reviewing the bitch in you though. I should have did that for sure. I'm still going to review that track, too, and the West Side. Oh, like, he even recognized me, but I was hurt that he had dissed me a little, you know? But it, overall, I was just like, all right, that's cool. Kind of laughed it off. And then um, I seen Ice Cube and, and Mac-10 and WC, they, they were on a BET dissing me. I was like, okay. It's going too far. I'm going to defend myself now. A bitch nigga with an attitude named Q. Step to the con with a few. Common, known as a conscious rapper, took hip hop by surprise with his vicious counter attack, That's The Bitch in You. I wrote the first verse, and I remember going down to the Gavin in 1996, and I performed with De La Soul. And I stopped the music. My heart was beating like, I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm about to say this first. And violate you, you a Muslim drinking brew. Your nigga ain't no back ten. He's a 22. I seen you. Man. You ain't, ain't no say shit. Ten. And the crowd just gave me super love. Eventually, Common <laughs> performed the bitch in you in Los Angeles, boldly dissing LA? Ice Cube in his own city. Oh uh, man, I don't know what's gonna jump off. It's like I just was feeling That's the fury to a certain extent because it was just I felt like Ice Cube then was wrong. I thought Mac Ten. Was Mac 10? He was garbage for real. I heard about him. What up, Bronco? Only accused me, so I was on the defensive. At he that went point. to L. A. I knew the verse was lighting the crowd up too. Oh. On the dick of the east for your first release. Oh. Your lease is up at the crib house. Niggas get evicted and videos. I thought that shit was whack. You know, because Common ain't even a rah rah type nigga. You know, and um, come on, Common. I didn't know what it was gonna escalate to. I ain't know. I was like, prepare for to anything. LA. What the sound is? Almost got copyrighted in the sun. Didn't the sound just cut out? But, uh, with the New York bias against their work. Yeah, we can change the rap. Mercedes Benz built a car. I'm driving one. He ain't gonna get mad at me for driving it, is he? So what you started it? I'm gonna finish it. Period. Florida house, yeah. With Dr. Dre's The Cross, oh, an entire coast demand. This when shit go start getting crazy. This this where it's gonna start getting crazy. Respect. Bow Down was the number one motherfucking record in the country, and we didn't have no spins on the East Coast radio station.
down. That's crazy. But as That's West that Coast record ball. sales soared, the East Coast felt something they had never felt before. Jealousy. RPP. Snoop and them had came out with a song called, you know what I mean, New York, New York. And they was kicking over our buildings and the videos and one night. And we had like right. took that like kind of personal, you know what I'm saying? That's kicking over our buildings, you know what I'm saying? We not finna even get put in that point where we say fuck the East Coast, cause there's money over there, man. So it's like New York is the spot. New York, New York. They like Tim fuck the dog. dog. Tim Dog really started the war in 91. Yeah, I, I reviewed that song, Fuck Compton. <laughs> that shit was crazy. He said, fuck Compton. Ice Cube should have responded kind of diss track with the actual diss track. Not that one line. Yeah, Common, I ain't gonna lie. Common went crazy on Cube and that bitch and you. He went crazy on Ice Cube. Oh, bad right now. So we had to go back at them. You know what I'm saying? That's we made like, that beef is just crazy. LA, LA, big city of dreams, but everything in LA ain't always it's what it seems. LA, LA. LA. Those are the only niggas that... At that time, they came out and firmly stood up for NY at that time. Know what I'm saying? Go back, check the records, and you See will hear. Tragedy, Mob D. Right. Video for it and all that. Because we coming from Queens and kids. Well, the East Coast, West Coast thing got big because it sold records. You know what I mean? It sold magazines because it helped ratings for TV and radio. I mean, it was a lot of us. New York been soft since Snoop. Came through and crushed the buildings. Yeah, I remember. I remember reviewing that song. He he kicked over the building. He was like King Kong or something. He kicked over the building. That, money, as far that as was disrespect. The media, 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 the 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 media, fuck the media, fuck the media, fuck the media. All right. The media uh. sees the so-called East Coast West Coast war, keeping a curious audience current with blow by blow coverage. Many non-related events and grievances were attributed to the beef, and sensational coverage by magazines, radio stations, and television made artists, labels, and fans take sides. Aimed suspiciously immediately following Shakur's shooting in New York on November 6th. East Coast versus West Coast. Bobby Bobby Coast. Bobby Coast. reported threats on Combs Live. Good night, strikes towering above. Those of noticed the huge biceps itching the bus to issue. Heard there was a contract out on my life, said Combs. West Coast, West Coast, West Coast. East Coast, you know, West it's another dude I can't really look the same no more, bro. I, I found these last two years I found so much things about Diddy. I don't know if I can look 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 this dude the same no more, bro. I ain't gonna hold it. Yeah, the Goodfellas thing was definitely purposeful. The whole mafia reference was definitely purposeful because at this point, Death Row was the most feared entity in the music industry. And we loved the fact that these cats agreed to post in these black outfits. We thought it was hot, you know what I'm saying? Death Row Records had a publicist named George Price at the time. And in the middle of us laying out the cover, George Price calls and he says, whatever you do, make sure the letters on the cover are in red. You know what I'm saying? I've had they plenty hate, problems man. with people that live on my block. They ain't start no whole Brooklyn thing like this. East, like Best Eye against Brownsville. They ain't start no whole big thing like that. Controversy sells. Controversy the rapper did yeah. take it to another level. The, the companies took it to another level. My whole career was never, I had never been in an interview where they didn't ask me about East Coast, West Coast. East Coast, West Coast. It's always the media, bro. It don't actually, sometimes the rappers got to have some self-responsibility for it. But at the end of the day, if it wasn't for the media hyping the shit up, man, it just, they be amping a lot of sh unnecessary shit up, bro. Had it not been for the media, the East Coast, West Coast shit would have been. People would have forgot about it. But they kept on amping it up. Keep on antagonizing it. Beef. Ain't no real East Coast, West Coast beef. Oh, you don't like Hammer, or you don't like Will Smith. You know, just let's just get you to say you don't like Shit somebody. Crazy. You could be, you know, artists from wherever, from Wyoming. They're <coughs> gonna ask you, 
Well, how do you feel about what's going on with such and such and such and such? What about Easy E? So are you happy at Death Row Records now? But I ain't get on the camera to talk about okay. that. The interview nigga asked me a question about it in the magazine. He was like, yo, I heard boom, boom, you wasn't feeling with Jay-Z. I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think you're a bitch-ass nigga for saying that, you know what I'm saying? Mm. No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Come on, come on. <laughs> Now, when you make a statement, it's in the paper, you've taken a stance. Bottom line, that fuck that all in the When you're new in the game, you, you got an open mouth and you... <clears throat> you also got to remember those kids, those rappers, kids. Yeah, they was like 24, 25 years old. I mean, that's not fair, though. You feel me? That shit not fair. Those magazines real instigated the weeks. Yeah, that's why I heard, too. That shit sad, bro. And when Biggie and Tupac actually die, they gonna be like, well, can this stop? Will this stop? Can we stop all the beef? Y'all is the same motherfuckers that instigate the whole thing. Man, that shit crazy. Not aware of the game they're playing. Then when, you, when niggas die, they be all, oh, man, can we stop somebody. the violence? You didn't have to. Fuck the source, right? source suck a dick. Fuck them motherfuckers. <laughs> can we say fuck Tim Dog on TV? Say it. Damn. When you read your, your, your article, that's the piece that's blown up. That's in the big letters. You're like, oh. And the stories kept coming. Rumors that Tupac had sex with Biggie Small's wife. <laughs> that Tupac Shakur had been raped in prison. That Puffy had something to do with the death of Jake Robles, Suge Knight's close friend. Who was March that? 1996. A gun is drawn as Death Row and Bad Boy square off at the Soul Train Awards in Los Angeles. As the tensions rose. That's why I heard too that Puffy Diddy whatever had something to do with uh Suge Knight. I think it was Suge Knight man bodyguard getting killed. And I think someone said that was started at all you know the whole war and shit. It always starts with Diddy, bro. Like, man, I I, I can't look at this dude the same. I can't. The game's two <coughs> career that was MCA, became uh, opposing generals in hip hop civil war, whether they liked it or not. That's crazy. And so here we are, you know, with this magazine. And we know in the magazine world, even if something says September, it generally comes out like the month before, around the middle of the month before. And so, East Coast, West Coast, by September 13th, Tupac is dead. You know, six months later, Biggie is dead. And so this cover is actually uh, kind of eerie, you know what I'm saying? When you see a Vibe magazine, when you see Puff and Biggie on the cover and see East vs. West, niggas in the hood don't read articles. They just see East vs. West. Oh, it's they on. So when I see them niggas, it's on. I think Vibe gets a lot of heat for that, for that one, because it was such a, you remember that, what that cover looked like. And I think a lot of the people that who probably worked that vibe at that time still to this day feel kind of like, you know, but vibe wasn't the only people calling that beef that. They damn near got enough blood on their hands too. The media, vibe, the, uh, what's the other magazine? The source for, what's, what's the word? Antagonizing the beef, bro. Pumping up the beef when it don't need to be. Then when someone dies, like Tupac and Biggie, oh, can we all stop the violence and all that, man? Y'all was the main people that was egging this shit on. And that shit still get put on, still go on still to this day with uh, NBA Youngboy and uh, Lil Durk. They be pumping that beef up too. Shit crazy. Stay then when one of them dies, I, God, God forbid that happens. They gonna always oh, stop the violence. It's kind of like shit crazy. You know, but Vibe wasn't the only people calling <coughs> that beef that everybody was. And it was crazy. It was just a crazy time. And um, I might say now, you know, I regret the media's role and stuff like this. But we really didn't realize how deep we were into this. That shit crazy. If I'm only in my 30s now, I was in my 20s like most of us. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We were all kids. Doc what's the word? Money is like, nah, negative gets the most attention. I don't know if that's the saying, but... I mean, it's smart. I mean, that's the money maker, negativity, but it's fucked up, bro. We're not even clear who we are. And we're dealing with this, this, this dominant youth culture of the day. And it's like, yeah, black. I'm already knowing, or I already know that situation that had nothing to do with it. But it's just the principle. 
because it's rumor. I'm just saying, allegedly, Suge Knight got back at uh, Biggie and whatnot, ordered the hit out on Biggie in re- retaliation for uh, Tupac death. Tupac had, I know that death didn't have nothing to do with East and West, but allegedly, Suge Knight ordered the hit out on Biggie to get killed. That's all I'm saying. Allegedly, I ain't saying that's true, but that's why I heard. It's a very violent turn. It's this this thing called East Coast West Coast. We've never seen anything like this before. <coughs> We're just literally swept into it. It was insane, you know. There was no way to know where it was going. No way. You know, like with uh, the Biggie and Tupac battle. You know, there was a lot of people that was not checking to see if Pac could outrun Biggie. They were checking to see who could win in a physical confrontation, whose camps could win if the two met up with one another. As the business of rap music became increasingly like the streets, the artist's crews, made up of close friends, family, and -and up-and-coming artists, became increasingly part of the problem. They were there to stop. I mean, I've dealt with a whole lot of people that um, involved itself in the streets and brought the streets into the game. And it's like the problem with that is when you bring the streets into the game, they only know the rules of the streets. I got family, and I got a big family. You know one of them dudes, you know what I'm saying, who just had a real big family? I have an extra huge family. But even the cops get that confused. Like, you know what I'm saying? The cops start thinking we're a gang and we're this, and they don't understand I just make music. and. You know what I mean? These dudes just support me a whole lot. Some of these dudes just support me from the street and they living this life. Most rap crews are made up of, I say, 50% businessmen and 50% thugs. 50% of your crew is your made up of boys that just came home from jail. Now, my boys that just got out, I've been the guy. They said Biggie did that Sway interview. LA Gangsta was upset. They got, man, you hear me? I said that in the review. He should never did that interview. And he was freestyling that uh, Tupac this. He should never did that. Whoever greenlit that interview, whatever, on that radio show, that's blood on their hands too because they was antagonizing that shit too. I mean, Big is a grown man. I think he was 25. He was grown enough to know what's right and what's wrong. But if I was close to him, I'm like, bro, you don't do that, bro. That was a bad move, man. Bad move all around. On their TV that they've been pointing at, that's my man. That's my man. When they get home, their life is based around maybe I could roll with ice. Maybe ice could help me, you know? Now, what can he do? What can he actually do? But say, yo, Blow, Joe Blow was dissing you and I knocked him out in the club. What can he do? So then that thug element is always ready to reach out and touch anybody, whether it's a cameraman, whether it's an interviewer, whether it's somebody on the radio. They do not have any other way of showing the rapper that they they man than busting somebody in their head. And that's where they get they strife. So you got to understand that thug element is always available in rap. You know, they want them stripes. They want them points. So it's like, even though you might tell a person, look, I really need you to slow down and cease fires and that. Hey, he's a grown man. When you're not around, he might just come along anyway and just, you know, do what he want to do on his own. Then, instead of fighting me like a G, he ran. Now, I can't help it if some niggas that was on the scene beat his ass for running. That was something separate, you understand me? And I can't help it if they were screaming thug life as they did it. That ain't my fault. That's just how shit went down, you understand me? I could not be there. But if I have this person running around with me to the point that you would start associating him with me, and he decides to just go kill a nigga while I'm off doing some other shit, they're going to say I sent that. I've been in situations where I've been with my boys, and I'm talking to a friend of mine in hip-hop, but his soldiers is sizing up my soldiers. You see what I'm saying? His man just came out looking at my man crazy. I'm walking down the street, my man's like, I don't like his boy. I'm like, you shut, that's my man. But that's they, they animal. That's how they, that's how they rationalize things with combat. So when you first come out of the hood, you come out of the hood and you were a drug dealer and your friends is drug dealer. The media create the real beef. I mean, like I said, you got to put some of the, well, really most of the responsibilities on the artists and their entourage, like they saying right here, the entourage, we can't put it all on the media. Yeah, they hype the shit up. But it's 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 your responsibility as men to stop the shit. 
you feel me, and just go against your pride and just leave it all alone. But y'all know we got strong prides as men, though. It's going to be hard for us to do that. Your friends is thugs, and you would just all right, you told all the thugs. And you might have been thugged, too, and you got a record. People around you are very protective. They're very violent. They don't really believe they have nothing to live for. And you are... My response is like, I mean, I'm outside, and before I know it, I look up, it's like a parade outside. There's always somebody in somebody's ear, like, telling you, fuck that, B. Just that and third. Yo, that nigga go Y'all right want to go to part two? said this, man. Why you don't go see him? Because nowadays, I mean, the pressure from your man's to make you go hurt something. That's the dude you need to get away from. Or you got to school him quick, because he don't know no better. Really? In 1995... A crew yeah, from Easy es Ruthless Records visited the Dog Pound on the set of a music video. Oh, shit. The Dog Pound, because of their allegiance to Death Row Records, were drawn into Dr. Dre's ongoing beef with Easy e Actually, um, Easy e boys, they was just, I mean, me and Ricky Harris was riding around, you know, on a little go-kart thing, getting ready to shoot a scene, and they just walked up on me like, fuck the Dog Pound, you know what I mean? And my response is like, I mean, I'm not, it's about a hundred people around and one of them went behind me. So I'm like, well, either I swing now or else I just get swung on, so. Damn. Let's go. Rest in peace. I don't know how much he had to do with influencing them to talk about yeah. us. But that they was down with him and we was down with Dre, so they was trying to do their diss thing. They got golf clubs. And we're not trying to be no hooligans. We out here trying to make money because I know that day I felt real bad about what they were It looked real silly. Yeah, R.I.P. Nate, dog. R.I.P. Nate, dog. Damn. Meth. I love this game. That's Meth and Meth. <laughs> Fatal Hussein of the Outlaws was part of Tupac Shakur's crew. Due to a court date on the East Coast, Fatal wasn't in Las Vegas the night Tupac was shot. Not that I'm some kind of, you know, gladiator or nothing like that. But if I was dead, I know. You know, I'm, I'm in the streets, basically. The only time I'm not in the streets is when I'm with Tupac. So I know right from wrong. I know, you know, this shit is still the streets. And I know there's certain things you can do and certain things you can't do, man. Especially when you at that level. And it's like people that was around him at the time wasn't feeding this to him, man. After a Mike Tyson bout, Tupac Shakur started a fight with Orlando Anderson, a Los Angeles gang member. Several hours later, Shakur was shot in a car just off the Las Vegas Strip. I never stopped thinking about what the fuck was Tupac doing out there rolling in the dirt with a nigga that he ain't had no business even. He shouldn't even keep. Thank you. Because I ain't gonna lie, I, I see a lot of people. Y'all know I got this man on my wall, bro. I, I rock with Tupac. But I think we all can know that this was also a bad move by him going against Orlando knowing he was probably well known around LA like as being a crip cop or whatever Orlando Anderson this was a bad move and the fact that they just rolled around Vegas after this shit like nothing was gonna happen no retaliation or nothing that's why I say bro like man when we get to situations like this our IQ just lowers bro I don't know this, yeah, this is the fight that took Tupac out, bro. And I see a lot of people, like, bashing Orlando Anderson with what he did to Tupac. Now, violence, I'm not condoning violence at all. We don't do that on this channel. But it was inevitable. Like, he was a game member. He going to get his retaliation, especially you know who you is. You no know, car you rolling in. Come on, bro. Recipes Tupac, this was a bad move, bro. This was a bad move. Even his man said it. Yeah, Orlando was a goon. I don't know. When we get into situations like this, bro, our IQ just lowers. We think we big and tough. We untouchable. Until it get proven, we can get touched one day.
This shit crazy. It's Tupac doing out there rolling in the dirt with a nigga that he ain't had no business even. He shouldn't even gave that nigga the, the time, man. He should have let Suge Mans, everybody from Suge Camp, beat on him or whatever. He should never, Suge would have, should have told him, bro, don't get involved in this. You are a breadwinner. Like, I don't say know. some it just, shit like, yeah, me and Pac had a fight, man. It was like a hundred other niggas dead. It was supposed to be people there that was supposed to step up and handle situations. Niggas wasn't around just to be rapping and eating up shit and messing with chicks and shit like that. Everybody in the crew got a part to play. And if you don't play your part, then it's all going to crumble. Man. They get the head, man. What's going to happen to the body? This Tupac man's talking. He, I feel that's like the if point. I was that's dead, shit would have been totally different, man. I would have told Tupac, hey, bro, sit back, bro. Let us handle this. After the deaths of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls, artists in the media temporarily came to their senses. If you Not know even that it's arousing senses. the whole community, you know that you don't want that to happen. You don't want that energy coming your way. Then it's definitely like up to you. Should should have pulled them back. And be like, yo, That's a fact. I really have no ill feelings towards you as a person. This was me expressing myself through my art. It's love. I want to see you prosper too. I mean, I think a lot of the artists feel that way. They might not say it all the time. Because cats, you know, do get emotional. Sometimes it, it does become personal. But overall, I know the nature of these cats ain't about, like, I want to see this dude. <coughs> in 1997, Minister Farrakhan called an intervention in Chicago Farrakhan. in an attempt to resolve disputes peacefully. Minister Farrakhan told his guests about organized techniques white slave owners had used to keep slaves slaves including deliberately causing, developing, and maintaining hostility amongst them. Ice Cube flew in, Mac-10 flew in, Ice Cube came and just gave me a hug. When I met Common, Common just kind of felt like he had to defend himself because he a cool dude, actually. And Common good, man. He can rap. He do what he do. And I needed that the elders to come bring us together and just be able to sit us at the table where it wouldn't be no ignorance and no homies just sitting around talking crazy. And we get aroused and just had a peace treaty. And we should instigate a lot of shit in the backfire all the time, man. Puffy and Sh I just can't look at them the same no more, bro. They instigated a lot of shit. Then when shit backfires, oh, what was me, man? That's what I'm saying, though, man. They not true leaders, bro, at all. They not true leaders. That's why I heard Biggie was about to lead Bad Boy after uh before he passed away and Tupac. Shit crazy, man. We hugged, you know, so it was like, I needed that. We got close, but then she broke to the West Coast. Ha ha, be stupid. The same time, I went away because they have the respect of many artists, <laughs> outside entities like the Nation of Islam and Zulu Nation, as well as individuals like Russell Simmons, Jim Brown, and Mike Conception, Jim Brown. have led the way in squashing beefs in hip-hop. In the Nation of Islam, I'm not even allowed to speak so negative coming. of another member to another individual in the nation unless the one of whom I'm speaking about is present. If I go to another member about something negative about another member, that member is to stop me. He said, hold up. If it ain't positive, I don't want to hear it. And if it's negative, that other person is not here. So what I do then, I go to someone who can officiate my beef and I want to witness that I tried to settle it. So I don't fear nobody but God. I don't have to go and slander you behind your back. I think that's a coward's way out. Sometimes the other artist didn't even realize you had a problem with him until he heard your record. See, that's a punk way of doing things to me. That's not being a man or a woman. You should have called that artist and faced them with arbitrators saying, hey. you did this to hurt me. And allow that person to say, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I did. That's like 99. You Would you please accept my apology? Rap beats in history. We have a hip hop summit here. We have people that work all day long on settling beefs. You know, I've been lucky enough to have an opportunity to, to influence some of these people. And if someone listens to me, then I should use. Thanks for the stream, bro. On the Sunday, gotta go. All right, uh, 240. My influence best I can. Pac was the breadwinner. Why have him getting dirty? Man, that's exactly what I'm saying, bro. That's the same shit. Y'all know who King Von is. Y'all know the situation, how he died. Same situation. His people around him should have told him, bro, sit back. 
We do all the dirty work, bro. You are breadwinner. You are, you know what I'm saying? You make the money, bro. Let us handle that. Are right, we gonna go to part two? It's another one. Then we're gonna do part three in another live stream, bro. For sure. In the 1970s, below the music industry's radar, a Diddy, Snoop, Dre, and Survive. Plus, who shot you was dope. Man, you. Bro, I thought, I ain't gonna lie, like, I thought that was a diss track, but I heard that was released. And it was petty how they just released that track when after Tupac got shot, even though that was recorded. They said that was recorded way before. But whoever released that track is petty, too. That's what I'm saying, though. Everybody want to play tough guy, then when shit hit the fan, everybody want to say, what was me when, like, someone dies or something. Shit tough. That's, that shit crazy. Pac and King Von was running man. Them situations are super similar, bro. They should have just man. Man was thinking about thinking of Zulu that <laughs> shit. Yo. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that at the end though. Zulu Nation. I gotta talk about that end. We skipped over the Nas and Jay Z beefs. It was in the first one. Nah, that's nah. The shit ended. I think the Jay Z and Nas one on part two. Hold on. Nah, the Jay Z and Nas on number two because or at the end it just ended on the uh, Tupac and Biggie one. So it's most likely on this one. Puff made it made a diss track. <coughs> yeah, Jay Z and Nas one probably gonna be on this one. This is beef two. Like a golden bell hung in my heart, and when I think of you, I feel yeah, it's number two. And yep. the bell swings and rings. Roxanne, Roxanne. Roxanne. UTFO's 1984 hit Roxanne Roxanne tells the story of Kangol Kid, Dr. Ice, and the educated rapper trying to romance a fictional woman named Roxanne. The song itself was not a diss track. <laughs> With the song in the public eye, a relatively unknown Queensbridge DJ named Marley Marl, who by Marley day worked Marl. in the Sergio Valente jean factory, decided to record a response to Roxanne Roxanne. What happened was, Marley Marl, who lived right across from me in another building, like directly across from me, he said, well, listen, you know what, Chante, I heard that you This is Ro Roxanne, yeah, Roxanne Chante. Right now, I'm doing the laundry, because my mom was like obsessed with this laundry thing. He said, look, it's only going to take you two minutes, just come here, I want you to hear this beat. Did you hear this song before? So then we heard, I heard that boom, 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 Roxanne, Roxanne. I said, okay, so now what? He said, let me hear you rhyme. I said, okay. Well, my name is Roxanne, and he was like, oh, Roxanne, don't you know I just The first 5,000 mm. copies, I think, was pressed up from the record company recording it over the radio. And so, you know, here I am on the radio for the first time, Dang and, you know, my name's just starting to, you know, blow up a little bit. And someone shoot me down. How old was Yo, Roxanne when she made it? Every time that I see him, he says, oh, Rock, is he compared to me this week compared to mine? Roxanne's Revenge, recorded by 13-year-old Shante Gooden, was an instant 13! Selling approximately 200... She was 13! 50,000 copies. Like, hey, that's, that's not fair. We created this. And, it, and, and she's selling more now. I'm like, okay, we need to hurry up and, and crush this. And so we wanted to come out with what we would refer to as... 14. Real that's crazy. Roxanne. Yo, Kango. Yeah, what's up, girl? I'm the real Roxanne and I rock your world. While the UTFO's answer, the real Roxanne, never mentioned Roxanne Chante or Roxanne's revenge, it was a direct challenge. Roxanne, the 
Lady Devastator. I make you feel hotter than it is in Grenada. The R O X A N N E. Roxanne is who I be. What for? What? 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 <laughs> they got a Roxanne already. Me? What, is, what do they want another one for? And then I was like, oh, because they angry. That's all I need to know. Roxanne Shante responded with, bite this. Calling out the real Roxanne. She was 14 dissing grown folks. Sparky D, Curtis Blow, Run DMC, and LL Cool J. Practically announcing to the world that it was a free for all. She called for everybody. I mean, it was jam. Oh my God. Man, I don't have. Yeah, I heard about that uh, Netflix movie. I, I remember watching it with my mom. That's how I recognize her name. I, I know that Netflix movie for sure. Shout out to uh, Roxanne Shante. Roxanne's sister. Roxanne's mother. Two fourteen you know, dissing everybody. Um, just, just people that had nothing to do with it. And the funniest thing about it is, um, I don't think that none of the female rappers that actually were, you know, involved in that name were really Roxanne. KRS-One and Scott LaRock's Boogie Down Productions, as part of their legendary Bridge Wars battle with MC Shan and Marley Marl's Juice Crew, targeted Roxanne Chante in BDP's The Bridge Is Over. I remember that KRS-One. Oh, wow. Roxanne Chante is only good for Roxanne Chante is only good for steady pumping. I wonder if that's illegal because she was 14 at the time and they dissing, they dissing a minor. Now, that ain't illegal, that ain't illegal but that, that is cold, though. That was disrespectful. Clearly offended by the diss. That's crazy. Roxanne Chante confronted KRS-One in a New York bank. She's like, I ain't never did nothing to you. I ain't never said your name in a rap. Why you had to say my name? I didn't have an answer. All that battle raw raw was gone. I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Now KRS-One, you should go on vacation with a name sounding like a whack radio station. <laughs> <laughs> He said, your name sound like a radio station. <laughs> Karis <laughs> went. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Who is she? you dissing into the 1990s. Taking on Queen Latifah. Yo-Yo, and a bevy of other female MCs in 1992's Big Mama. Artists of all genders... I got a review on my channel. channel. I got to. Ice Cube appeared on a JJ fad track dissing Shantae. And Damn! And Snoop's Bitches Ain't Shit was considered a response to Roxanne Shantae's Brothers Ain't Shit. Everywhere I went, there was somebody answering the Roxanne... Bro, she was probably a minor. She was probably a... She probably was still a minor. Why everybody dissing? I mean, it's no rules in rap at this point, but damn. She she probably didn't even graduate from high school yet. And when I'm telling you that there was over 55 response records, we're talking records damn. that were actually played. You'll never have another Roxanne phenomenon again, ever. It'll oh, no, nah, this... Again. She got it. Roxanne significant in the history of hip-hop as the moment when rappers discovered that dissing other artists on wax could both start careers and yeah, sell records. Yeah. My whole situation oh, he said sell records. And, and I thank Kango for that and for being very hostile about that because that's what turns it into a career. Because had they not been so upset about me being a rock fan, they were dissing pretty much a little girl. I'd have never been able to make those other 15 records. <laughs> As increasingly, I ain't gonna lie. She, yeah, she did kind of eat them, ate them on the records. Especially that Karis one. <laughs> Sound like a rat, a whack Why radio station. Hell no. Nah. Record sales to new heights. She got it. Record companies raked in huge profits and ignored the a negativity sales, bro. Of displeasing. That's what I wanted to say. Ice Cube. There was a knock part. on the glass door, and uh, I was reading a paper, and I looked up. And it was Ice Cube, and he had three of his homeboys with him, and they were. Uh, you know, they had their trench coats 14. on and weren't looking too happy. And I said, what's up, Cube? And I opened the door for him. There were no security 
uh, procedures at the time. You know, he just stared me down, walked past me, and his uh, crew walked past and went then into the president's office. Brian Turner and Mark Ceremi were co-presidents of Priority Records. At that time, one of the biggest record companies and distributors in the business. About five minutes later, I heard screaming and glass breaking. And there was something going on, so I jumped out of my desk, I got up, I ran out, and I get to my partner's door, it's closed, and I hear all the screaming going on. He was standing over Brian with a baseball bat, and he had his three guys standing behind him, and uh, he turned fuck? around and screamed at Mark and I to, to get the hell out of the office. Said, Mark, uh, get out of here, man, I'm, I'm cool with you. Just, 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 just please, just, just leave. And this has nothing to do with, uh, with us, and uh, I was glad to hear that, and I took a step back. And I said, Cuba, I can't do that, man. I, I, this is my partner. I have, to, I have to stand here, and I have to make sure nothing happens here. If you're going to fight, we're going to fight. If you're not going to fight, it's He brought the bat in there. You smash a TV and hit Brian's glass desk and screaming about he didn't have the money that Easy e had and why is Easy paid, and I'm not. He stormed out of the wow. office and smashed his golden platinum plaques on the wall in the lobby. Squad cars mm -hmm. all over the place, and they're all ready to bust everybody and everything. Cube's a good guy. You know, he's a damn good guy. He's always been very, very good to priority. It's tough. Very good to me. And people coming after us like crazy. And just, hey, 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 hey. That was in the NWA movie. That's why I was just about to say. Because I, I remember that scene. Okay. What are people doing? Oh, here is a problem. We have Cube. We're taking a chance. I said, no, you're not. I said, there's nothing going on. That's all I was just about to say. Mind, and they left. They didn't like it. They wanted to bust somebody. So I said to Cube, I said, Cube, I said, meet me in Marina Del Rey tomorrow. And I rented a 50-foot uh, power boat, fishing boat. So we went out and we went fishing for about four hours. They made us lunch and, and then we listened to a bunch of Cube's new album and, and uh, he said that uh, there was a problem. He said he was owed money, this and that. And I said, then there is no problem. I said, it's taken care of, you'll, you'll get the money. And I got back to the office and I straightened it out immediately. That was my uh, introduction to the rap game because I, uh, at the time, I guess I was 19 or 20. It was my first, uh, you know, six months or a year at the company, so 19, from there, uh, you know, it all made sense after that. Mm. As the 90s progressed, business increasingly destroyed friendships and partnerships. Labels faced off against labels, Bad group word, against bro. group, and friend against friend. EPMD. Short for Eric and Parrish making dollars, EPMD exploded into hip-hop in the late 80s with their first two albums, both going number one. Eric Sarm is my friend from eighth grade, from around the way, building the 68. So they beef with each other? Our life wasn't built on EPMD. Our life was built on friendship. With a new deal at Def Jam, and their own management what up, Jim? handled their protégés, EPMD released their third album, Business As Usual. After our third album, it was break time, and I said, okay, we already established Let's really try to put them on now. Eric and Paris formed the Hit Squad, an all-star group designed to introduce up-and-coming artists, Redman, K Solo, and Das FX to the world. Das FX. At that moment, we control airways at that moment. You know what I'm saying? We're like, we're like, I got an Eric Sermon uh, reaction coming this week, too. I'm going to let y'all know this right now. Oh, the, the whole posse is on the countdown. I got the review ready. Hit me, hit squad, hit squad. Red man. Eric said, Yo, I don't want to mess with the business. I just want to chill. So, P, you handle that. My whole thing was music. What up, Davis? Give people what they wanted. The whole nine and just be busy and chill with my boys. Ride around the cars and just chill. EPMD began work on their fourth album. Business, never personal. In the middle of recording that album in the house we in, four gunmen broke into my home. Mm. I was coming home from doing something and I went to the 7 Eleven to get a box of Phillies. So if I didn't stop and go get those Phillies that day, I would have walked right into an ambush. Several men entered the house, and at gunpoint, forced everyone inside to the ground. The gunmen began to search the house. Mm. It was asking for me, where's Pete? I was so close to it that when I pulled up in my driveway, my man was tied up, and I couldn't hear him because we had the system loud. And when I turned it down, I was like, yo, what? Then my alarm went off upstairs. The gunman fled the scene. Damn. And then I seen all these people running up the street. So I drove around a corner and I seen a blue car pull out. I get the plate number 
So by the time I got back from following the guy to getting the plate number, the cops was already at my house. The first person who I'ma call when it went down, I call Eric. Mm. I said, hey, you ain't gonna believe it. Work continued on the hit squad and the business never personal LP. I wonder who arrived. After months, nothing came of the break-in. August 25th, 1992, my man said, yo, we gotta go down to the precinct. This is two weeks before we about to go on the hit squad tour. So he's like, yo, you ain't gonna like what you're gonna hear. So I'm like, you know, I'm running with the energy and I'm not really conscious. You know how sometimes you think you're ready for something and whatever, whatever. So we drive down there to the precinct, Detective Flom at the third precinct in Brentwood, Long Island, Fifth Avenue. Mm. His first words to me was like, hey, Paris, is your group breaking up? And I was like, what do you mean? Oh, he said, because we caught the, 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 the guys who broke in your house and they signed a statement saying that your partner, Eric Sermon, paid him $5,000 to break in your house. Maybe yo, man. I had a feeling, I was like, yeah, it's probably him. But why, though? We interviewed the witnesses. I was just waiting on it. See what they saw, if anything at all. R.P. Kango. And I had the plate number that Parrish gave me. And that came back to uh, one of the defendants who had the Jersey address at the time. So we made several trips in New Jersey. We finally, we couldn't locate him there. We finally spoke to his mother. And she supplied us with pictures of him and four of his friends. Uh, those pictures were shown to the two victims and they subsequently ID'd two of the individuals that were involved. I didn't believe it. Because at that time, with all this stuff going on with EPMD, anybody in their right mind know they couldn't come and tell me anything foul about Eric. Three albums, number ones, in a row. I had everything sewn up. Our own producers, no money goes to nowhere. The fame was this high. Eric Sherman, he gotta have about two million dollars at home. Yeah, a lot of people thought wow. that I ripped Eric off and EPMD broke up because of money. My whole... Vision was blind, got frightened by the numbers. It was a lot of money, you know, being made, you know, and, you know, Red it man. Being cut the right way. Got frightened by contrast. I'd be looking at niggas on the TV running off with the mouth and all this other bullshit about P jerking niggas or, you know, P did this or P took that, fuck that. Got frightened by words, different phrases. You ever seen a contract? P would have said, fuck all these niggas. P had his loot. Niggas wouldn't have go down. There wouldn't be no platinum mountains. There wouldn't have been no world tour. There wouldn't have been no hit squad mark. When he was controlling things, he wasn't teaching none it's of us what's money. going on. Market savings, CDs, tax breaks, tax accounts, accounting, contracts. What do you own? Just breaking stuff down. Couldn't answer one question. There's not too much to argue about when it's a 50 50 split music wise. The 50 50 split publishing marks. It's a 50 50 split show wise. But there's so much stuff in the back of that. Man got you messed While up. Parrish Smith maintained that the EPMD business was a 50 50 split. Eric Sermon was concerned about the revenue from the group's proteges, where the split wasn't even. Now, what I chose to do with K Solo, who I knew since 13, and through my relationship through Sylvia Rome, that's a whole different ballgame. Now, what I chose to do with Schumer Management, which was active since 1990 when Solo first came out, that's on me. Parrish Smith also took a larger share of the DOS FX monies on the grounds that he was handling the business. Money can niggas really split the whole game. The pressure on them niggas was crazy. You heard? Leo and them niggas calling niggas every day. Yo, let's do this and that. His squad was moving. Pressure was on. And what makes that even more illa, in the middle of the hit squad blowing up, when Dots FX signed on top of the charts for six weeks straight at number one with Dead Serious, RCA Records called me with a multi-million dollar deal. My biggest concern in life was making sure wherever I went, Eric came. You have partnerships that bust up all the time. Usually it's over money. But they usually don't send people to their partner's house with guns and duct tape and do business that way. <laughs> Parrish Smith decided not to press charges. Well, yo, if y'all start questioning this now while we're selling all these records when we got all this light, there's no way we're going to be on a tour and then the rest of these guys who have nothing to do with it is going to get screwed. Then you would have never seen the hit squad. You wouldn't have seen DOS FX and you wouldn't have seen Redman. So I was like, let us take care of the tour, and I'm convinced when we get home, we'll be able to settle it. Parrish Smith proceeded to go on tour with a business and creative partner who had put him in a potentially life-threatening situation. I'm not saying that was a hit, but if something went wrong and these guys were armed, er Parrish could have wound up being, you know, being killed. Want me to tell you how more wild was? The guy who was responsible, who was actually in my house with the hoodie on, was on the same tour bus with us. Wow. Eric... He must have gotten wind of what was happening, got an attorney, and he left New York State and went to Georgia. And if he had not fled New York and did not retain an attorney, he probably would have been arrested. And he was never charged. And that in itself was kind of disappointing because I wanted to get Eric.
The conflict also split up the hit squad. Whoever ran with Paris ran with Paris. PMD. Whoever ran with E ran with E. Redman is down. Mm -hmm. Let's finish Redman's album right now. I came in with E, so that's who I'm going out with, you know what I mean? Paris Smith kept the name The Hit Squad, while Eric Sermon created The, the squad, Death Squad. The Death Squad. Just remember The Death Squad Force. Red Man, Eric Sermon, and Keith Murray. Word up. Hmm. While Eric and Paris embarked on solo careers, neither was as successful on his own as he, he had said, been in EPMD. The he said PMD had... PMD had beef with Red Man after Red Man said he two pieced him at the end of his songs. Soup Man, Lava Three. It was a joke and I did. Oh, okay. Business of hip hop had come between two childhood friends. And it's always been this that split best friends. Well, him and I have to conversate with that in the same tongue as music. It's like, you know what I mean? This problem didn't happen in the vocal booth. This problem didn't happen when we was producing and writing rhymes. Man. This is something that didn't had nothing to do with EPMD. That was something from the outside. Amazingly, as a testament to the friendship they'd had and the music they created, Eric and Parrish got back together in 1996 for the aptly titled "Back in Business." Uh. He's my man. To the world, my relationship with Eric is Eric and Parrish making dollars. I'm glad they made up too. I mean, of course they made up because you know, they still making music. And moving on, not carrying luggage or keeping dark stuff on your heart. But business was poisoning the community. Cypress Hill Westside connection. Okay. As friends and collaborators, Ice Cube and Cypress Hill served as an example of West Coast unity in the '90s. I always was down with him, you know, and he was always one of my favorites. And I said, you know. If I'm gonna build my name, I want I want people to you know look Be at real. Like they look at him or like they look at KRS One. The controversy started when Ice Cube right. went to the studio to pick up Roll It Up, Light It Up, Smoke It Up, a Cypress Hill song for the Friday movie soundtrack. You know, we play him the song and he likes it. He goes, Yeah, that's perfect, you know. We you know, me and Muggs ask him, Hey man, you know, we got a couple of tracks from the album you wanna hear. We played him a song called Throw Your Set in the Air. And he was like, Oh, that's banging. That shit is banging. Can, uh, can I get that for the movie instead? They're like, man, we'd love to give it to you, but you know, this is this is gonna be the single on our album. He said, all right, cool. So he said, can I hear it again? So we played it again for him. We played it for him a couple times over because he wanted to hear it again. So we was kind of like half-ass listening to him, half-ass talk. The Friday soundtrack was released just before Cypress Hill's album, Temples of Boom. A friend of B Reels heard it and called him. He says, hey man, uh, did you give Cube uh, the song from your record for, for the Friday thing? So we ended up putting it on Friday. Yeah, the, 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 the Get High song, yeah, we gave that up already. Why? No, 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 no. The Throw Your Set in the Air thing. I said, no, nah, we didn't give him that. He goes, well, you know, that shit is in his chorus in his song. So we're like, nah, you're crazy. Finally, I hear it. Sure enough, there it is, you know, the same. It's like some of the words are changed around, but for the most part, the chorus is the same. Oh, so he, so he flipped it. Oh, that's petty. Oh, no, nah, that's wrong for Mice Cube. That's dirty. That's, that's crazy. That's petty. I ain't gonna lie. Later, I go to South Africa to do my movie. Matt Chan called me and say, Cypress Hill is on the radio. This. Say what? He calls me, asks me if you know why why we're dissing him, and I said, Hey, man, you know the guys feel like you snatched up the song. It was a misunderstanding where they thought that I took one of their hooks and this, that, and other. Sitting there telling me that he was, uh, you know, he didn't do it. It's, you know, we're friends and. This is hip hop and everything. And I thought, yeah, you know, it, it could happen. It's hip hop, you know. I said, you know what, let me talk to them. I'll straighten it out. Everything was supposed to be settled. And Ice Cube asked Be Real to record some vocals for Caution, a group signed to Cube's Lynch Mob Records. But in the studio, there was another problem. And I heard a couple lines that were the same things I used on the Temple of Boom record. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, 
that's my line. How the hell is it on this record? I'm like, damn, again? In my opinion, I, I, I felt that's like crazy. he saw my reaction, and I walked out of the room for a second <clears> to make a phone call. When I came back, the line was gone. And I was damn. thinking, oh, wait a minute, that line ain't there no more. Okay, I, I know I'm not tripping. So I come back, and I have a talk with these guys again, Muggs and Sam. I said, hey, I think he really did take our shit. <laughs> you think? Bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Aim squarely at Ice Cube. Cube had a song called Wicked, which supposedly, you know, he stole from King's son from the Bronx. I remember Cube called me man. I gotta review that song. I thought them was your homies. Cause they was down, and he said, "Yeah, I thought they was with my homies too, but them niggas is dissing." You know what the fuck I'm about? I mean, he had it coming to him because he was taking their songs and their lyrics without their permission. So he kind of had it too, like coming, bro. Like, you know, me, I don't run from no channel, from nobody. You know, even though we was dogs, you know, I, I felt like they should be dealt with the uh, the worst. Oh yeah. It ain't no for motherfuckers. Don't understand. Ice Cube, among the most influential MCs in hip hop history, was also legendarily vicious in battle. Facts. Having defended West Coast hip hop against Common and others, Ice Cube also dismantled NWA and Jerry he went crazy. in No Vaseline. After No Rest for the Wicked, Ice Cube took aim at Cypress Hill with King of the Hill. King of the Hill was basically the, the diss against us with him and Mac 10. Yo, Ma, if you see this, I'm out. I'm going to listen to Dr. Dre the Chronic later. All right, Zion. I see you later, my boy. I got to review that project next week, too. That's coming up. I had never met Be Real, Mug, Sand Dog, nobody from Cypress Hill. And they was blood. They blood? But I was with this nigga, so I didn't give a fuck. Song was cool, that has some good shit in this funny shit. <laughs> you know what? Let me skip this because I got to review that track. And that's why yeah, I, I ain't, ain't going to spoil it myself. I don't give a fuck if I know you or not. That's the way I was raised, though. My daddy was a gangster, and that's how he instilled that in me. You ride with your nigga. Right or wrong. Talk about and tell a nigga how wrong he was later, after, after the fact. Mm -hmm. But if it's going down, nigga, you got to ride with him. Fuck everybody who really ain't, ain't really... Who in our way? You say that I took your hook. It must be the white boy. I ain't gonna spoil myself. I gotta review that no track. Gasoline. I ain't got nothing to do with this shit. And we still went on it. Cause that's how gangster it was at the time. And we didn't know was was that a setup or or what? So we just covered all bases. Fuck Sin Dog too. And Sin Dog is so wacky, ain't worth listening. You niggas need to listen. After a dislike like King of the Hill, most battles would be over. So that's the name of the track, King of the Hill? Yeah, I gotta review that track. King, you a real one salute. Appreciate that holiday. I already knew about I appreciate the it, before bro. it came out. I had the lyrics sent to me from <laughs> unknown sources. The day after it came out, B just took their beat and killed them on it. We basically did what, what Cube had been known to do other people, you know, uh, which is jack their beats and just just the shit out of him over it, you know? We, we had one of our boys, so they use the same LC, beat. come on the track, and he sounded like uh, Cube did when he was with N.W.A. Ding, ding, motherfucker. It's round two. I got my lunch and my dinner, fool. 
who think we gonna bow down to some punk ass niggas? We from the evil side, boy. So it kind of sounds Who's like that rapping? Kid dissing himself, you know, like a, a mirror. <laughs> He's looking in the mirror, dissing himself. I do. He's an actor, not a motherfucking killer. What neighborhood you from? What don't you ever done? When the shit goes down, you the first one to run. Every time you talk, you got a mouth full of trauma. Only missing you done. Let's go to church with your mind. Ice Cube Killer. Damn. We didn't sell it or nothing. We just put it out in the streets. We pressed up like a thousand copies, sent them to all the DJs. I got to review that song. I can't, I can't, I can't spell with myself. I can't spell it. And then I did some shit in the Bronx on uh, Rap Sheet's pay-per-view where I had his shirt crossed out with a big red X. Fans and artists began to take sides. The shit got pretty deep, you know. I had people from his side coming to me, you know, like, hey, man, you know, it wasn't right what he did and blah, blah, blah. And, this and that pretty soon Cam and Solo came to me. LA now, I'm not even going to lie. I think Ice Cube was in the wrong for starting this whole thing because... He stole a beat. He stole a hook. And they have all right to go back right at him. So he kind of started this himself. Cam and Solo were yeah, also I in the review. middle of a business feud. Cypress' responses were trash. I got to hear it. I got to hear it. Ice Cube. I Me can't say it. I got to hear traffic light. Ice Cube started a fight. Knocked him down. Knocked him out. What happened? Light. Middle of a business feud with Ice Cube. Meeting Solo at a Los Angeles traffic light. Ice Cube started a fight. Knocked him down, knocked him out. Mm. Woke him back up. Whooped on his ass. Somehow his chain fell in my hand. I don't know how I got in my hand, but it fell in my hand. That's Cap. Oh my God, that's Cap. Nah, hell no. Nah. No way. Hold on. Can y'all hear me? Oh yeah, it worked. Man, no way. That's Cap. So you knocked him out. He woke back up. You knocked him out again. And his chain just fell in your hand. That's cat. Oh, God. On oh, everything I love that. Hold on. No. 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 You know how these niggas perpetrate and try to. No, bro. Meeting Solo at a Los Angeles traffic light. Ice Cube started a fight. Knocked him down. Knocked him out. Woke him back up. Whooped on his ass. Somehow his chain fell in my hand. Somehow his chain. No, 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 no. He magically just knocked out, woke back up, knocked him out again. Then his chain just fell suddenly to your hands, bro. No. These, these gangsters be lying, bro. These, bro, no, no, no. But it fell in my hand. Then all of a sudden his Rolex start jumping off and coming into my hand. I don't know how that happened. Huh? Solo knocked out Cube and took his West Side connection chain. Solo sporting. They could have just said they just snatched. He knocked them out, snatched his chain. No way. It's no way. That's deep, man. They boosted that story like a his motherfucker. Chain showed up at a Cypress Hill show. He speak. Oh, he's he speaking in code. Okay, okay. Oh, it's sarcasm. Okay, my bad. He ain't trying to indict himself. I feel it, bro. I feel it. My bad. I was like, the way he explained it, I'm like, hell no. In LA. Be real, put it on and hold it all up until the crowd. <coughs> crowd go crazy. They go bananas off of it. That's all crazy. Right. Well, shit, let's take pictures with it. <laughs> yeah, okay, now I get it. Okay, my bad. Nigga, you didn't take the chain. Nigga, why you wearing it? What, that, what, what you proving, nigga? How many brownie points you getting for that, nigga? You didn't take it. That's the way I felt at the time. It was a pretty interesting time. That shit still going on today to these all these rappers from these hoods and shit. Just like PNB Rock, recipes of PNB Rock. He got killed in LA. And a lot of Philly rappers was dissing them that PNB Rock dissed him. Like, bro, y'all did not kill him. Y'all wasn't the ones that robbed him, bro. Y'all. Because, you know, it created shit a crazy. lot of a split here in LA between black and brown, you know. Concern began to grow that the beef might pit neighborhoods, gangs, and I Dye had none of this energy when he was alive. It can happen at any right. minute. Right. It can ignite. If you're a Latin in the house, if you're a puto Latino in the house, not to be the Cuban and I don't give a fuck what you are. Put your fucking owl in the air right now. Hmm. A lot of the, the Latin people were like, hey man, you know, we're gonna ride for you on this one. You just say the word. 
They would not want to see Cypress Hill in L.A. They get ran the fuck out of L.A. Dead up. The S.A.s rule the streets in L.A. Amidst the violent That's death fair. of Tupac Shakur and rumors that the Mexican Mafia was getting involved, cooler heads managed to prevail, and the conflict never boiled over. Somebody gave me B-Real number and said B-Real want to holler at you. He asked me, you know, so what's it going to take for you and Cube to, to squash this? I said, you know, just like you, all he's got to do is... Wait, 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 wait. Who is Franklin from uh, GTA? Which one? Yeah, Pat State. Recipes of Pat State. I wonder... Oh, he got stabbed? Oh, that's tough. R.I.P. to Pat... I never knew how he died, though. Recipes of Pat State, though. But who is, who is Franklin from GTA? Y'all let me know. You know, we'll talk it out. And I explained to him where I was coming from. Nigga, I don't got nothing to do with it, but that's my home. Solo? Oh, that's I'm dope. With it. He said, you know what, homie? I can respect that. I can't even be mad at you. I respect that. If that's where you coming from with it, Mac, I respect that. Cube called okay. me. Like, Solo, uh, okay, that's it dope. Was January 1st in 97. He's like, you know, hey, what's going on, man? Let's talk this thing out, you know? And so I said, yeah, all right. Before we talk this out, this is why I did what I did, because I want you to really know that... What's up, Rich? Shout out to nothing. man. The shit we've been talking is pretty heavy, so we can go on, keep doing this, and sooner or later we'll run into each other. You know, it's a small world. You know? If you want to squash it right now, we can squash it. I'll never say any fucked up thing about you as long as you stick to that too, and, and we'll be friends again, and maybe shit, we'll work together and do something. If we see B-Real right now, he can come hang with us right now, man. He, it's cool. For real. Because we got past the shit. I like got a lot of shit. beef. I'm a big fan. I was bumping it today, I'm telling you. It's in my CD thing right now. Definitely, there's no there's no beef whatsoever. I mean, when when I scored... Yeah, you do look like him, though. With him, and I, I, you know, I said my piece. That was it. You know, Mac 10 too. you know. B-Real and Ice Cube have worked together since. And while their friendship That's has dope. never returned to what it was, the beef should be remembered as an instance of a business dealing between artists, almost escalating into citywide violence. It should also be remembered I'm as glad an example didn't go to of the how street, two so. sides can come together to settle a dangerous situation. In a high stakes business climate that demands huge sales from artists' releases, there is intense pressure on artists to stay hot with fans. Oh, so, oh yeah, okay. He kind of sound, sounded just like Franklin. Okay, I had a feeling it was Solo. Shout out to Solo, though. Because sometimes, just making good music isn't enough. Masterfully, I would say, LL's longevity has to do with him mastering the game. He'll put out a record with Boys the Men that's a love song that's going to chart without question and sell the album. Now, to the perception on the street, it's like, what is he doing? Blah, 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 blah. But to the industry, it's still another platinum album. What he also does on the album is he would do collaboration with some new street cat, the 4321 with DMX, the cannabis, which is how to battle with him. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. In the late 90s. Here we go. Cannabis was an up and coming MC. Yeah. Lyricism and a few noteworthy records. Clearly among a handful of promising talent, he was asked to collaborate with Method Man, Red Man, DMX, and Master P for LL Cool J's 4321. LL was like a father figure in rap music, and I was just somebody who was coming in the game. I mean, I had done other records prior to 4321, but I was somebody who was coming in the game and was really looking for somebody to be under the Cannabis. game. Cannabis. And rock with them and tear the whole game down with them from the inside out. As a longtime listener and fan, Cannabis knew that LL Cool J had tattooed a microphone on his right arm. First thing I looked for was the mic. When I saw it, I was like, damn, you know, when you see the mic, and, and you know what it represents, you know that for anybody to put a mic on their arm, when I'm saying that, that damn, this is my life, or this is something that I that I do very well, something yeah, that here I we do go. very well, and I'm doing very well, or, you know, it's a statement. While recording 4321, Cannabis wrote a verse suggesting that he wanted to borrow the mic. Borrow the yep. arm. After hearing Cannabis rhyme, LL recorded a response, potentially creating a battle within the song, 4321. They was on the same song together, and they dissed each other. That shit, wow. See what was in my heart. If anything, you know, that shit. Nah, the design's funny as hell. 
nobody ain't took it like that, but hell, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't think cannabis was going. I mean, come on, I knew cannabis. I mean, even before you came <coughs> on, cannabis used to just come spit with the squad all the time. You know what I mean? So he ain't had that attitude of trying to get on and diss anybody. I know that for a fact. You throw something in the cage, you rattle his cage. He ain't got time to break it down with you, man. I'll take that mic off your arm. No, 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 no. He said cannabis watched LL. I think it was a tie, bro. Honestly, at first I was I was on cannabis side. Then LL came back with that one disc. It was a tie, bro. I don't know who won. Yeah, this is this is the debate right here. LL is a cultural icon. You don't come out your face and know you don't borrow nothing. You don't say you lucky to be on the racket. Perhaps trying to avoid an ongoing battle. LL told cannabis. <laughs> Artist you, you do not you like cannabis, bro. Rhyme. Cannabis agreed and rewrote the rhymes, thinking LL would do the same. He didn't. He took something out of context and he ran with it. You know, it's like he always been that way. You heard break it down. He getting that shape up while he doing this. Mm. With cannabis as my. It was on the same track, song. LL argued that no one would know who he was talking about. But rumors and copies of the original recordings began to spread around New York. Cannabis got murdered. Answer the disrespect mounted on cannabis. I think it was in an allegedly taped phone conversation, widely circulated on the internet. Cannabis was told that the two might publicly squash the beef by doing an underground track together. All cannabis had to do was wait two months for LL to become a villain. Niggas is not running around the country knowing about the situation. You got 50 niggas in New York that are in the industry running around running their fucking mouth. Uh, you, call, you call me earlier, right? Yeah, okay. <coughs> what I was doing, I was on the internet. I'm telling you that in Wyoming, niggas is talking about it. I'm telling you that in, in Texas, niggas is talking about it. In North Dakota. You're talking about it, you said North Dakota. Some people, that's how they perceive it. Especially with people that are coming into the rap game. Those opportunities to rock, those are my windows to, to my dream. That was the window to my dream. The fact yeah. that you feel and people are pressuring you to feel almost disrespected or slighted to a certain extent. You got niggas fucking sticking you to the floor talking about, yo, you need to write a seven hour round about L-Ride. Are you capable of standing the So this is an actual phone conversation. This, this track was hard. Y'all, bro, if y'all, like, listen, y'all got to give it up to Cannabis, bro. He went at LL hard, and I know how big LL was back in the day. This is like, what's the comparison? I, I, I can't think of one right now. But LL at this time was a fucking legend. He still lives. But Cannabis was probably just starting out. And win at LL hard, though. Y'all got to give it up to do, man. Ain't nobody doing that, bro. Everybody's scared nowadays. He got my respect. Hey, Cannabis, you watching it, bro. You got my, my utmost respect, bro. Round knockout. He had Mike Tyson on the track. Ha ha ha. 99% of your fans were high here. Then LL Cool J, the greatest of all time. <laughs> you gotta give it up to Candidate. Read the book that you wrote, search the footnotes about how you used to sniff coke, frying like a drug free role model. You disgust me. I know bitches to see you smoke weed recently. How can someone 
it's not wrong with smoking thing and then off the record do another you know uh if you can somehow point that out i mean in a lyrical way the greatest rapper of all time died on march 9th i believe that's when biggie died rest in peace of biggie still keep the emotion going and that'll make you not lying better. You really want to show off, we could get it on live in front of the cameras on your own sitcom. I'll let you kick them first. Fuck it, I'll let you kick them all. I'll even wait for the studio audience to applaud. Studio now, audience to applaud. Your arm, kick you in the groin, stick you for your Vanguard award in front of your mom. Your first, second, and third born. Make your wife get on the horn. Call Minister Farrakhan so he can persuade me to squash. <laughs> Tell you, bro. Tell you, man. Cannabis. He got a he got a fan out of me for sure for even standing up to LL. It's like going against nowadays, like J Cole or Kendrick, and you just starting out as a rapper. Come on, bro. I don't care if Canvas lost this disc for him to even go against him. But LL Cool J wasn't finished. Can I bust? This this way LL went back hard. LL and Leroy Cullen realized there was a great opportunity, you know, to kind of jump in there and kickstart. We're Reese second Reese round knockout. Uh, nah, that was, was can, that was a yeah, cannabis song. Uh, I'm sure. Don't Fans exist. Were excited okay. To hear LL Cool J's return to the battle. He did a lot more with his energy. And he seemed more intense, and it made it look in balance. Uh -huh. It's a, you ain't got a. <laughs> hey, he lost me. Cannabis lost me when he said that. He ain't got the style to eat an ass like me. Oh man, when he said that, bro, y'all gotta see my reaction if if you haven't. That caught me off guard. I'm like, what? I know who he, I know what he meant, but it's like when it just that was a pause moment. <laughs> he was a superstar on cannabis was like a young kid coming up bro and when you listen to the content it was like that was a super pause yeah did you hear what he said <coughs> the fact that many fans still consider second round knockout one of the best diss tracks in history the perception was that ll had defeated cannabis in battle in the long run l was just too much for him you know he just was too much for cannabis you know nobody it was ever it was closer than people think cannabis out on the mic, indoor. That outdoor. man said, "I got to start eating niggas' ass. You ain't got to start eating nigga ass like me." I'm like, "What?" That was super pause. And you know what's crazy? Whenever I review a track, of someone saying it like that, I guess that was the thing back then. A rapper saying, "Oh, I'm gonna eat your ass, eat your ass, something like that." And I'm when I hear, I'm like, "That's pause, bro." Door. You know, I know that's not what he meant, but that was, was that was pause, nevertheless. put him on top? His iconic status? Nowadays, because of media and things like that, you got to be careful on who you jump on. Because a, a, a company like a Def Jam or somebody at a universal music system, they have more suasion than other companies. I got a mic on my arm, too. As a an ode to the life of cannabis or the, the ambition of cannabis. You know? hmm. LL was Whether too big, man. LL Cool J hurt cannabis' career. It certainly helped LL Cool J's. In fact, LL Cool J even thanked Cannabis in the liner notes of his Greatest of All Time album. Mm. You know what, what, what's so fucked up, man? It was like, 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 I always looked up to And man. LL Cool J was too big, man. Just like, if, if you need to put yourself in my position, I'm that. It, my bad, Paul. It's like you dissing Drake, bro. You can it's like Pusha T. Even though Pusha T won that beef. Matter of fact, I don't know. Because Pusha T went crazy at Drake. But Drake still selling records. Pusha T still selling records too. His last album was crazy. That's that shit was damn near classy. But people gonna forget about that because it's Drake, if y'all get what I mean. It, it's fucked up as that sound. It's Drake, man. You you not gonna murder Drake for real. <clears throat> you just not. I was locked up for assault two, an escape, and a bail jump. And that's three felonies on one try. Former hit squad MC K Solo spent 36 months in prison, starting in 1994. In the prison yard, he battled other MCs, 
including a then unknown rapper from Yonkers named DMX. We went at it. And I was reaching DMX. for my shit. He really had me reaching for my shit. <coughs> oh, shit. Both rappers recorded songs entitled Spellbound and claimed credit for the idea. K-S-O-L-O, Spellbound. K-Solo, I don't know who this dude is. DMX. I wrote Spellbound in like, before I got locked up in, in Newport Gardens in Brownsville. Freedom, Rock Him's Man, See, all them niggas heard Spellbound before it dropped. So why would you get in the world and say you wrote Spellbound of all songs when you know you're a dark rapper? You don't rhyme about nothing good. So where the hell does Spellbound come out your mouth? You was better off saying you wrote Tales from the Crack Side. Get it? Biggie said in the song, me and my... But yeah, I know that Biggie line, too. It was a lot of pause lyrics back in the day, bro. That's what I'm talking about. You look so good. you Bro, that, that line was... Yeah, that's that's the most pause moment line ever. Rest in peace, Biggie. But that line was crazy. DMX dissed K Solo on a track called "Get At Me, Dog." Oh, he dissed him on that song. Wait, what? I just did a review on that DMX song. DMX dissed K Solo on a track called "Get At Me, Dog." That's crazy. To his motherfucking dick, but I'm like this, okay? Jail niggas don't play that suck my dick shit. Yeah, it's fine. I was willing to go out for that one. In fact, I went to the Apollo to see my man. When they was doing 321, I just wanted to talk to him. He hollering like a bitch. Get a gun. He didn't want to confront me. You know what I'm saying? Because I just wanted to talk to him, basically, you know. He was talking all that suck my dick shit. I wanted to come to his face and actually show him how we suck dick. You know what I mean? What the fuck? Oh, come on, bro. Oh, my God. Yo, just just when we just talking about them them pause moments. What? Wanna confront me, you know what I'm saying? Cause I just wanted to talk to him, basically, you know. He was talking all that suck my dick shit. I wanted to come to his face and actually show him how we suck dick. Come on. <laughs> <coughs> oh shit. Oh my god. Hey, hey. hey. All, all the older folks in here, man, y'all got to admit, y'all was saying a lot, not all of y'all, but some of y'all peoples back in the day, y'all was saying a lot of pause moments, pause shit, with, like this. Look at this. He was talking all that suck my dick shit. I wanted to come to his face and actually show him how we suck dick, you know what I mean? Oh, man, hey. Just when we were just having this conversation, he go out and just say this. <laughs> oh my god, yo! And he said he just got locked up. Yeah, he liked that. He for sure. He just said he just got out of prison too. He liked that, bro. I don't want no beef with you. Come on, bro. He was talking all that suck my dick shit. I wanted to come to his face and actually show him how we suck dick. You know what I mean? And he didn't want to step to me like a man, so I know. You know what I'm saying? I can see why. He that deal. He's a straight pussy. He didn't want to see me. That I, I wouldn't want to see, see you too, Bernie. Of Johnny Dane. Lie detector approve it all. Because me saying it, he's saying it. It'll go back and forth. If we bring a lie detector right here, right now. Wow. The truth to be out. It'll be a done rap. Okay. That was super sus. You're going to feel the pressure on your arm now. I want you to sit back, relax, look straight You're taking ahead, a lie detective? Answer all my questions, <coughs> yes or no, and try not to move. Man, that shit, hold on. Let me see what y'all saying. That... K, K, so, bro, K Solo, man, I was about to review you on my channel, bro. Yo, hey, I'm glad y'all, I'm about to say, like, if y'all with that comment, I ain't gonna lie. So, I was just about to review him on my channel. Now I'm debating about it. I ain't gonna lie. Move will be finished in approximately 60 seconds. Dipset brought the pause in here. <laughs> Is your name DMX? <laughs> no. Is your name K Solo? Yes. They brought the lie detector out. A.K.A. Ray Solo? No. What is this for? 
Are you a rap artist? Yes. And he was licking his lips when he said that. Prison with DMX. Yes. Did you have a freestyle battle with DMX in prison? Yes. Did you? These prison heads, crazy man. Life? Yes. Did you ever lie to your mother? Yes. Did you write the rhyme spellbound? Yes. Did DMX write any of the lyrics of spellbound? No. He lied. I think. I ain't Are never been on a uh, lie detector test. Yes. I don't know. They brought the lie detector test out. Have you just told me the truth? This is corny here. Yeah, this shit corny. Yes. Did you purposely lie to me on any of the questions? No. I don't know if he's lying or not. I ain't never did one of Thank these you. things. The test is over. Now let's see how we did. <coughs> Let me see this. Eight. Did DMX write any of the lyrics for Spellbound? I'd say there is a slight reaction on that portion of it. Yeah, I, I did see a move. Yo, this is crazy. But I'm saying, truthfully, he didn't write that part. The See, the lie detector don't lie. As I say, this isn't the bottom line definition. And if did DMX write any of the lyrics of Spellbound? Now, if I were to look at this chart, I'd say that one was not truthful. <laughs> nah, bro, I'm telling y'all, bro. Man, oh man, K Solo, I was about to review you on my channel, man. I might, I might debate about it now. Nah. Yo, first he said that pause moment. Now nah, he lying. I don't even know if I want to review him now. Nah. With question eight, the only question that provoked a reaction, the test results become difficult to analyze. That's but, just for a reaction. But this do look like it's scripted question though. Question number seven. Did you write? The theme for Spellbound came out truthful. Okay. Eight. Did DMX write any of the lyrics for Spellbound? You said no. And there's a doubt in that. Oh, shit. As far as not being truthful. So I said yes. I got one and I lost the other one. Okay. DMX, we you two said for two. No. Okay. And question number nine, are you the one who two for two. spellbound? You said yes, and you came out truthful. See ya. He floated through this. I there can't no take this really man seriously, bro. reactions on this chart. There's some minor reactions. What I usually do prior to a polygraph exam is I offer. I ain't never did the polygraph. The subject a cup of coffee, if not two. He thinks I'm being a nice guy, but I'm not really. What I'm trying to do is put more caffeine into him to get better reactions. You need more reaction. I want to wind the person up. What is this? I don't who who, who set this up? Totally calm. I want somebody who's up. Height. You was out when you first came out. I came to pee on your parade and put your fucking campfire out. You was no rough rider. This the corniest shit I ever seen in my life. In C block, you was latex life, say sex, you uncircumcised dick straight off the top, crackhead smack. I don't want to ever hear another dick word ever come out of his mouth again, bro. I will skip this. Wasn't saying shit when I seen him at the Apollo with L method and red. Didn't even talk. Claiming to be the chip off Yonkers walk, but if you keep on fucking around, you're gonna be picking your teeth up off the sidewalk. Your shit'll get smashed with no cash. You need more than 101 pit bulls to get me off of your crack ass. Fuck out of here, nigga. Karis versus. Yeah, well, get that yeah, out of get that out of the way, man. On one hand, because of the. Hold on, what? KRS one and that, bro, these beefs is random as hell, bro. Kelly is yeah. Double edged sword. On one hand, because of the stature of KRS, he is one of the best MCs to ever bless the mic. And his track record is untouched.
Yeah, I, I'm so confused, bro. Comes from the battle. That's where KRS originated. When he came with Criminal Minded, he had the theme song to my life. For instance, when he dissed PM Don, I mean, they're not like gangster rappers and probably not even a threat. But I mean, he showed up and he rolled. Nah, Jamo Jerome, I never heard this beef. Never. I know that that that's crazy. This this like a random ass beef. This remind me when I heard Soldier Boy beef with Ice T. That that's that's a he weird combination. Me off the stage and took over the show. KRS one would mop the floor with now. KRS was looking at a situation That's where crazy. I think he was feeling disrespected. I don't Not never want to hear another dick word that come out that man's mouth. That's fans that have come that up over the past four or five years and have become acclimated to hip hop via commercial TV and radio to deal with a generation of people who Shout out to at you and not even care. That's got to hurt. I heard Dougie Fresh ain't nobody. I heard Chuck D ain't nobody. I've been hearing this. But then it came to me. The idea that I can be old or Big Daddy Kane or Chuck yeah, D these can be old don't make no somehow sense, we're, un, we're not relevant. That somehow because my career is 16 years, that you look down on that. You don't aspire to do that yourself or outdo me. On number one, Nelly's track on 2001's Training Day soundtrack. Nelly lashed out at his critics, including heads and fellow MCs who weren't giving him respect. Wow. Ironically, the title number one is incredibly similar to the title of KRS One song entitled I'm Still Number One in which 22-year-old KRS One defiantly served hip-hop legend Melly Mel. You know what you need to learn? Old school artists don't always burn. You're just another rapper who's had his turn. Now it's my turn. I said, uh. 50 years down the line, you can start this. Because we'll be the old school artists. And even in that... Yo, y'all got to think, too. The way these beats be starting be the most ridiculous, retardedest ways to even start up a beef because someone claiming that they number one like that i don't know i get the it's a promotion for you probably for your next album but it'd it be so weird how these beats be started i'll say a rhyme a brand new style ruthless and wild running around spending money having fun because even then i'm still number, number one, one. 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 battle over uh, I had a good time today, bro. Whether Nelly's comments been were fun. directed at him or not, KRS One felt the need to respond, coming after Nelly on Clear Him Out. You tired of me saying what's real hip hop? Well, I'm tired of you biting my shit to go pop. <laughs> you think I care if you platinum? Um, where I come from, we be slapping them. Um. <laughs> I never said anything about the man. I had nothing but the utmost respect for the man. Like I said, the man paved the way for me to be here. But in return, though, you know what I'm saying? You can't slap me and not expect me to slap you back. Nelly slapped back in his verse on the remix of Beanie Siegel's Rock the Mic. Respectfully to Nelly. KRS one would kill him in the freestyle. If they battled together actually rapping, it, it would have been no contest. And KRS one would kill him. Chris is gonna win no matter what. And I like I rock with Nelly. And when you're in that situation, all it takes for that person is to have one good shot or one good cap or even stand up to you and it gets weighed differently. You get Nelly. I wanna see the Jay Z and Nas ooh, one. You know, he just clowned Chris. <laughs> Oh, you so old, you need a rapping pension. He wants to take my rock the mic remix like he's going to answer that. No, that was an answer for what you did. That's that's not an attack. You know what I'm saying? That was you first. You know what I'm saying? And the rock the mic remix, that ain't a song, fam. That was four bars. I spit four, five, six bars about you. You know what I'm saying? That's not a whole song. That ain't how I do my song. But I make sure when I do a song, it's going to bang nationwide. It's going to bang in the clubs. So he's going to always hear it. It ain't going to be no mixtape song. It's going to be something people going to love. And they're going to play it to where his ears going to hurt. Around the country, they would just play Nelly's record, including Nelly's diss 
to this Karen is the most random this battle ever and never play Chris's record at all and then you have DJs on the air that don't even have that sense of history to even put it in a proper context one context might be that commercial radio creates a lopsided battlefield that might be compared to a moment in battling history when DJs battled at parties in the 70s no one would share sound systems this typically meant that whoever had the biggest system won because he was all anyone could hear. There'd be six different groups on the bill and everybody got to bring their sound system. I battled Bambada in 77 in the PAL with my little bullshit sound system. So all we got to do is be heard. That was the problem, huh? That's what I wanted to say. People wanted me to react to African Bambada, uh, who was the Zulu Nation. One of his songs... Respectfully, I can't do that. And most of y'all probably know why I can't do that. So, with that being said, unless if the accusations against them ain't true, until then, I can't, I can't review African Band by them. Hell, I, I love Hell. I love Rock Respectfully. Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? Maybe because I wasn't listening to him. So that means I'm not a hip hop head. I'm not a hip hop fan or nothing like that. Not, oh, we got to worship and praise KRS because he got 10 albums out. No. But you can't diss him either. Yo, fam, this game was here before you. You wasn't the first one to make a hip hop album. You know what I'm saying? If you ask me, he's hypocritical. Everybody in the whole industry knows there's two rules to hip hop. It's something the way he thinks. His rules of hip hop. Are, he sets and tells what is and what's not. The accusations are true, but shit. I'm sorry for all those. Yeah, for all those that wanted me to react to, uh, react to African Band Body, I can't do it, bro. Out of respect. For the victims that he, you know what I'm saying? I can't do it. I'm not going to do it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, it's true. All right, but I'm not going to review him. Because I heard some shit about African Band but I'm like, I can't bring him on my channel at all. That man is a, y'all know. If y'all know, y'all know. Record company people are shady. Rule number 4081. Don't yeah, I heard about that, uh, Lord. Out, he was booked out for ducks. That's crazy. Get paid. You know what I'm saying? Um, him and Scholar Rock. We is the super hoe. You know what I'm saying? What it was a hip hop when you did it then, so it's not hip hop when I do it now. Don't think yeah. you're gonna try to battle me lyric for lyric MC. Why? You, why? That's how you got on. That's that's the same theory you was throwing off. You know what I'm saying? Why that that dang? Somebody at Universal. <laughs> <laughs> Africa being booty. Listen, I'm not gonna talk about the uh situation. It was understood, don't have to be explained. I just cause I get a lot of requests for me to react to his music because people say he was like the pioneer of hip hop. But I, I'm already known about the accusations against him and the story, so I can't do it. Right, yeah, I say KRS. Man, that fool trying to get me. <laughs> oh, okay, no. I think you need to remix the record um, because that guy's crazy. You look on the cover of his album, he got on big chains, dookie ropes, watches, him and Skylar Rock, guns and all. You know what I'm saying? That ain't how I do my thing. I've never been on a cover with guns. That's how you set your example. So what, was it hip-hop then? They said, let's put this record out. Let's try to This is the most crazy game. random, random beef ever. It's a blatant attack to get back in the game, fam. It's too obvious. If it was really about <laughs> that, call I had a if you really about attention, talk. You stupid. Talk. Now, I can sit here and talk for days and say, look. K Solo definitely listen to African Band Bobby. No, this is your chance to get back in the game. You found an angle to attack. We must do that. But you know what the people respect the most? You hate for real and you hate universal. Your whole style sounds like an in sync commercial. Damn. I'm the baddest with the mic apparatus. Challenging the guard of rappers. What song is this? What song is this? Y'all let me know. Play Nelly I'll they review. Play KRS. You have a fan base and a generation of people who are being fed, <coughs> being taught hip hop by corporations who have a very different agenda than what KRS One had. At the end of the real hip hop is over here. KRS One called for an all hip hop boycott of Nelly's sophomore album, Nellyville. Wow. 
You got people that want to wow. die. That's fine. Every army. Damn. I, I he failed because I heard this album with Diamond or something. I think this the album that went Diamond. Is it? If that's up, man, Karis, you got to take L on this one. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just letting them know my army is a lot bigger than his. You know, Nelly has 10 billion fans. If the album sells, then Chris loses. That might have worked with the cats on the corner. With Over the here? Radio, That's so on and so on and so forth. But as far as, you know, a, a Nelly fan, they wasn't going to stop them from buying Nelly's album. So you're talking about one man who's an MC who's a hip-hop KRS one you got to take the L on this one, man. You know, we love you, but... You know, at stake. So by... The time Nelly's album came out, he was on like five magazine covers. He was on TV. There was a big push. Untouched by KRS One's boycott, <laughs> Nellyville sold four million seven hundred and fifty-seven thousand eight hundred and seventy-six albums in two thousand two, oh making my. it the second highest-selling album of the year. The thing that I took from the Nelly KRS One battle that was hey, so K sad. KRS One, we KRS love you, but you gotta take an L on this one, bro. More than thirty thousand units. Oh, Even man. with dissing the guy who was number one in sales. That's what I'm saying. It's like that cannabis and LL situation. It's no way the public going to say cannabis beat LL. Even though I feel like LL kind of won, but cannabis went hard on him. But LL had more power. Nelly at the time had more power than Karis one Denying... Not even mentioning Karis one lyrical ability. We all know he's better lyrically. Than Nelly. Everybody knows this. But Nelly had more power, bro. You not gonna beat that at all. You just not. You're uh, not. Sucker, what? Ironically, KRS One. Yeah, KRS One got the respect, definitely. KRS's own point. Corporate interests have so distorted the game that the quality of the battle tracks had almost nothing to do with the battle's outcome. Both are right. Hip hop means both. It can't be all KRS, and it can't be all Nelly. But what happened was, it was all Nelly. While it seemed in early 2003 hey. that Nelly had won, it happens. fans at Hot 97, New York's June Summer Jam at Giant Stadium in New Jersey, disagreed and booed during much of Nelly's set. Wow. While many fans and journalists were baffled by the booing, attributing it to the 50 Cent fans on hand or citing Nelly's playlist, it's possible that they were only answering KRS-One's call to arms. Wow. So they end up dead Fuck booing them. Dear. There, okay. Fuck some of dear, cause the radio is programming motherfuckers to like certain shit and all that shit, man. Fuck all them little summer jams for all them radio stations. I know I'm a regret saying no, I don't mean that y'all. <laughs> yeah, respectfully designs. He was KRS was mad about that. Like that's what I'm saying. The way these beeps start up is so retarded. But at the end of the day, they trying to sell records and negativity sales. So that that I guess it it boosted their sales. I mean, more so Nelly. Now, nah, really not so Nelly because fans at that time I heard Nelly was super big was going to buy his records regardless. So that's tough. But oh, it just, man. it's retarded I'm how these. Man. Come perform at your summer jam. Holla back, boy. Many artists and industry professionals compare the business of rap to another line of work. You can't blame a pimp for getting hoes. If you could get them, then get them. But, you know, you as the motherfucking hoe guy be like, fuck that. I'm going to stop pimping. Sticky hoes. fingers. You know what I'm saying? It's the labels, it's the pimps. That's the PIMP. You the hoe, B. As soon as you ain't making no money, get the fuck out of here. Who pimping, nigga? Who pimping? What's really good? Who pimping? Who's sipping? <laughs> what you talking about? What's really good? What are you talking about, bro? Please tell me. I want to understand. What are you, where are you no, getting no, no. information from? I mean, from? as far as, like... <laughs> 50 Cent's first break came when Jam... Yeah, 50! MJ label. When Jay's Run DMC touring schedule became too hectic, 50 Cent left the label. And signed with Columbia. Columbia. I kind of want to react to B3. We might as well. I had to negotiate a release for JMJ, but Jam Master J got 50000 on. And Tony didn't negotiate it for me and, and, and worked the deal out through Columbia Records, got $10,000. I had $5,000. I was still selling crack. 
during the mm. whole Columbia theater. How do you find a way to generate income enough to feed yourself for over a year waiting for an album to come out and be able to go to the studio whenever they call you to go? It's a mistake to think at all. Afini Shakur, rest in peace. You're not going to be in the entertainment industry in any form and not be exploited. It's not going to happen. But we live with exploitation every day. The issue is um, the compensation for the exploitation. I think that Tupac, whatever he started with, he started with the same basic contract everybody else starts with in the industry. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He went back and made them change that time and time again. It's what you do. If you're, if you're good enough, then you force them to change it. Yeah, I kind of want Detroit. Detroit. Five years, the business landscape in hip-hop has become treacherous, and especially treacherous for up-and-coming artists. They in the city with him. Royce the Five. I think I heard about this beef. Shout out to Royce the Five. Nah, shout out to D12. Uh, rest in peace to Proof. Damn, they... I think I heard about this beat. I think I seen a video of Royce the Five Nine. I think he had like an AK or a gun, like in the he was in the backseat of a car. That's kind of how I heard about this beat. I gotta, I gotta see this. D12 was formed as an all-star group on the Detroit scene. Its members included Eminem, Bizarre, Caniva, Swift, Proof, R.I.P. Proof, Con Artist. And the late Bugs, who was shot to death in a fight in Belle Isle, Belle Isle Park, in the late 1990s. I got so much memories at this point. Oh my God, bro! It was better when you was a kid, though. If you know, you know Belle Isle. When I was a kid, that shit used to be jumping, bro. Now it's like it ain't the same no more. Was bro. Shot to death in a fight in Detroit's Belle Isle Park, in the late 1990s. D12's members, frustrated by their inability to break into the game. Went their separate ways. Eminem was in Detroit by Bizarre. Then he met Royce. All the beginning stages of Eminem's career, he was with Royce. As potentially the two best unsigned MCs in Detroit, Eminem <coughs> and Royce the Five Nine joined forces. You know, I was right there in Detroit when it was going on. It was crazy for real. See, I, this shit was like, I, I don't know a year it took place, but I probably was like four or five years old, so I was it was way before my time. But I heard about it, like I only heard about it. But I heard, like I seen a video of Royce the Five Nine in the backseat of a car with the gun. I, I forgot what gun it was, but that nigga was strapped. It, it, I ain't know it turned serious. Last time, <clears throat> uh, trying to shop a deal. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna quit rap. I'm gonna quit rapping. Period. And his first time was L.A. And he never came home. Eminem. Eminem signed with Dr. Dre's Aftermath Records and wanted to bring Royce with him. Slim played Dre one of my demos. Dre liked it. So I went out to Cali. I started working, like, on, on the Chronic album, helping them out or whatever. I wrote a couple songs. One of the songs made the album. It was called The Message featuring Mary J. Blige. Royce was progressing with Eminem in the Dr. Dre camp. But suddenly things got complicated. My manager Kino was quoted in the vibe as saying, I've seen Eminem sit Dre down like a pupil or mm. something to that nature. Fair one and here seven miles. Dre seven miles. People heard about it and, and got pissed. He let me know he was upset. He, he, he let me know it wasn't no problem with me. You know, he just upset at my manager for what he said. Understandably. A young artist looking to get in the game might feel just a little pressure when Dr. Dre says he has a problem with that artist's manager. I don't give a fuck with nobody say that's my nigga. I'm a loyal nigga. So fuck him. Fuck everybody. It's not about money with me no more, man. Like that's my motherfucking Shout out to Royce. You know what I'm saying? Like he ain't my manager, he my man. M had his back 100 percent He loved Royce. Loved him to death. Royce was Eminem's hype up man. And nobody could take that job from him. D12 was just M's boy. He wasn't even thought about it. Royce. All the other D12 members was mediocre. 
Bizarre was cold. I liked Bizarre. Bizarre was nice as fuck. And Proof. And what's, what's the other name? I think his name is Conniva. He was straight too. The Five Nine was the first priority to come out. Royce was in the driver's seat. Eager to establish himself as you don't, you don't like the Bizarre? Royce was having a bizarre was nice to me. himself into the protege system under Eminem. Instead of waiting for Eminem to put out Royce's record, Royce, based on his relationship with Eminem, and solid appearances on Eminem's Slim Shady LP, signed a deal at Tommy Boy Records. M took 10 steps to put us on, so that respect and that love will always be there. But we're our own men. You know, we eat off our own plate. We're not, we're not on the Eminem plate. We're not eating off the Eminem plate or the Dr. Dre plate or the Interscope plate. We eat off our own plate. M asked me, say, yo, Royce. Mm. Yeah, Royce. You finish this oh. tour out with me. You know what I'm saying? I'll need you to finish this tour out with me, dude. And that'd be cool. Royce is like, well, no, man, I got to start my, my record. Tommy Boy just signed me to the such. He totally flipped the script. Left without a hype man, Eminem reached out to his childhood friend, Proof, with whom he had a falling out. Him and Proof mm. made up, you know what I'm saying? Because they was best friends. No reason why they should be R.P. Proof. He asked Proof, could he rotate with Royce? So Royce said, um, well, just let Proof do it. I got to get in the studio and uh, do my album. Em was like, damn. I just got you a million dollar deal. Basically co-signed for you. You can't even finish this tour out. Although mm. Royce denied that he rejected Eminem's offer, Proof quickly became Eminem's permanent hype man. So once he started to fade away from Eminem, Eminem concentrated more on D12. So actually, I would like to thank Royce for getting D12 back together. So they fell out for a little bit. They got back together. Without the support of Eminem and Dr. Dre, Royce begged the question of whether he left the nest too soon. And I'll never forget one day he, he was salty. Came in the studio. He wanted to, he wanted to record. Rock City over with M, and M was like, "Yo, I got, I got this D12 deadline. You know, I'm about to give it you another day." And Royce couldn't understand that. He was like, "What? I'm Royce, man. What you doing?" Royce began to believe that D12 was souring his relationship with Eminem. Huh. We all, in fact, embrace Royce on the fact of M embrace Royce. You being dope is dope for me because you around my man's. That make you another dope nigga in our you clique. That was that I told I told him about everybody. He got the most potential. When they went on tour, they did a Green Lantern mixtape. I submitted them a freestyle verse. For some reason, they listened to the verse and felt like I was dissing. Even him. He comes on before his record even starts and said, "Fuck anger management. I need somebody to manage my anger." And he took that as I was saying, "Fuck the anger management tour." Wow. If you cool with him, and why would you put something in there that makes a man even think that it's Which a diss? He said, fuck anger management. Anger management is the name of Eminem's tour. Bottom line. They took my mm. shit off, and it got back to me through somebody else. And I'm thinking, why would Em think I would do something like that to him, of all people? Em was supposed to be upset. He said, he's not talk I'm not talking to Royce, period. I'm You're calling so around frantically. What's, what's wrong with Em? What's the problem? Like, we can, we can solve it in one talk. Eminem didn't want to talk to him, because you know why? It's two words. It's not subliminal. Fuck in your management. Well, I said, I'm trying to get him to talk to you, not Royce. What the fuck you mean you're trying to get him to talk to you? Royce would see our, our manager in the club and say, man, I don't think them niggas ready. They ain't yeah, ready to come right. out yet. Like, you, you, nigga, you, you ain't ready. You, nigga. Tell me we ain't ready. Ain't then, ready we, then we confront him. He said, no, man, I ain't saying that. He don't eat. I, I didn't play you out of position. Was hard to play out of position because I didn't play you out of position. None of these will play you out of position. You played yourself out of position. With ego, your ego play you out of position. For you, it's my time to shine. I'm about to get it. I'm about to go. Let's go. Fuck it. How it took me to get here. I'm you gotta play your role. About to go. That monster, whoever that monster was, is what destroyed you. Then <laughs> you blame us. Don't blame us. Although Royce had recorded many songs, Tommy Boy refused to release Royce's Rock City album. I think it was because Dre, Dre wasn't involved as much as they thought he should be. M wasn't involved as much as he should be, and then, you know, we parted ways. Finally, Royce That's released tough. his Rock City album on independent distributor Koch Records. Though the Source magazine called Royce the comp- It's just, like I said, bro, the shit these beasts be starting is retarded, bro. It just retarded, bro, all because he didn't want to be on the tour. I don't know, it, it just be- 
not a single beef throughout none of these parts that I'm like, okay, now I understand why that started. It's all over bullshit. Like, ah, it's all over bullshit, bro. Not because someone did something to you in the past. Nothing. It's either about money or it's about, oh, I thought he said something, so I had to retaliate. Or it just... Mm -hmm. On independent distributor Koch Records. Though the Source magazine called Royce the complete MC, Koch Records distribution machine lacked the power and reach of any of his former labels. In an unrelated internet interview, Royce, amidst his anger and confusion, lashed out. Who would you say is uh, ruining rap right now? Like, who do you think's whack? Or who would you want to start a beef with anytime soon? Uh, D12. D12? Wow. He said, he said ah, that interview was said that on purpose, bro. Huh? Shit, I mean, it's the truth. That's how I feel, you know what I'm saying? Even when I'm not mad, I feel like they're garbage. Damn, this is Royce. It was his voice. No doubt it was Royce. So he's like, all right, you know what, man? Enough is enough. We ain't Royce, motherfucker. We don't speak in vain. We don't act like we street. We don't not say names. We don't ask him to walk us in the door to get a deal and then turn our back on him when he need his boys for real. Uh -huh. That's neither here nor dead dog. His first video was shot up and in why, y'all? Is this nigga the king of Detroit the king of getting his ass whipped and left by his boy? That's Ryan Montgomery thinking out loud with rhinestones in his do-rag. You tough, dog. <laughs> So I went to the radio the next day. From the moment I walked in the door, uh -huh. it's always been envy towards Royce. Asking him, what is he doing uh -huh. here? What you helping him for? <laughs> and it just hit the fan. They oh. finally decided to pick their balls up and eyes on. Next day, my man got on the radio. I was talking shit. Running his mouth. Said he'll smack my ugly wife. Smack your ugly wife. <laughs> Said he is smack swift. Swifty, I'll slap you. He'll he'll smack the nice. Denying I'll slap. Smack me and did it. Disrespect, man. Everybody. Royce dug up and dusted off a three-year-old. Okay, now it's gonna get into the streets because you mentioned a dude wife. It's over with. Never released this. He had written about D12s. What up, Jay? Shout out to London. Like right in the vault. Eminem minions. We still giving each other plays and shit. Like what up, though, man? Yeah, this is and that. He had this song already on it. No, nigga, how can I relate to a group with four dudes? It's easily replaced. Wow. Niggas when they talk backwards. What? Call Paul and have him write you off on the tax. I'm a solo artist. Damn. One of the crew. Fans coming up to y'all like, which one is you? You the fat. What makes the great diss track is um, you saying I gotta hear that diss track. That, that, the world that, that was tough. Like me calling Bizarre fat, saying you got a shower cap. I mean, the whole world knows he's fat. He wears a fucking shower cap. Arresting the big fat bear that got to jump in the character to rap. Niggas, give me this mic. You ain't doing it right. You call yourself an idiot. I'm just proving you right. It must have ruffled their feathers. They got all upset. What D12 claimed offended them more than Royce's disses was a line mentioning late D12 member Bugs, suggesting that if Bizarre wants beef, he could meet up with Bugs. I don't give a fuck, nigga. You can beat up with gloves. And if you want beef, fuck it. You can meet up with Bugs. He talking about one of uh, the D2 members that got killed at Bell Isle back in the day. Uh, his name Bugs. That's tough. That That's disrespectful, man. Nah, nah, it's really going to get into the streets for real. The Bugs line to the next level. Hell yeah. If, that's how we Bugs. Yeah, that's. Go, no, man. Please, please man. Man. Next Dog. question. He said Bugs name in the song. He shouldn't even be worried about us. He should be worried about Bugs people. After premiere, Bugs people, you worried about man? Now what? On the radio. He would be at a Detroit club called Lush that night. And I'm going to the Lush tonight. So whoever thinks that that's on the east side, I think. Come see me tonight. Deny. No, deny. That ain't just D12. No, that's anybody no. Deny. All right. Deny. This why I probably want to see that video with him and the with the gun in the back seat. Beat people up with one arm. Yeah, yeah, it was bugs. People at was at the lust looking for him. Yeah, I don't blame him. You talk about my dead people's bro, it's over with, bro. Like, I don't blame him. He said, Wow, Boston like Roy Jones. We was there five minutes. Everybody was there. Everybody Niggas was there, there five minutes. He showed up. He wasn't there. Some of his people was there. That night, I get a call. D12 just jumped your friend. One of my one of my niggas. Wow. D12 just jumped him at the club that I was on my way to. So what, what happened that night? 
Hey, one of his soldiers got smashed the fuck up, right? And his shoes is on this block right now somewhere. I think somebody wearing them. Somebody wearing them. You know what? It's like 30 niggas. They jump bro, on. I swear, Allen, that's on some Chicago drip, bro. That's a, it's so you don't hear that in Detroit rap. I promise you, bro. Like this in the dead or talking about you about to be up there with him, bro. That shit. I mean, nowadays it is, but back in the day, you you never hear that, bro. That shit, like you know that's man? some Chicago drill shit for real. He get up and drive home. <laughs> then he goes to the hospital. And that's how Malcolm X came along. Royce 5 9 would like to apologize to the family of my homeboy Bugs for letting that line leak out the radio. It's a long story how it happened. D12, mm. dog, y'all better quit acting like that with my man, too. Like I was trying to disrespect him or something. I was trying to disrespect y'all because that's what I'm doing from here on in. Mm. Although he apologized for Bugs, Royce's Malcolm X up the ante. What rap crew I gotta snatch up out the game? <laughs> Who must I smack for saying my name? Yeah. Somebody don't die, it's probably you. You couldn't fit Bazaar's body in my shoes. He went after Pete. Ah. You better hope you and the white boy keep in touch. And Ooh. be a good little hype man or your lease is up. Since Slim Sign fits the white boy. This much is good because you got a grill like a fucking truck. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you can run. R. P. The proof. I'll be on your porch with a cheeseburger trying to lure you outside. Disease in it. Bazaar say, chit 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 AKA Denon Porter and Swift. Yeah, that's that's the song Malcolm X. Oh yeah, I'm I'm reviewing that song, bro. I got to. This I'm adding a lot of more diss tracks to my list now on my review list. I'm glad I did this. Hell yeah. I was like, what is Malcolm X? That's the song of his. I'm glad I did this. He told me at a club when he was scared that Swift was gonna come and smack him. But he told me to come to his crib and come play Madden. Come 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 down the street and play Madden with me and come kick it with me. See how real I am. He's a whole ass nigga, dog, for real. Mm. That's a bitch. You gonna invite a nigga you don't even know to your crib and play Madden? He started dressing Eminem. Eminem totally in Hold on, y'all. Let me get some water. I'll be right back. said turn the volume up i ain't gonna lie this is the highest it, it goes that's just the video he said after that d12 was over i think d12 i heard d12 broke up really when uh proof died that's tough i gotta hear that malcolm x track though for sure <laughs> Yeah, this the highest it goes, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, Jason. Look. 
Hell yes, yeah, sorry, it's a go. Ignored the whole situation. He was like, oh, that's fucked up. But he had, he had so much love for Royce that he, he didn't even get involved. Yeah, well, I ain't he hear Eminem involved, talk at all like about this. Him, but he didn't get involved in it lyrically. On a Green Lantern mixtape, Eminem... You might be loud on the mic, let me see. I might be a tad bit loud, I ain't gonna lie. Hi, Lord. Making matters worse, Royce even threatened to sign with Murder Inc. Did he talk about it? Making matters worse, Royce even threatened to sign with Murder Inc. Records. Eminem and D12's adversary in another race with murder. Paul better call me like he called Benzino. Matter of fact, I might even do a song with Ray. Sign a murder ink and hit you with a song of death. We got uh. <laughs> Royce, murder ink? He said he was starting to murder ink. Murder ink don't even want to start. Because Royce and D12 were both in Detroit, the proximity created an atmosphere of potential violence. Y'all really, really want to play. We right under your nose. Royce the 5'9 is a whole ass nigga. That's number one. That's number two why he's a whole ass nigga. It's because the next week he saw my man Swift at the studio. He had five niggas with him and he didn't do shit. Nothing. Come outside. Come outside. Mm. Nothing. That's after his man got mad. Come outside. You really pop. What do you come outside? What the fuck you say? He walked. He walked in this. Oh, you only came out here with a couple of okay. And her girl. He said that was crazy. He came from Toledo and go to Detroit the night that it happened. That's tough. Oh, it's coming up. All right, bet. <laughs> what are you talking about? He walked out here with six dudes, dog. With drink. With drink. <laughs> and they pissed him. <laughs> he walked up to me like this. So what's up? I didn't shake his hand. Hell no. I said, you said you was going to smack me. You said you was going to smack my dog wife. Right. It ain't nothing to talk. You talked about bugs. It ain't nothing, ain't to, talk nothing about. to talk What's about. Up? That shit went to the streets. If you come outside, you getting popped. <laughs> Call all your niggas. <laughs> then we, we was there in five minutes and walked away. The greatest threats to either side were the artist's street reps who might not appreciate the difference between what's on record and what's in the streets. All in your neighborhood. I just take all the precautions. That's all. I do this. I wear this. I keep this. This, this, this the video I'm talking I don't about. Go anywhere. I don't hang out. I don't go to club. We still went to. That's the video I'm talking about. That's how I kind of knew about this beat. I saw that like a long time ago. I don't hang out with my enemies. Hang out for what? You know what I'm saying? I ain't looking for trouble. You know what I'm saying? So anything I do from this point on in my life will be out of self defense. See that? Uh. Y'all niggas get through that first. Y'all niggas just talk from my freezing sleeve. What's me? Beef is when these rappers be believing they rhymes and the nigga on me just take out a problem. That's Royce B. Oh, shit. Just hear the shit. Yo, look. Catch me. Hey. Like this. Yo, go. Yo, go. Yo, go. Yo, go. bigger than you. I mean, that shit for real. They stump my man at the lunch. They got the AK. What the fuck do we got to talk about? It ain't nothing to talk about. If you was gonna do something to it, why you on a videotape with gun? That makes no motherfucking shit. Any real nigga gonna see that. Shots were fired. At one of Royce's real niggas don't record themselves with guns or whatnot. They just do it. That's that's I don't even know. That's that should describe this generation, bro. You know everybody on social media say I'm about to pull up. Ooh, real niggas don't do that, bro. Not saying Royce ain't a real nigga, but I mean he not lying. Proof ain't lying. This nigga Cash get shot the fuck up. My nigga allergic to bullets. He just didn't take his medicine that day. Wow. But listen, I got a little advice for you though. If you're gonna send somebody to do something, make sure the motherfucker can aim. <laughs> oh, he ain't get shot. And for you niggas who send the niggas who not capable of getting the job done, you're gonna feel like a dumbass when you I thought that was Memphis Bleak. You gotta look at his mama. All right. That's all I got to say about that. Just when I get jumped by niggas and come back and kill them one by one. Beef is the reaper. Patiently pacing outside of the pretty house. Today, you figured out what's beef. Beef is when these rappers be believing they rhymes. And a nigga like me just take it one day at a time. This is a video I saw.
Love hatred, strange. jealousy, and potential violence on the streets of Detroit are just symptoms of a greater disease throughout the hip-hop community, a disease largely caused by business. That was crazy. Oh, this one proof. This is the last time we talked. I've been working, killed. trying to stay busy. Um, I ran into a little incident where me and Proof finally seen each other. Proof from D12. And uh, we had words. Oh, never mind. This shit ain't really got on some other shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, Man, it ain't worth In the streets, and some people getting shot, some people get beat up and robbed. Me and Proof. Especially we become from Detroit, bro. We are already underrated and already blackballed. I mean, not right now, but like back in the day, we was already blackballed. So the worst thing can come where we just beefing with each other and not coming together. Like we need each other, bro. For real. I'm already knowing how blackballed Detroit been like in the music industry, bro. He walked away from the crowd. Oh, this is before Proof got killed. Was. Okay. We walked away like person to person. And we was actually <coughs> it out. But the police had already been called. And they patted us down and we both had our guns on us. You know what I'm saying? So we both caught gun cases. That man That's got a tough. felony, I got a felony. You know what I'm saying? Me, me and Royce had talked in the jail cells. He's asked me how this happened, this happened, that happened. Proof basically was like, yo, I, I felt like you shouldn't have mentioned my name on such and such song. I was like, okay, I felt like you should have did something. What up, mental? It was basically us getting all our thoughts out in the open. Like you said, he's becoming humble now. We know that he said a lot of wrong things that he just shouldn't have never, ever said. I've said things in the past about them that I shouldn't have said, and I admit that. You know what I'm saying? It's like they've done things to me that they shouldn't have did. Where do this go? I mean, they got to hit back. What if they hit it with or somebody like that? You know what I'm saying? Or do something stupid. If I can stop the shit, someone could have really got hurt from this, bro. If I talk to proof and I say, yo, look, we squashing this, that means I'm squashing it with anything that got to do with it. We reconcile, we reconcile. I'm not going to hold that against you. Hopefully, you don't hold nothing that from this side that happened to you. your man's would get beat up or whatever. Hold it against me. You know what I'm saying? If we let it go, we let it go. It's a mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? I know they respect me. Just because of, just because of like, the shit that I do lyrically, I know they respect This shit in class. And I respect them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, the respect has always been there. I can respect Royce. You know what I'm saying? I will talk to him. Because the best thing is, I would love to see your kids grow up and fight for your publishing. And I would love to see my kids grow up and fight for publishing. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at life. All right, be proof. Um, when I decided that I no longer want to leave now. Y'all want to do part three? Or y'all want to do that in another live stream? Y'all let me know. They got T.I. on the cover of this. Y'all let me know. That shit was dope, man. I'm glad I decided to come on live and react to, with it with y'all, man. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Y'all want to do part three? QD3 screw most of these rappers with his royalties with his stuff. Hell yeah, part three. I kind of went. At first, I was going to do part one, part two, and do this on another live stream. I'm not going to lie. This shit is lit, bro. Lil Flip, TIP, 50 Jai, Nas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Part three. Definitely. I ain't going to lie. We got to. To me, don't shit on another nigga, man. Don't shit <coughs> on him unless you ready to go to fucking war. Get it. If I didn't know that I could beat the shit out of nigga when I saw him, I, I thought Jay Z and Nas was gonna be on the last real, part. Legitimate street beef, then I wouldn't even engage in it. When you have beef, it's 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 a problem. There's certain people that you can't even have a record beef with because it's gonna turn into a street beef just because of the kind of person that they are. That's all it is. It's fucking music, bro. That's what's so fucking sickening about this shit. It's music. It's just music. Real beef not gonna be on wax. All that other shit, all that talking back and forth, that's just a gimmick. Niggas trying to sell records, and they need to leave that shit alone before they get somebody hurt. That's beef. It don't let up. It ain't no sleep. It ain't no resting with that shit. Fuck you now and fuck you later. It's beef three. Dang. Beef three.
Shout out to the UK. Oh, you said this one the best part? Oh, yeah. Bangum Smurf Domination 50 Cent. I ain't never heard of him. know 50 grew up out here and whatnot. He grew up with us. We know him. He was a um, he was a big figure out here. I can't even say he was soft. You know, 50 was never soft. I'm never here to shit on his name in that sense that he's soft and whatnot. But um, we on 161st. This is a um, spot where 50 got shot at. This is his um. His grandmother's house and whatnot, coming up towards your right. Who is these dudes? I'll see you right right here. It's not a music beef. This is what people have confused. They think, oh, it's publicity. These niggas is in magazines talking about, oh, no, it's not that. One of the most volatile neighborhoods in America, Jamaica, Queens, is known for its ruthless streets. Jamaica, Queens. But alliances made in the street game can become beef. When those that make it out distance themselves with those they leave behind. With a street reputation, Bangham Smurf, whose son's godfather was 50 Cent, acted as 50's friend and confidant. The beef started with my homie Bangham Smurf. As you know, he's incarcerated. Smurf was 50's everything. His shooter, his protection, his standby guy. He opened doors for him. Everything. That was his, his heart. While 50 hey, was the becoming a superstar, Bangle Smurf was arrested for reckless endangerment and criminal possession of a firearm. So when he got locked up, his bail was seventy-five thousand dollars. Now at this point, so let me let me let me guess. They mad cause 50 didn't bail them out or nothing or whatnot. I'm telling you, bro, that's how most of these beefs or these street beefs be starting. That was his man's, and he didn't bail them out. That's why they beef with him. Oh, you didn't bail my man's out. Watch. Get rich or die trying did like eight million. Watch. So you know, fifty had that money to wipe his ass with. So Told you. We just keep calling him, keep calling him, man. We just getting the same answer. So we like, hold on, this nigga went and did things for you behind you getting shot. My man was the one that retaliated. You know, you didn't go out and grab your gun. You didn't go and say, oh, these niggas shot me. I'm about to go find them niggas. My nigga was in the car riding around. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas from the hood was riding around to take care of that beef for him. He wasn't grabbing no pistol. I feel he a bitch behind that because how you not gonna send money to somebody that did, you know what I'm saying, took care of your business. That's your business. You got shot twice. Smurf didn't get shot. So finally, did he just drop a snitch on his man? person that says they'll take the house. Smurf's mother's house had to be put up in order to get him out. Wow. And 7,500 from his hood niggas. This nigga, I called this nigga when I came out of the pen. I was like, yo, 50 was good. I mean, I'm like, yo, son, what's good? Why y'all niggas ain't come get me? This nigga, can't, he can't even tell me why. He just started beefing, like, what, nigga? Mm. He running around in town, I'll send you back to the hood to get your mind right. This nigga left me in the hood for four months, nigga. How you gonna send a nigga back to the hood to get his mind right? You know what getting your mind right in the hood is? Getting high and tearing shit up. 50 now, this 50 mm. multi-million dollar character that everybody's thinking he's fame, taking his shirt off, thinking he's cute, <laughs> is not loyal. So all that money you got, if you don't got loyalty, who's gonna respect you? There's certain people. Did 50 shitty, he always gave me Diddy vibes. Not nah, Diddy vibes. 50 did some awesome. Also, wild all 30 of them. Man, that's what I'm saying. Y'all y'all can't get enough money. Y'all got all your 30 niggas in that crib. Y'all gonna put up 
or put up all the money together to get that man out of jail. That's what I'm saying, though. Bro, Allen, I was like, bro, did you just snitch on your mans? So you just admitted on camera. Oh, my, my man just got get back for, for you getting shot up. Bro, you just snitched on your mans. Not, yeah, you not, I ain't, that wasn't no dry snitching. That was really literal snitching, bro. I don't know, bro. The, the, the streets is so weird, bro. I swear to God. I'm like, bro, do you just dry snitch on this man or something? You don't trust, and then there's certain people you do trust. A nigga like Smurf, like he knew Smurf was loyal to him, <coughs> you know? Smurf would have laid down his life for 50, for 50 cents. Well, he just snitched wow. on Smurf, whoever that is. You know? Smurf go against anybody for 50. Oh, he did time. Okay, my bad. Because he said he did time for a gun. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I guess. But it is low key dry snitching though. Even my I, I get Smurf would have went against me for fifth. And not, you know, saying it's a bad thing, cause it, it it turned out to be a bad thing, but Smurf is a loyal person. That's how loyal he is, you know? That's 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 just him, you know, he's too kind hearted and whatnot. Even when Smurf came out on bail, he still wasn't going at Fifty's head. He still wasn't yo fuck fifty da da. He was just hurt behind it. He was really hurt. He done slept in 50's house to protect him. Laying his life down for this man who can't in return at least bail him out. You owe your life to Smurf, actually. You yeah. know, so we still wasn't gonna say nothing. All right, whatever, 50, da da. He got on the mixtape. Hey, Smurf, don't think I owe you. That, wait, what'd he say? I <laughs> sorry, Smurf. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I, I ain't mean to pause. Down for this man who can't in return at least bail him out. You owe your life to Smurf, actually. You know, so we still wasn't gonna say nothing. All right, whatever, 50, da da. He got on the mixtape. Hey, Smurf, don't think I'll hear you out there talking about me, you little dirtbag. Brush your teeth before you talk about me. I'm like God to you niggas. I'm like God All right, to this, you niggas. This is I'm dirty. I'm like God to you niggas. I'm like God to you niggas. I'm like God to you niggas. You ain't God, nigga. That's why I dropped what's beef. I ain't gonna fuck about anything else he said, but that what's God should really touch my heart. Okay, nah, that was, he, 50 was dirty for that, nah. But I get it. I don't get it at the same time, but I don't know. It, it just, I don't know what these street dudes, like, bro, you in the streets, bro. Ain't no loyalty in the streets, no matter how long y'all been down with each other, bro. When you come in the game, everybody knows you're going to get backstabbed at one certain time, bro. I mean, it's foul, but that's just the streets. That's why I dropped what's beef. I ain't going to fuck about anything that, else. But said. that was, that was greasy God, by uh, 50 by mind. doing that. Smurf is heated now. It's, it went from being hurt to being mad. And that's when it all flipped. Acting as Smurf's mouthpiece, up-and-coming rap artist Domination shot back with Can't Teach Me How to Stunt. You ain't letting no cats kill. 50 lay up the steroids and Prozac pills. Should you just lay up the steroids? Over those of our sons. Ain't no motherfucking G unit soldier. Just call bulletproof. At Summer Jam 2004, 50 played in his hometown of New York. Uh -huh. Bangham Smurf and Domination were in attendance. Oh, we went shit. to Summer Jam 20 deep. We went there to just make a statement. We here. Anywhere you go, you can't escape us. When we came out, on the stage, we was already here. Fuck G-Unit. Ah. <laughs> we on the left, left 50 side. 50 a troll. And 50 stayed on the right side the whole time. He was, like, trying to ignore us and whatnot. But it just got to him. You know, 50 has an ego. So once something really touches his nerve, he wants to do something to touch <laughs> your nerve. 50 a troll. He the original troll. He comes over with a bottle of water. Now I'm thinking he gonna throw the whole bottle of water at us and cause some damage. This bitch nigga opens the bottle <laughs> and throws the water out on us. So Smurf jumps over the barricade. When Smurf jumped over the barricade, security rushed him. My homie True, that's locked up right now, grabbed a chair and flung it at 50. Damn! So it's one chair float, you know, 20 chairs flew behind him. I think I seen this. They throwing chairs and shit. So that's why they was throwing shit. They ain't throw them back. Nothing. 
nothing. Their security <laughs> guard tried to throw one back, but. We all wish that it could end, but you know, here. once somebody does something that <laughs> is so crazy, like your killer instinct kicks in. Fifty, fuck you, and he know why, man. Cause you not real, dude. You not at all, man. For real. It's loyalty and it's betrayal and it's nothing in between. And we loved you, man. Real talk. We loved you. Niggas nigga. loved you. <laughs> Niggas loved you. It's tough. One day I took my guy to the phone. Twister. To use the phone, right? We was in the old little Lincoln and shit. I had some jewelry on and shit. And we pulled over. You know, I'm sipping a little something. So he using the phone, I noticed and he talking to one of his homies now as I pull up a part. So he come back and he come to the car and he was like, yeah, man. And I'm thinking yeah, he's gonna he gonna introduce me to his too. guy or something. So he like, yeah, T man, just go and get to him, man. Give him something. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? So I look, the nigga got a big ass, I don't know what the fuck it was, four, five, some type of big ass strap, man. Big ass police looking pistol, you know what I'm saying? Look at with the with, with a with a straight evil look in his face, like man, give me that shit. He's like, what the fuck you got, nigga? Woo woo. Then then my guy said, man, Twister, just get to him. Then he said, Twister. He was like, Twister, man, my fault, man. Twister for real. He was like, man, I just got out the county, man. Woo woo. Man, my name Capone, man, my fault. But man, Red, I had you, Red, man. Man, I can't even do that to you, Twister, man. Put the strap in his pocket, broke down to his knees, started kicking his rhymes for me and everything. Gave what me the his fuck? Number. Told me he was gonna call a studio and everything. He's like, man, I can't do that to you, man. I got too much respect, man. Spit for me. He was like, I'll holler at him. That's crazy. Twisting Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh my fucking. That's. Oh my. These. Bro, these names. We Twisted Bone Thugs. That shit is random, bro. I don't know. I don't know. It, it just like we hear it. LA like, and New York may have had a head start in hip hop, but by the late 90s, the whole country was getting into the act. Without the support of the music industry, many of these artists became entrepreneurs, creating their own style and sound. With a unique, super fast delivery style that the Midwest could call its own, tension mounted between Twister and Bone Thugs and Harmony over who originated the style. Oh my God, I knew it, bro. Oh my God, bro. I knew it. I knew it was about to be like, oh, you took my flow. Oh, you took my flow. I knew it. I knew that was what this beef was about. First nigga, I knew it. You know what I'm saying? That made it be known in the game that you can rap fast, flat out. Oh, my. When he did it first, you know what I'm saying? It was like, niggas wasn't picking up on it, so. Bone oh, came out with it. God. This shit is corny so how really these beats be started. Honest to God, man, I'm really, really Shout couldn't out tell to you where this shit up. came from. It was just like, boom, we came up out of nowhere. And I guess since we was the new niggas on the scene, you know what I mean? Everybody wanted to pick a bone with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Show that fuck, fuck in the kaboom. So drop it on down with them into the room. Them doom. And I'm shaking the dice and hit them in naturals on them fools. I never really understood it because our styles really, to me, wasn't like how Twisted was doing it. He was rapping fast and doing his thing and all that, but he wasn't flipping it with the harmony and all that type of shit, you know what I mean? Wanna give me for the yeah. wood, better get the whole motherfucker hood to come and use the back up. We can get it to it if you Twisted. wanna do it. I'm leaking the fluid out of the bodies that wanna come at this. Like, for some reason, that style, you know, everybody wanna claim that style or whatever, but, you know, we all from the Midwest. I wouldn't say it was a Midwest thing, because we from 99th and St. Clair, Cleveland, Ohio. We was always trying to do us. We was always into us. Five niggas always stayed to they self. I never bought Twister shit. I never heard. None of my friends never brought it to me like, listen to this or none of that shit. In the beginning, it, it, was, a, it, it was a couple dudes who said we had, you know, we were supposed to be had big day style, you know what I'm saying? But niggas ain't knowing, you know what I'm saying? We had never been outside of Cleveland. Maybe somebody got into his ear and said, oh, you know, they trying to do you or, you know what I mean? Because that's how it came to me. Motherfuckers got in our ear like, yeah, you know these motherfuckers said y'all stole their style, and that's where it came from. After I heard about niggas I mean, Bone Thugs did, I, I believe they did keep, they did come out before uh, Twister. So I can see they making that claim, but what, Twister thought Bone Thugs stole his flow? I don't know.
I don't know who came out first. I think it was Bone Thugs, definitely. And be with us, that's when I start paying attention. What's the rap If you look at the game from 1994 on, Bone Thugs and Harmony came with that staccato rapid fire, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? From what I know, from what I heard, Twister was just going Twister straight first? down the line. He wasn't pausing. Nah, Twister was out way back then. But who was more mainstream? I think that's what they trying to claim. Like, who was more, like, who was mainstream first? Okay, I guess, I guess Switzer was out before. I guess. I don't even know. I'm still learning. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't flipping. We wasn't flipping it the same. It never got personal with me and Twister, you know what I'm saying? Because like I say, when me and Oh, it don't met, matter. It I'm just learning. I don't, I don't even like know. Shit, I drove out to his homeboy city. You know what I mean? Me and my wife drove out there, kicked it, me and her by ourselves. You know what I mean? So I was thinking, like, I ain't know if it was going to be beef for these niggas was setting me up or what. We had a mutual friend. It's like, you know, niggas all mad at each other, and then somebody come up and say, man, I'm kicking it with Lazy, woo, woo, woo. And it's your boy, too. And he got money, and he like, shit, OK, fuck this. I want y'all to do a song together. I'm going to pay both of y'all to get on this song. Y'all going to do it. It's like, man, you know what I'm saying? We had a mutual homie that was so down that we had no choice but to get cool, like, as far as me so and Lazy, was he even you know? And that's what kind of diffused the whole beef situation. He came to me like a man. I came to him like a man. We talked about it, figured out that it was all bullshit that was in the air. And shit, we dropped a motherfucking jewel, Midwestern base. But why add this to the DVD? It wasn't even a beef. Whatever. That's why I was like so mad. Like, damn, are we really beefing over flows now? Oh, well, I, I guess it was. Hey, they all listen. The Midwest invasion squashed the beef and became a It wasn't even a beef. I love that nigga like I love my own brother. You know what I'm saying? And of course, if we can do some music all day long, that's what, that's what we here for. When you get older, you always look back and be like, man, we were some stupid motherfuckers, man, fighting over that dumb shit. Who can rap better? Who can rap faster? That shit young-minded people think about. You know what I'm saying? But once you older, if you make it to get that old, if you get that chance to really reflect black and be like, man, that shit was dumb as fuck. That's all you can do. You live and learn. Ain't too many real beasts. Mistake, don't make the same mistake twice. Especially if it don't kill you. That wasn't no beef, man. Y'all, y'all gotta be honest. It wasn't no beef. St. Louis. Ching. Ching. <laughs> fuck them all, nigga. You know what you can do, suck a nigga dick. Any motherfucker got a problem with Nelly, they got a problem with me. And no, no motherfucker wanna see me and my comrades in these streets. Nah. I heard about this beef. I knew it. I knew it was gonna be on here. I heard about this beef. Yeah, this, this is lit. I like this. Few artists have single-handedly lifted a city which from know about to prominence. But if one artist is recognized for doing so, it's Nelly. His name is almost synonymous with St. Louis. Maybe it's because of his album Nellyville, which sold an amazing 9 million copies, becoming the second most successful album of 2003. Nelly introduced a brand new flavor of countrified Midwest slang to hip hop. Nelly's fame also gave him the ability to control the tightly knit scene of St. Louis and help out other artists by providing financing, studio time, and opening slots for his tours. But the long line of other artists ahead of him and a lack of recognition caused one of Nelly's emerging artists, Chingy, to become disenchanted. When we first took Duke back out on, on tour, um, back before he even had a deal. So we doing these shows, we rocking these shows, and, and you know what I mean? It's like they seeing us, 
but at the same time, they not saying. Hold on, y'all. Let me send this text out real quick. Where that shit at? There you go. Then where it go? Oh, there it go. I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? He felt like hey, we took him on tour. Man. Nelly diss everybody. Man, watch us perform. You know, part of the reason why we took you on tour out there before that. So if the, if, if the show started at eight o'clock and y'all going to eight, we don't go on nine thirty. So we ain't got to come to nine o'clock or eight forty-five. So that touched us. We got to stay the fans. They want to come and get autographs from us. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Chingy from? Hold on. Let me look. So Chingy got to be from from uh, St. Louis. Yeah, he from St. Louis. I mean, they did. He did say he came up under him. So, and you know, so we give an autograph, and they they shut that down. Like, nope, uh, uh. We ain't nobody gave us shit like that. Ain't nobody. The beat should be how Bone Thug made mumble rap, bro. Bone Thug was actually saying words, bro. That mumble rap, they not saying anything, bro. Bone Thugs had lyrics that was meaningful. So let's was not comparing. I need a motherfucking house bought a ticket to see no Chingy. Instead of waiting for a deal with Nelly, Chingy got his own deal with Ludacris's DTP label, releasing the multi-platinum selling album, Jackpot. Duke, I remember Chingy. Duke, when now he got his own deal, still was low. I gotta find out you got a deal from somebody else on the radio. Hey, we sh on another live I'm glad you mentioned it, uh, Adam. Not Adam, uh, Broken. We gotta watch like the smack DVDs. I'm gonna start doing that too, on live. I guess I was getting too big. I guess my status was growing, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't know if it felt like a threat to him. I don't, I don't know what type of nigga um, with millions of dollars would be tripping off another man coming up trying to make some money too, you dig? We just saw it as people coming into St. Louis trying to take advantage of shit that we built. People outside of St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Trying to come in, steal bits and pieces just because it's hot right now. They're not really giving a fuck about the artist or the person that's in it. They just coming in just trying to steal bits and pieces. It's just him being him and not to want to see nobody do good, see nobody come up. Nelly yeah. also felt disrespected by Chingy in the press. For him to say that Nelly and the St. Lunatics didn't have no part in him getting a deal. It's like saying run DMC and them ain't got no bearing on, on me getting a deal. Mm. Everybody that come out, Help the next motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And that's all we was trying to say. It's like, oh, I mean, don't sit up here and, and open up magazines and say, well, these niggas ain't had nothing to do with me getting no deal. Nigga, you was on tour with us. We got you on tape with your jersey on backwards. We gave you exposure. Stage, like you want to be a lunatic. I wasn't just your average guy. Just out It always happened like the ones that you take on tour with you get jealous. And when they come become big, it, it just, I don't know. It, it, that's how around, normally it like starts. Him. Want to be like him, want to be like him, and follow. I'm not a follower. When I was out of town on the road doing our lunatic thing, where you at? You in St. Louis at my house, in my basement. You and my little brother, y'all in there eating my food. I'm, I'm sitting at home, my wife giving you $100 and sending y'all go out of town, sending y'all money and helping y'all. Ali really want to be where he at, and he's not. He sucks, so he feed a lot of bull crap and put it in his mind and have him thinking different things. The beef began to escalate with Nelly on his 2004 album, Sweat, released the track, Another One, a backhanded form of flattery which was meant to remind the younger artist who came first. Everybody come to me like, you heard Nelly diss you on the song? And people was telling me about it before the song even came out. I tried to listen to it and get something different from it to be like, well, and I know it's probably, to other people saying like just a couple lines that they may have said, but listen to the song, the song called Ain't Another One. I listened to it huh. a couple times, seeing if I can get something different out of it. But I took it as, it was basically a shot to me. They said, I like the way you do that right there. You just remember why you do that right there. That's all I said. I could have said, fuck the way you do that right there. Oh, pussy ass nigga, why you do that right there? <laughs> now, that's what I should have said, obviously not. But I didn't. I thought it was bold. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just this big king or something. Like, I, I need to just recognize or something. Nah, little dirty cool. I like the way you do that right there. So I was like, well, that's how he feel. I'm going to say something. 
This is the most she ridiculous out, beefs you. ever, bro. Street, I can't even street, lie. You ain't got shit. Says we worry about changing. We not worry. This. Where's we worried, man? He didn't start dissing until his record started breaking. Once he threw that Powerball bullshit out there and that shit started tanking left field, then that's when he came out with the diss record. Kiss my ass with that bullshit. Mm. At the Radio Music Awards in Las Vegas, Chingy approached Nelly to squash the beat. I'm at the gambling table. The nigga comes up in Vegas, <coughs> and you said like, yo, man, I just want to talk. I said, OK, talk. We didn't get nowhere in Vegas. We, when we was talking, we didn't get, it didn't get nowhere, because he won't be this big boss sitting up there with his cigar and keep telling me I'm not listening to him. Like, you know what I'm saying, at, at this crap table. The first thing you always say is, yo, I want to talk to you. Uh by itself, just me and you, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't want this around, I don't want that around, I don't want this around, this around. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell him, like, yo, don't nobody control me, B. Whatever I can say <laughs> in front of you, I can say in front of everybody out here, because it ain't going to be no contradiction. But you ain't listening to me. But you ain't listening to me. You not listening to me. I said, OK, talk. See, well, first of all, man, you ain't just recognizing me as a man. I said, dog, I, I respect everybody as a man. I'm drunk, he drunk. We not getting nowhere. We trying to say we both was drunk. Nigga, I don't even drink like that. You know what I'm saying? What y'all debating in the comments? Y'all trying to say... Y'all trying to say Bone Thugs is mumble rap? Y'all crazy. He trying to say we both was drunk. Or whatever. So dude talking. And I'm like, all right, Chingy, that, that's cool. Big Bob came and uh, told me you wanted the house. So I'm like, I don't need nobody to come talk to you for me. I said, damn. Some bull crap, that whole conversation didn't get nowhere. He was standing right here, he had nothing smart to say. When I see dude them, it's, it's, it ain't no words and nobody speak. Nigga was humble, head down, didn't even look me in my eye. Or if you do speak, you, you know what I'm saying, like, don't acknowledge. But it still was so-called cool, so I said, all right, the dirty, we'll holler later about the situation. You know what I'm saying, let's go gamble, we're gonna go up to the party, let's have some fun. I did respect you. I used to shout the niggas out in interviews all the time. Like, yeah, crazy, right on the Nelly for opening the doors, this, this, and that. Nobody recognized that, though. And don't let me. Nelly was a crib? Everybody banging at this point. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you get my homeboys, neither. At this point. Nelly, Kiwan, Murphy. Without them opening that door for St. Louis, I probably wouldn't be here. You know what I'm saying? They came through the door, I'm coming through the windows. He, he's playing, he's fishing right now, you know what I'm saying? He got his mama calling up to the radio station. He got his daddy calling all around town. Everybody calling us, telling us to chill the fuck out. But it ain't us who's doing it, you know what I'm saying? It's his son, it's that kid, it's that kid that's doing this. You're looking at a chameleon. We saw three faces on Duke. We saw the humble face, we happy to be out here on tour when we first got him. We saw the na 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 face. I got my deal. Fuck you niggas. And now we seeing the damn. I'm man. I'm fucked up right now. Man, I just just end this shit face. Chingy also uh. challenged Nelly's claim of originating dirty. He didn't start the word dirty. He oh didn't my start the word. god. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I think it's about to be way way more cornier now. Like. Oh, I started this word first. It's going to get to that type of beef. Nah, this shit about to be super corny. Shit. My, I got cousins and me and everybody 10 years ago used to say dirt. That's any oh. rap. That's any rap in St. Louis right now on current. And any trace from anybody back from when the St. Louis Chicks first came out saying the word dirty. Trace them. I bet you don't hear dirty and nobody. This back. shit is so corny. You're going to think it's scripted, bro. I, I'm, te I'm, I'm getting them type of vibes. None. He came out first and... Um, put the loot on a map. Dirty! Okay, you did that. You know what I'm saying? Oh but you're not finna, don't try to take all the credit. Like, you just started everything, and you this big fucking king of St. Louis. It's not. you not. I came up with the word dirty. St. Louis is repping dirty first. As tension began to heat up on the streets of St. Louis between the Chingy <laughs> camp and Nelly's dirty ENT camp, wow. Chingy knew there was one man who could reason with both artists. Like, my people's is his people. Like, he got a cousin that's like my cousin that be with him all the time. Yeah, Chingy yeah, mentioned yeah. him, Jay and yeah, 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 yeah. I raised a little dude since he was six. <laughs> and I talked to him. And you know what I'm saying? And he be like, 
the H, I'm gonna talk to Lil Cuz. Yeah, get yeah, get, get K Solo you know, back, man. He's a thinking man. He just, you know what I'm saying? Tell him to help us. He's a thinking man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he'll talk to this man. Now Listen, we gotta man. sit down and make it over. We men. It's over. I give you my word. It's over. It's over. It's over. Bam. It's you over. wanna sit down and have a kumbaya? Although Nelly is resistant to having a sit down with Chingy, he did call for an end to the beat. <coughs> if it gets squashed today, whether it gets squashed tomorrow, it'll be squashed. Dirt. Squashed. Don't nobody do nothing. Dirty and So we beefing over dirt. Uh, you city don't move. What else do y'all be cool? Everybody chill. You're in from us right now. It's all. We good. We straight. Everybody chill. We, we good. We chill. He go his way. We go, we go our way. <laughs> the corniest beef ever. Oh, we in Houston. This is what we beefing up. Hey, I'm beefing with y'all. Y'all stole the word, uh, I don't, I don't know, dirty. Y'all stole the word dirty from me. I'm beefing with y'all. Make it put in a documentary. <laughs> Beef is when a nigga like you can't sleep. Look <coughs> with no appetite and you can't eat. Better look both ways before you walk in the streets. Nigga, that's beef. Who is What's this? Beef? beef is when a nigga like you can't sleep. Wake up with no appetite and you can't eat. Better look both ways before you walk in the streets. Cause you don't want to bum heads hey, with a nigga like me. Down beef. south. Oh, um, little flip. Oh, yeah. I was like, you look like familiar. Def Jams or Sony this must be the little flipping. You know, uh, in New York, all this <laughs> I bet you funny as hell. This gotta be little flipping T.I. Yeah, shit. You gotta catch a flight. Already, we got people in the North feel that they're, you know, superior, they're intelligent. And people in the South are dumb and slow and don't know anything. So, you know, definitely. I mean, people in the South work harder. I'm leaving the club trunk. I'm three cars behind. And I don't need no help when I handle my biz. Damn, you rap niggas be on my dick more than my bitch. I'm not a cupcake, nigga. I'm hard as a rock. I'm like Pac, I got shot. Then I checked myself out. The doc told me to get rest. But I went to the lab. I'm here nah. with an uppercut. You shouldn't have went for that jab. Now my whole state pissed. Hey, you little flip reviews you coming soon. Me, then you piss the whole screwed up click. Bitch. Those artists go through so much down there, and Look most at people Anfie. don't see it unless you're down there. And they can't break a record on the radio. They have to go to the club and get. Bro, people used to wear their hats so low like this, where you can't even see their eyebrows. I, <laughs> that's how they used to rock cats back in the day. Get that record popping in a club, and that's almost impossible. Just imagine going to New York and every club you have to get that record spun. I don't think the forefathers of the South. Definitely don't they don't get the credit they deserve, you know what I'm saying? For for what they do, period. You know, I mean, that's just that's life. I'm a quiet nigga, but I let my guns talk. And you don't want too many bad words coming out. We don't get the same opportunities that other places get, but it ends up being a blessing because we know our business. We know retail because most of the rappers in own record stores. You know what I'm saying? We know I, I'm my own producer, not because I wanted to be a producer, but because yeah, I'm little flip, no nice. I know a little as flip. As much as they have to work harder to get their spins or you know get their record broken, they have so much. They get so much <coughs> more of the returns because they're independent. While people up north were saying, "Please DJ listen drama. to the demo," niggas down here were saying, "I go in the corner on Boulevard, open the trunk, and blast my shit and sell ten thousand units." <laughs> Trouble, but I know how to end it, and I don't play by the rules, dog. I know how to bend it. Real niggas respect me. They know I ain't no hoe, but it ain't take me four videos to go go. Damn. Uh. All the different things that you know what I guess would be looked at as oh, things that are um, connected with that adversity. They're actually a blessing and make us strong. You can't eat, better look both ways before you walk in the streets, nigga. That's beef. What's beef? Beef is when a nigga like you can't sleep. Wake up with no appetite and you can't eat. Better look both ways before you walk in the streets. Cause you don't want to bump heads with a nigga like me. Okay, little flip. Violence has often been a yeah, consequence to settling really. differences among artists involved with beef. Artists now have to employ measures to secure their safety. Some choose to surround themselves with large entourages Others choose professional security, sometimes employing off-duty and retired police. 
Others feel it's necessary to carry a weapon and protective armor. And some artists have decided to forego these security measures and travel solo, leaving their destiny to a higher power. So I walk around the way I do, man. I don't be worrying about none of these motherfuckers, man. Word up, man. <laughs> God is my motherfucking bodyguard. Word the mother. For superstar artists engaged Shit, in beef, homes become fortress with sentries on the lookout. Leaving the house means traveling with armed guards and black suits and cars becoming... He said scientists still trying to figure out what the natural force <laughs> that keeps CI had on the city. But he's... Armored vehicles capable of withstanding... He's a rap rock that boy sideways. ...and explosives. History has proved that record sales increase with artists engaged in beef. But with so much that can be lost so quickly, is it worth it? I could have a whole army. Y'all could surround me out here with tanks. And is this the dude? Hold on. Is this the dude y'all was talking about that was like that kind of imitated Biggie flow? Y'all let me know, cause y'all told me, or this might be a no. Nah, it's a whole different dude. I'm, I'm tripping. Oh, army, y'all can surround me wrong. out here with tanks, and one motherfucker walk right across that tightrope. <laughs> Black's down. He's down. What the fuck? What was all your protection for? What did it do? What? A nigga still walked past that tightrope and hit me in the head five times. Any nigga that walk around talking about, I don't need nobody guard, scrappy. blah, 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 this, blah, blah, that. Nigga, you a fool. And that's why niggas get killed Little every scrappy. goddamn day because they stupid. I'll be armed up. Oh, that's him? All right, bet. I, the West Coast be okay. I was like, I know that y'all told me about dude. That stuff, all that shit, he did. Jim Jones. And yeah, you might see me in a couple places with a blacked out vehicle. The nigga with a badge or something. Yeah. I'm the first one to see somebody like, look at this nigga. This nigga got three bios. This nigga's pussy. You gotta play it small sometimes. <laughs> you dig? But the goons is always with me. My niggas is always with me. You always gotta play it smart, bro. Better safe than sorry. That's that's my motto. Better safe than sorry. You not gonna who gives a fuck where everybody else think you running with three security guards. Shit, who gonna live longer? You that's rolling one deep. By yourself, two of your dudes that's beefing with the whole rap game, or me that's beefing the whole rap game with 10 retired police officers, whatever, and 30 of my dudes. Who's gonna live longer? Better safe than sorry, bro. I ain't hard to find and I ain't hard to touch. Smell me, I'm not a prisoner of this shit. But at the end of the day, some crazy shit have happened. And you'd and you be happy, like, yo, thank God, because if this wouldn't happen, this could happen. I think if most guys really thought of that, that they didn't think they would be be surrounded by bodyguards and, you know, 20 shot. homies and so on and so forth, a lot of these guys probably wouldn't say the things that they said. Hold on. They would be. Hold on, yo. be a little more mindful if they knew that it'd be a one-on-one -on -one situation most of the time. I run my shit like a mob. You see that like boy, I'm the blindfolded. Boss. Straight up, the Clover G boss, you see it. Five, it's five underbosses. It's 50 niggas with Foley Clover chains in America, spread it out. So, I'm gonna leave it at that. If you supposed to be so gangster and all this, you don't need no police. All those need them, 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 uh, them cannons, <laughs> but you know, but the, but the cops ain't gonna do nothing for it. They gonna let you get hurt too. You know, cause the cops, the cops only gonna allow to do a certain thing. The buddy guard has actually caused problems where they're um, too violent, who pushing people out of the way, not being respectful to others, and have actually, uh, shall we say, heated a situation that could have been nothing more than yeah. just a, a simple walk by of an individual. Yeah, do be a bodyguard sometimes. You got some down for the team, you ain't got to worry about no police. I don't. Ever since NWA's fuck the police. Did we pass to Jay-Z and Nasby? I think that's at the end, hold on. It might, I see T.I. Did they go over to Jay-Z and Nasby? 
don't think it's in here. I don't know. I don't think it's in any of these. I thought it was. Did they did they review the Jay Z and Nas B? Or they just didn't do it at all? Oh, it's not on here. Okay. An ice <coughs> cop killer. I thought it was. I ain't gonna express lie. Express their frustrations with police. Today, <coughs> cop artists sometimes have to protect themselves, even from those empowered to protect. Uh -huh. You don't put your fucking hand on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm skipping this shit out. This Lil Scrappy versus the police. This shit got cornier and cornier and cornier, bro. I'm not even gonna lie, I, I wanna skip this, bro. Hold on. In Orlando, this. Florida, recording artist Lil Scrappy performed at a benefit show helping to raise money for Dr. Phillips High School. Police were on hand Lil to Scrappy. provide security. And little Scrappy would soon learn that no good deed goes unpunished. The event was to give back to the kids, you know what I'm saying? It was in the school auditorium, and when I was doing it, I was crunk. I got them amped up when nobody on the floor at first. When I came up, that's when everybody rushed to the floor, and it, was, it got packed, like, suicidally packed. Like, I couldn't even see. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, damn. I'm up there just doing my shit. They said they pushed them off the stage. Like, Jump out in the crowd. <laughs> What's a show if they can't touch you? Then you just a uh, up in the ass motherfucker. You got a shirt off. <laughs> was so amped up, they cut the music off. The cop took the mic, was talking to the kids. One of my family came up, they was like, instead of you trying to be a superstar, why don't you jump down there and help them kids down there? <laughs> Throws me back the mic, turns around, and just bumped up to my manager. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So we were like, hold on, that's some nigga shit. That's like some street fighting shit. <laughs> That's when it all started like a hundred. Let me watch this one. He grabbed one of my producers and hold on. Can't push him like that. You can't do that. That ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I said that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? He let him go and he broke through the whole crowd and just pushed me off the stage. Damn. Ooh. And when he did that, I lost it. You oh yeah, it'll been over with. I, I, lost it. I was ready to fight one of them. You know, I was like, I was, I was on some real. Let's fight the police type shit. Why you push them off stage you know though? Fuck the police. If I don't get no goddamn justice around this bitch, y'all motherfuckers gonna learn goddamn. <laughs> they didn't want to handle the situation. They wanted to handle the situation. Like, they want to fight us. They took out their That officer gotta be they fired. Guns, doing me like this, shut the fuck up and shit. And I told them, what you gonna do to me? You gonna shoot me in front of all these kids? And they see, and everybody see, I ain't did shit to you. That's what you gonna do. You gonna fuck yourself up. And that's what they did. Yeah, that was, dude was wrong. Why he push him up? <laughs> Why he push him on stage like that? The Orlando Police Department wow. claimed that little Scrappy was warned not to use profanity and was not allowed to remove his shirt. Officer Richard Bailey oh. Jr. claimed that the men on the stage were attempting to invoke a riot response from the crowd. It was so humiliating mm -hmm. the way it went <laughs> down. <laughs> Lil Scrappy, Scrappy is now engaged said. in a lawsuit with the Orlando Police <coughs> Department and arresting Officer Richard Bailey Jr. and is seeking $250 million of compensation. Damn! Y'all can't lie. Y'all been the same way. If the police ever did some shit like, man, I want, nigga, I want everything, bro. But 200, I'm not going to lie. You not getting that money, Gage in a lawsuit with the you Atlanta Police Department and that. arresting officer Richard Bailey Jr. And is seeking I thought I was gonna $250 say million dollars of compensation. Nigga, I'm, my back hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Mixtape DJs have been he around almost as long as hip hop itself. But recently, He's not getting that money, bro. I'm, I'm sorry to say. this underground art to mainstream popularity. 
mixed not getting usually a blend of, of different that. artists and producers mixed together with a variety of different beats. Mixtape DJs have elevated the art <coughs> by incorporating audio bits and sound design. The arrangement of the mixtape speaks to the personality of the DJ. As hip hop comes full circle, today's mixtape DJs have the power to break new artists as never before. But along with this newfound power comes responsibility. Now we're going to get DJs beef. That's tough. I bet that's what's going to say. DJs are the key thing in hip hop music. I take with the music and we give it to the DJ people, drum. we give it to the streets, and we bang out. You know, the artists bring the music to the DJ. We bust our ass, and you know, we out there on, we out there on the front field working every day. We get the pe we get the music to the people. DJs were a medium, you know what I'm saying? Like even with the beef shit, you know what I mean? Like my, I don't have the beef alone. He settled out of court for a hundred dollars. <laughs> he only got two hundred fifty k, bro. He think he about to get two hundred fifty million? Flip. That was you know he what I'm a troll, but, man. He a know, troll for that. Ti's my man, and I roll out with Ti. So you know what I mean? That's who I'm riding with. But at the same time, I am a medium to get it out. This is one DJ game. It's called uh, I'm gonna play the middleman between the artists. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get your disc record, then I'm gonna let the next nigga hear what you said about him, and then he gonna get a disc record, and I'm gonna make money off of both of you motherfuckers. That's what DJs play. That's the that's the DJ game of the day, and it's not a lot of them doing that. It's the ones, it's the new DJs. Uh, who really don't know what the fuck they doing and really don't know about the respect level in hip hop. And uh, those are the DJs that uh, they go get records shoved all, all in the ass. You said DJs the electric. They know who they are, man. So I don't even gotta, you know, I catch you at the after party, you know, doing your little thing. Ever, ever punch you in your fucking mouth. Everybody in <laughs> most of the mixtapes play street politics. So, and that's definitely something you don't do in a mixtape game. You know what I mean? That's just something, that's a no-no. There's been lots of instances throughout, you know, time where it's like, I ain't gonna lie, I've never seen Vlad TV face in my life, bro. He been around for this long? I've never seen Vlad TV in my life. I've seen him talk a couple times. Of course, I've seen his interview. I've never seen his face, ever. That's crazy. I, I'm sorry. That 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 just freaked that's me a, out a little bit. No, no. There's been lots of instances. He said the fan. Officer Vlad. Beat down a DJ. You know, so it, it's definitely. You know, you're definitely. They got Vlad worried. On you know, when you're putting out some shit that you know you're not supposed to be putting out. An example oh, of playing one side yeah, against the other here happened go. when Young Buck asked T.I. and Ludacris, who were beefing at the time, to that appear on the straight out of Cashville record seen. on the track, Stomp. Most people got in touch with my people. And, yeah, and I did. Two. Has your nieces and your nephews, shit. Real niggas see the difference between you and this. Me getting beat down, that's Ludacris. You know, Luda heard the song, asked to get on it. If we would have went in there at the same time, and we had intentions on going <laughs> at each other on the record. The way he wear his hat. <laughs> someone said it in the chat too. It gotta be a uh, someone gotta study how his hat stay on and hit his head like that, bro. Ti funny as hell, bro. And he don't even be trying to be funny. Down, that's ludicrous. You know, Luda heard the song. Asked to get on it. <laughs> we would have went in there at the same time. <laughs> we had intentions on going at each other on the record. <laughs> well, you'd have heard a different record. It was a little unfair because I've never seen Luda got on the song after the T.I. verse was already laid down. Damn. Real foul shit. You know, it was like, okay, I got this man on track, but I'm gonna go to this man and say, look, look how he talking to me. He didn't give me. He said, get off. In other words, it wasn't no fair situation. Oh, my that dear. man didn't so have enough time to respond to that man. The public doesn't know this, but, you know, the reason why there's no response to the stomp record or T.I.'s not on the album version is because Chris, Shaka, 
Jason and T.I. sat down and squashed. Shout out to uh, Ludacris' manager. Not shout out to him, but he he just been accused of murder. I wanted to mention that. I said shout out to him. Chris, shot I just, I, I, Jason I just heard and T.I. sat down and squashed all that shit before that shit even hit the public. MCs have always boasted about their Shocker. prowess on the mic. LL Cool J once proclaimed himself as the greatest MC ever, creating tension with Ice-T, who took that pronoun personally. Fortunately, that beef was squashed by Africa Barbada and the Zulu Nation. Recently, one of Atlanta's premier MCs, T.I., has proclaimed himself King of the South. King In of a the region South. known for his self-made millionaire MCs, some have taken <laughs> issue. A lot of people have had objections to this whole King of the South thing. And most of this shit all stems from that. Most people and most artists is gonna rate they self just what they is and how they feel in, in their heart. I'll be back, y'all. My food downstairs. You know, I was hungry. You said, your boy gotta get some food. I'll be back. I was hungry, he said, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I was hungry, he said. He said battle with physics. <laughs> he said uh, T.I. objection, a, 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 a diff, uh, what did he say? T.I. understand if he, he done did a bunch of work and his music industry. <laughs> I had to get the food. I was hungry as hell. Game, period. Clearly, you don't pay this dude. And you got to respect that. You got to be a worthy king. You got to be a humble king. You got to be, you know what I'm saying? I'm willing to sit down and holler at anybody with some sense. LL say he's the greatest rapper. And niggas went at his head. Nobody went at T.I. So he is the king of the South. I don't yeah. feel like I'm better than nobody else, but at the same time, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I have a lot more talent and a lot more, a lot more of a, a lot more. Just say you the king of the South, bro. We we understand, bro. You better than everybody else. That's all you have to say. background than a lot of other people who get credit for a lot of shit that they ain't really do. You let me know what movie you watched in the beginning of the movie, you seen the king, and at the end of the movie, he wasn't dead. I heard about this, too. I met the dude. We had a source photo shoot backstage. And I see Flip in New York when we were shooting the cover for the source. I was late because I was getting my hair braided or whatever. You know what I mean? So they let people come in my trailer. I don't let no motherfuckers come in my trailer. It's mighty hoish of him hmm. to let somebody just basically like take your space because I spent way more time. We were smoking, drinking, kicking it, chilling on the trailer, me and my partner. Producer Nick Fury asked T.I. to do a verse on Little Flip's Game Over remix. While at the photo shoot, T.I. discussed doing his verse. I had spoke to Flip, I had spoke to Columbia, just off of this man's merit, because I know him and we cool, he produced the song, and he asked me to do a verse for him for the remix. So I did it. I appreciate, you know, I mean, you did a verse, but hey, I didn't already did it, so I told him he couldn't be on the remix. Mm. And after that, he went to jail. We shot the cover over, got out of jail, and I was on the cover, and it was jealousy, man. Soon after the store's photo shoot, T.I. was arrested for a parole violation for crack cocaine possession and would spend the next nine months in Fulton County Prison. T.I. was locked up. For you know, crack? Earlier, earlier on in the year, he was locked up, so Flip was getting it. You know, Flip really was shining while he, while T.I. did some time. And the story goes, and you know what I mean? I say that because I wasn't there. But there's this event in Atlanta called Music Midtown. Flip was backstage with some girls around. One of them happened to be a friend of Tip's girl. They were there. He was there. He, he trying to holler at them. I guess he trying to get them to cater to him because of his success or whatever. Flip was talking some shit, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, I'm the king of the South for 
T.I. is this, T.I. is that, blah, they blah. Uh -huh. So he like, ah, right, you gonna see, I'm running this, I'm running the A, you gonna see, I'm running this, that up. You know, the girl, you know what I mean, being who she was. Nigga T.I. was out here for real. When the South out, yeah, yeah, I, I believe that for sure. Said some shit to flip, got him a little riled up. And he like, looking at his partner, I know, I know you ain't, I know you ain't talking about T.I. You know, mm. giggling under his breath, whatever, whatever. All right, cool. They're like, yeah, that's what we talking about. Okay, well, we got, I got something for him. Just wait till I go on. Wait till I get on stage. So he went uh. right to the stage and said, you know, who's the king of the South? Who's the king of the South? Everybody said T.I. The whole crowd screamed T.I. Damn. Said, Fuck T.I. Tell T.I. I said game over and would drop game over and do his show on that. This is all while I'm incarcerated. And these girls, like, little does he know, are friends with my girl. Mm. Like, somebody said that they had it on video. He say he got the tape. Show the tape, nigga. You know why the tape ain't surfaced? Because it's a fucking lie. This shit, I ain't finna go to no nigga town and disrespect nobody in a town. You feel me? That's like spit a spit in the face. It's, 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 it's really, it's flabbergasting to me. Flabbergasting. At the music <laughs> festival, some artists didn't show up, so promoters act little flips to do more songs. So I went back out there. I did a couple of new songs and I did one freestyle. And the hook, this how the hook go. It say, you know my favorite rappers Tupac and B.I., but I ride 24s just like T.I. I'm hopping out in chinchillas, you wearing Levi's. That's what I said. I never said fuck this nigga. And after the fact, I did the same freestyle when I had my access granted on BET for Sunshine video. You know my favorite rappers Tupac and B.I., but I ride 24s just like T.I. Same freestyle. So, so what's the problem? To let motherfuckers know. If I would've dissed a nigga, why would I get a nigga a shot up? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that don't make no sense. Habitual. The man, the, like, the man. <laughs> I'm a man, dog. If I say something about you, I'm gonna stay out steady. If I'm gonna disrespect you, you know what I mean? But it was him showing love. I guess T.I. thought that he was said fuck T.I. I don't know. This is preposterous. <laughs> T.I. be pulling out all types what of new vocabulary work. He say he got the tape, show the tape. Put it on the internet, show somebody. Cause it don't exist. If I had a tape, I'd show that shit. While incarcerated, T.I. convinced prison officials to let him shoot a music video as part of a work release program. Mm. During the video shoot, another inmate escaped. This chick, yeah, this escaped. whole other incident, Tried to break out of jail, did break out of jail. I went through all the proper procedures and got approval from an employee over there. He, he said, all right, well, look, I, I want to make this happen for you, but let me get back with you. I got to ask somebody and, you know, get the OK first. They got it hit me back. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But when the when the escape took place, a lot of people say, no, nah, I didn't say that was all right. Many blamed mm. T.I., but eventually prison officials concluded that the two events were unrelated. So when T.I. got out, he was just like, shit, I got to, you know, the motherfucker can't take my spot because a lot of people in Atlanta did fuck with Lil Flip. Well, the birthday bash is really where the impact started. T.I. wasn't on the bill for the show. He was the headliner, but he was a surprise guest. So we set up and everything, like, shit was over. I remember we was on stage, I was setting up the instant replay, and the crowd was just like, T.I., T.I., T.I. So everybody knew he was coming. So we just started off with Welcome Back. We just brought Welcome Back right on. Listen, while I was gone, now I'm back in the song. Got a message for the nigga who attacking the throne. You uh. can make me put this heater to the back of your dome. Flip your little ass from the front to the back of your home. We pulled up. Damn. You know how you can kind of hear who on stage? Our DJ got out, you know what I mean? When, you know, when you get to the venue, your DJ gets out first and go get ready to set up. So I think word on got to, to the stage that Flip was there. So he pulled up. His pops was out the car and his DJ, was, DJ Dimp was out the car. You know what I'm saying? That man was trying to get to no damn stage. So he's like, oh, huh. this nigga trying to diss you. What the fuck? So we, oh, oh really? Well, what, what's up? But shit, let's go check. What's up? Look, Flip, I heard you in the house. Bring your punk ass guy to the stage. Has anybody seen Look Flip lately? <laughs> I'm tell you what, Flip. <laughs> Pussy nigga, I'm the leader of the troops. You just following suit. I oh, got a question for anybody following you. What kind of nigga take a picture in a lucky charm suit with a lollipop chain? <laughs> <laughs> 
Chip wasted no time. Oh no, let's like, go, go back. I think I've seen this album cover before. That's tough. <laughs> so tip wasted no time like that was he was it he was like all right fuck it wherever we at right now we're gonna go into this flip i heard you was in the building bring your ass out here bring your punk ass bring out here bring your punk ass yeah, out here what you been saying about me while i was gone i mean that's when he brought out the uh pictures of flip um in the leprechaun suit damn you know? flip a real jay-z hot 97 <laughs> yeah i mean which was a good which was a good look like you know like you can't uh, as far as entertaining, like it, it, was, it was classic. Tell that fuck boy I say say it in my face. And if he got something else to say, tell him I say look what I got. Nigga. Let me go, I ain't running. Mm. See ya. Right then. The whole sound in the stadium just shut off. We was go get out and go up there, and they were like, "Man, you know what? Some go go down. Security, police, all these motherfuckers were like, hey man, listen, they just shut this shit down. Now if I'm at home and I diss a nigga, they ain't go cut the music off on me. When he was at home and right after he dissed me, they cut the show. Mm. He sent his father to call me. Like his father called me before they came to uh to the birthday bash and was like. Hey man, can we squash this and you know yada 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 trying to, you know, just trying to trying to mediate. So I was like, honestly, man, you didn't get him in this situation, and I don't see how very well how you could get him out. You wasn't on the stage with this man when he was when he was talking down. I mean, you definitely aren't aware of his every action and his every statement. So, I mean. That man yeah, stand up on his own too. When I heard yeah, him, interview, man. Like, yeah, I wouldn't send my daddy to go handle my business. I didn't send him to. I didn't tell you, hey, call Tia, I call this nigga. He did that shit on his own because he my daddy, and he from the streets, and he my daddy. You dig what I'm saying? So ain't no nigga gonna give a fuck about you more than a motherfucker that had you. You see what I'm saying? So when he put his name in there, like I sent him to go handle that shit. That's when I'm like, okay, you go disrespect my dad like it's a, all right, well, cool. Now it's serious. Then he went and he did a show, I think, the next night or the night after. And I think he digitally imposed my head on top of a, on top of an Ethiopian's body. Okay, that's cool. What? But like, that's, that's fictional. Huh. This is, this is make-believe what you're doing here. <laughs> what I came with was facts. It's this facts. is the truth. You dig what I'm saying? I think that's when that was dirty for to doing that though. London and did the Tim Westwood and you know was pop saying you know he's 500,000. I'm a platinum artist and you're a gold artist and all that type shit. He went way over to the UK, way over the UK on a radio station, did an interview and a little freestyle about me. First of all, I'm a Clover G veteran. And y'all already know who I'm better than. Y'all know T.I. can't buff with me. You a featherweight. You don't even weigh a buck 50. Nigga, uh. you lucky my plane got delayed. Cause I would've knocked your punk ass off the stage. You were seven time felon. What you care about a case? Yeah, you got out of jail early. Cause you working with the state snitch. You uh. a bitch. Right after that, I remember we sat down. I was Say like, yo, it's time to do state. tape. Got, got Scarface on the phone. You know, Tip Talk to Scarface. Scarface said, you know, I never seen this nigga in the hood. Say he from your hood. Nah, you know, like, he got Scarface on the phone. I ain't never seen that nigga over there, man. <laughs> we seen no out of Clover Land, you know, dirty red out of Clover Land, man, but I ain't never seen this nigga before, man. <laughs> the nigga hiding behind you, you like... Get, you get Scarface on the song and Lil Flip from Houston. Scarface from... It's over with. So he trying to put you against me saying, yeah, man, you know, Scarface, you can't go to South. You know what I am. That shit petty to me, homie. You ain't never ever heard me say it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to see no king of us to nothing. Feel me? Nigga, you can have that shit. He said, mm. hey, Miss Scarface, the names he said was C-Note and D-Red. That's D-Red. That's C-Note. That's what they said. They said uh, C-Note and D-Red was original motherfuckers, gangsters, hood, all that Bob Bob Wild, all other shit, and who know the game, and who's the truly bonafide niggas that, that tip Julie to get in contact with. 
All right, well, these niggas are sitting right here. Thanks for the promotion. Y'all all heard that shit. All y'all got the mixtapes, y'all heard that shit. Well, the two niggas are sitting right here. I just want to state that, you know what I'm saying? He says, thanks for the free promotion. And even if he don't want to be, to me, in my heart, you know what I'm saying? Where I'm from and how I grew up and who I grew up listening to, shit, he the king of the south to me. Because mm. I'm from Houston. So who else would be the, you know what I mean? What the fuck? Scarface. It's not a question of who's the better MC. It's nothing about talent. It's nothing about uh, uh, lyrical ability. It's nothing about that. Those are not the grounds for this altercation here. I didn't spit with the best of them and held my own. I didn't fucking did tracks with Ludacris, Cameron, motherfucking Nelly, Mario Winans. Like, I can get on a track with anybody. His whole fucking album is about crack. It ain't about your jail record will make you your success in the rap game. But the nigga went to jail for tickets. Because he ain't pay some tickets. You can read my fucking rap sheet. Pistol charge, dope charge, dope charge, pistol charge. Tickets, man. <laughs> Gangster. I mean, come on, man. What is it? To, what is that to contest? Like the man ain't from Cloverland. I am from Cloverland. He ain't from Bankhead. He from Riverdale. I'll let twenty-two million. That's what I'm about to say. Because I I know about <clears throat> I know who Shardy Low is. Recipe to Shardy Low. Um, Shardy Low is from Bankhead. I remember him and T. I remember reading about they little beef going on, and Shardy Low said T. I wasn't from Bankhead. Yeah, I remember, if I'm not wrong, T.I. pulled up Dolo to Bankhead to go confront Shardy Low. I don't know if T.I. from there. I don't know. It just brought, it just reminded me of that situation. Million dollar man shit, man, that's false. If you mad about one thing, you go talk about one thing and that's it. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck my deal got to do with the beef? If you don't like me, why you go get a grill like me? If you don't like me, why you do a song with Destiny Child like me? The name of my album is mm. Underground Legend. Your name, Underground Urban Legend. Legend. Urban Legend. Come on, man. That's that's some girl shit, dog. Hmm. One of my business to say that you ain't really from this hood that you've been claiming. One of my business to say, okay, you really can't rap. He ain't from Bankhead. He from Riverdale. Okay. That's what I heard, too. For real, and you had people writing your raps. It wasn't my business to say that you claiming you got this much money and really you don't even, you're not even receiving residuals from your own project. That wasn't my business to say that. But now, you're going to speak on me? All right, cool. Now I'm going to hold a mirror up. I'm going to show you who you are. There's nothing to talk about a nigga, man. That's what we used to do in high school. Sit back and rank on a nigga, talk about a nigga clothes and teeth or whatever. That's that's easy. Next time you speak on my kids, next time you holler about I'm a snitch and all the other shit, I'm going to see you. In March see 2005, T.I. was on tour promoting his album, Urban Legend. While in Houston, doing a radio promo and shooting a DVD, T.I. decided to head to Cloverland in hopes of exposing Flip as a non-Cloverland resident. As T.I. pulled into this notoriously dangerous section of Houston, right behind was Little Flip. Clover G. Mm. Underboss, Black Al Capone, punched T.I. A fight ensued, which was broken up when someone fired off a Damn. round of handgun. You looking at a nigga who didn't took a bullet and wised up and learned how you treat motherfuckers. And you looking at a nigga who never took a bullet, been to jail, didn't learn how to treat motherfuckers from keep going to jail and still go be ignorant. Soon mm. after, rap -a -Lot CEO and power broker Jay Prince initiated a sit down. Jay Prince, haha. <laughs> Everything stops when Jay Prince come in. Man, and I'm trying to sell records and enjoy my money, be around, not be looking for niggas trying to do this and all that. And whether I like it or he likes it or not, even though we have an issue with one another, we still working toward the same common goal. That's to put the South on top. And that's that. That's dope. Yeah, so, so you guys, I mean, you game, you know, made it big. I think this is about to be uh, 50 uh, game. What? Game? See, game over here? What? Game? Have you heard that he moved out? I mean, where is he hanging out? Do you know? Oh, shit, oh, probably in the sunset know, somewhere. Fuck. Tell them how niggas doing. They go four times platinum. They leave the hood, move to Riverside. He went four times platinum. Look what he gives me. Fuck game. Game? Uh, over here? What would happen if you ran into the game? Oh, should we a fuck his ass up, oh. homie? Shit, you know how we. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, man we, that's <laughs> fucked up. Oh, I'm about to say. <laughs> oh, I'm about to say, damn. With a pedigree of numerous industry shakers, by 2000, 
Hip-hop in My the West had fallen on hard times. As record companies looked elsewhere for artists, it would take the top East Coast rapper to anoint an underground mix. See, I got punched in the back of the head is what I heard. Lil' Flip performed that Live Aid for T.I. Ain't Live Aid in Africa? That concert? T.I. really pulled. Hey, you got to give T.I. his respect, though. He really pulled up to their hoods, though. He ain't, take King to resurrect he ain't the West no punch. Coast. However, the relationship with 50 Cent and the game will get off to a rocky start. <clears throat> The game versus Joe Budden. What the? Get a call. I'm looking my next tip. Oh my god. It's Fifty. Fifty call like yo. Game beef with, with everybody. Buttons. I'm like bro. I ain't did no fucking song with Joe with no fucking Joe Buttons. And nigga Fifty like yeah you did. Nigga it's on the Clue mixtape. I'm like yo I got that mixtape. I'ma call you when I get in my car after I listen to it. But I'ma always be LA's king like Gretzky with a pump the size of Joe Pesci. A year ago I was making moves. The closest I ever been to it while I was crush group. Now I walk through Manhattan, pants sagging, and grade my all stars in the pavement. Show sure enough. One of my freestyles, this nigga Clue, and put Joe Buttons on the end of it. Gangsters do real things because gangsters have to. I should have a real gangster whack ya. Bang and clap ya, pump, aim it at ya. He should be in the G unit bit with all the gangster actors. And I'm listening to the thing. The funny thing seeing game on this list is game still distant to this day, bro. Everybody else going on to have other ventures in their career. This nigga game still. This and motherfuckers. <laughs> that shit funny to me. The shit, and I'm like, damn, man, I did the freestyle for Clue. I did the freestyle for Clue. Like, you know what I'm saying? You might do he said, nah, for did this DJ. for everybody. And that don't give the DJ the motherfucking authorization to put whoever you want on it. You know, especially not me. Don't put nobody on my fucking freestyles. You know what I'm saying? If I give you a freestyle, it's the game featuring nobody. So I say, fuck it. You know, I'm, I'm killing the mixtapes now. Can't nobody really fuck with me on this mixtape shit, so I'm going to put out 200 bars and run it. And I'm gonna address everybody, you know what I'm saying? Any nigga that want a problem with me, or any nigga that, that think he got beef with me or something, I'm gonna address the shit in this 200 bars and run. It's gonna take me 10 minutes to get this shit off my chest. They trying to take me downtown, put me under the court. Cause Joe Buttons told him I carry a gun in the yard. And homie, that's strictly fact. He got ripped on wax, so he snitched just to get me back. Mm. People think I did 200 bars running it, put 200 bars and running intentionally. I didn't do it intentionally. That's how much shit I had to get off my chest. And it was going to take 10 minutes, no hooks, no bullshit. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to kill niggas. Get my DJ Clue on, sit inside Hot 97 with no tools on. And it don't matter if it's Sway or K-Slay. Angie Martinez, I take him back to K-Day. They mm. act like they forgot about Dre Day. I don't rap for free. That's why they fired AJ. Fuck the Joe uh. Bird shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't even on that shit no more. Because Joe is, I'm going to let him get his little, you know, his little... Bubble gum, rap money, and I'ma do me. I'ma get back to my hood shit, my street shit, and I'ma dress this faggot ass nigga Yuck Mouth, cause he know he a straight ass bitch. Yuck Mouth. California <laughs> has always had its internal beat. Sides have been determined by geographical affiliation, gang affiliation, and business affiliation. With the West Coast heating things up in hip hop again, <coughs> even a state as large as California isn't big enough for the game and former loonies Yuck Mouth. Yuck Mouth. Damn, game. Oh my man, this God. This shit make me laugh to this day, man, because it's it really for nothing, you know what I mean? I seen the nigga game at Jada Kiss album release party, you know what I mean? Um, I got songs dissing 50 in the Dang. G unit on the strength that this, this is everybody. rap. Yeah, you know I mean, Jay Prince fucks with Suge Knight, he fucks with Irv Gotti, you know what I mean? That's our family. So you dissing the fam, I got to go to war for that. On a mixtape track, <laughs> he ain't a thug. Yuck mouth dissed 50 cent. What'd he say? Hold oh, no. on. I ain't. Got shot so I know niggas done heard these songs. That's crazy. And I know he just became a G unit nigga. So I'm thinking all this shit. Game B for Raz Cast too. That's another artist I got. Um, I got a review coming this week of him. Raz Cash. My mind while I in the club, I'm like, let me check this nigga temperature. See if I gotta watch my back. I stand my hand. He shake it, you know, I pull him close, like, yo, I'm yuck mouth. He like, yo, you know, I'm feeling your shit. I'm like, I'm feeling your shit too. Boom. You know we beefing with 50, you feel me? 
like, oh, man, that's between y'all, man. I'm over there getting paid, man. I'm like, you know what? I respect that. Get your money, my nigga. Then he said, yo, bang them and them talking about me. They say your name on the song. I said, yo, I ain't heard that shit. But until then, do your thing. We got to bring the West back. Boom, gave him pounds, and I got up out. Mm. Even motherfuckers just act like that, man. I hate when, when like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm on some, let me bring the West Coast back. Yuck Mouth is one of them West Coast MCs like that I thought was underrated and could possibly be something one day, you know what I'm saying? Until I found out he was a straight fucking faggot. So it gets to me, <laughs> me like, yo, yo, the game checked you at the club? I'm the like, hard what? F word. You know what I mean? Check me. Where this shit come from? If he would have checked me, I would have called my niggas the next day and said, yo, be cool with game and just ride on them niggas. I don't fuck with niggas, I don't battle niggas, I don't beef with niggas, I don't start shit. Unless I hear my name or unless a nigga calling me out, then I'm coming. I am the best. Come on, gang. Come on, gang. Hypocrite, man. We all know he starts shit, man. For real. We Come on, bro. Come on, gang. Let's not unless lie. Unless I hear my name or unless a nigga calling me out, then I'm coming. I am the best. E40 is the best. Too short is the bay, but I am the bay, nigga. So I ain't gonna go against that, and we put you on. I got a lot of love for the Bay Area, you know what I'm saying? I, I started my career in the Bay, Filmo, motherfucking Sacramento, Oakland, all them niggas up there, I fuck with. Both of them is talented. They both got talent. Why in the fuck is you mad at him? In the tradition of Ice Cube, the game Jack Yuck Mouse, I got five on it, and dissed them with. I got a mill on it. Mm. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What'd you say? Game got a song dissing you over the five on it. I said, play that shit. She a bitch, let me show you what blood about. When my blood pressure rise, I bring the bloods out. Put the barrel on his neck, blow his guts out. And that's what you call a yuck mouth. It's like we West Coast okay. niggas. It was cool you beefing with them. Yeah, I mean, they East Coast niggas, you on this side. It's like, come on, do your thing. We rooting for you. But then you want to disown us? It's like, come on, nigga, what the fuck are you doing? So I write the qu quickest rap I ever wrote, got in this booth right here, you know what I mean? And laid the shit and put it up on the forum, just like how he did. Yeah, you know I mean, within two hours, had to be the quickest response in hip hop. Master of Biden and gave him off the stainless hawk, but rip your fucking brain apart. Trying to tell you at the club, bitch, nigga, play your part. You that bitch, nigga, from Chains of Heart. Tongue ring. Game was on. Oh, you talking about heart. that TV game show? This game had. Game was yeah, on heart. So I, I heard nigga, about I was this. On Chains of Heart, nigga, with my bitch, nigga, with two bitches, nigga. I'm a motherfucking pimp slash blow your motherfucking brains up, nigga. A mutual friend. I can't take game seriously, was bro. able to get yuck mouth. And the game to squash the beef with a peace record. Oh boy, your boy Young Mouth. You know what I mean? Report live with my nigga Speedy. In the game in the motherfucking building. You dig? It's a celebration. I mean, we squashing that shit for all y'all haters out there, baby. The West Side is connected, you bitch. So a mutual friend that know me and him came through and was like, yo, y'all make a song. You feel me? Y'all make What you said is true. Game started with JT for you, big man. To squash or something. I'm like, yo, I'll lay my part first, you know what I mean? And give it to you. I'm out in the morning, so I gotta do this now. If we gonna do what I do it. Boom, I lay my part, and I'm bigging them up. Yeah, yeah. what's beef? Beef is for real niggas to squash it and come through in twin SL coops that's topless. Yuck got the Bay Lock, game got Compton. Detox like Doc Dre and Puff Chronic. But perhaps taking cue from what happened with DJ Clue and Joe Button, the game, getting the track after Yuck Mouth recorded his verse. Decided to fire more shots. Yuck mm. Mouth learned the lesson in the art of war. So he get the verse, you know what I mean? He get on there and diss the next. Nigga, I don't squash beef for nothing. I squash the beef for Speedy, my homeboy cousin. It what? Ain't about blood and it ain't about Crips. It's about Gonzo riding Yuck Mouth dick. I don't know what to do. How the fuck? Oh my God, bro. I mean, that is in the art of war, though. <laughs> That is in the code of Art of War, but how he gonna say he gonna squash the beef? The gang come after him like, man, fuck. That's correct. That's the game for you, bro. That's the game for you. In a nutshell. My homeboy cousin. It ain't about blood. It ain't about Crips. It's about Gonzo riding up my dick. I don't know what to do with this little guy, man. You got a little guy and he got some cute little braids and. 
I like the braids. The braids is, you know, my bitches, they got braids just like them. So I'm familiar <laughs> with the little the little extension braids, and it's cute. He set me up. You know what I mean? A nigga set a nigga up on some bitch shit. You feel me? I was trying to be a real nigga. You know what he I mean? played I him. He played him. Me in the game on some real shit. You know what I mean? It's deeper. It could be the Bay against L.A. I back the yuck mouth, we cool for now You can come outside, ain't nobody gonna shoot you down Go ahead and live your life, won't be no gunplay I'll see you in the streets, you gonna have to fight me one day So I'm like, okay, wow. man, what the fuck can I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? This nigga wanna do the little radio shit, we gonna do a video And we gonna post that shit R.I.P. the guys are R.I.P. guys up get real offended by the video Cause I got the nigga, I got a lookalike of the game in there You know what I mean? With a wow. pink bandana, the pink tight ass, gay ass G unit shirt, <laughs> G unit tennis shoes, can chase through the hood, mangled, kidnapped on the trunks, all types of shit. Crack your back when I'm blasting it yet. Your lungs collapse like an asthma attack. Nigga, I'll make it hard to back and wrap your back in your brother. You still Damn. Got lay on your back and try to nigga aim from the hood. The first album went good, and every week you get slapped by sugar. <laughs> We got the look alike game in there. And don't pose. You dead wrong, nigga. Saying y'all can't say from E1 photo to Sean. Surprise on your face. It was real hilarious. But niggas in this hood, you know what I mean? Was like, yo, nigga, I want to kill this nigga. You feel me? And it's like, come on, man. You don't want no problems, so stop running around talking that shit because you a fucking bitch, nigga. And that's straight out my mouth, nigga. I'm the motherfucking game, nigga. And you got it right, nigga. I'm on Black Wall Street in Compton. Anytime you want to find me, nigga, it's real hood shit going on, nigga. I got a motherfucking hole in my heart, nigga. I ain't no, I ain't no motherfucking no pussy-ass punk, nigga. I will break your motherfucking neck. What the fuck mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do? Just chill like, oh, man, that's the game, man. He a blood and he got this kid in. I don't give a fuck. I try to keep it cool. I try to be cool, but nigga, it's it's all over. Nigga, yug mouth on the motherfucking internet talking some crazy shit. But I just seen you in a club, nigga. And you was all smiles and hallmark cards, nigga. Now you talking <laughs> crazy on the motherfucking internet, nigga. But when I see you, I'ma beat the shit out of you. Now, like a lot of y'all shit, y'all mean it be like little hip hop. Shit. I can't take I can't take game seriously, bro. As a kid, I kind of did, but now I know his antics. I can't take him seriously no more, bro. He a dope ass artist for sure. Probably one of the greatest of all time. But as a I can't take him seriously, bro. Yeah, you know I, mean? cool I just can't. That's hip hop shit. You know I mean? <coughs> he said Black no Wall Street and Compton. But we playing in each other backyard. You feel me? You in my sandbox. I'm on your swing. Everybody want to hate on the game, man. I came into this shit with love for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. From the motherfucking legends to nigga underground, Mr. Underground. Nigga, I got love for everybody. I don't know why niggas want to hate on me. I ain't done nothing to none of you niggas. Whatever they little beats Whatever, is, man, I don't Whatever. feel, man, they should be able to come to it and be men. Fuck going on, Wax. Come see me man to man. Come talk to me. Don't go spread my shit on some wax or go do a little interview and downplay a motherfucker. Come talk to me like a man. We got to end all the beef. You know what I mean? The whole rapper like G unit, the whole beef. You feel me? 50 going to have to holler at Jay. I'm going to have to holler at Game. You know what I mean? His brother going to have to holler at, at my peoples, my, my bosses, how we rock. And, and that's how it's going to have to rock, man, on some real street that's shit. That's what and, I'm and saying. Alan Game literally started it. He starts... 70% of the beats that he be in, he like, man, why are niggas going that against me? Why are everybody trying to be? Bro, you start, you start every beef that you be in, bro. That's why I can't take him serious. That's why I'm saying I can't take him seriously, bro. I mean, a lot of niggas got to holler. He literally started it. The game released the documentary, which became an instant game platinum up. seller. He a However, comedian, bro. as record sales were soaring, rumors circulated that these two artists, known for their beef with others, game were now 50 pointing cent. their aim at each other. Here we go. If you talking real greasy. Nah, yo, this 50 is what started it. But I thought he saw a game at the club or the studio or whatever. And let him know he dissed him. Then they shook hands and all that. Then game went at him. He could have just stayed out of that shit. I don't know. I don't know. You know Who gives a fuck at this point? Game still with G -Unit. He said across the street around the block. He said his next album he ain't doing nothing for you. You gonna sell like 500,000 copies. That's what he said? 
That's what he said. The first three records he put out, I'm on them. West Side Story, How We Do, Hate It or Love It. Those are the three singles to date. So every record that he's selling is based on me being on his record with him. I'm mm. not going to say that he didn't help with the project because he played small part in, in the success of the documentary. But he, you know, he did the things that he was supposed to do. We were all at camp. The things that Eminem did for him. I, game you know dope as hell though. Don't get me wrong. Him. But but you didn't hear Dre on the radio or him on the radio talking about they helped 50 with this or, or Dre gave him in the club or you know what I'm saying? It's not about that. It's about us all making money and keeping it under one roof and everybody being successful. On the Funk Master Flex show, 50 Cent and G-Unit stated that the game was no longer part of G-Unit. That night at a concert in Long Beach, Game dissed all the members of G-Unit. Mm. <laughs> Do you think Game has a problem with the relationship that you have with the rest of the team? I think he has a problem. I think he has a problem with my position. What album is better, the game documentary or 50 Cent the Massacre? I think I heard some songs off the documentary and off both albums. I haven't heard both of the entire records, though. But I heard some songs off both of them, though. I can't really tell. Probably the, uh... I think I heard some of the, like, most of the documentary album. Like, Hate It or Love It, I heard that song before. Uh, I think West Side Story... It was another song I heard off of it. I can't tell. But that game is definitely a legend. Don't get me wrong. He a legend, though. I think he'd like to be 50 Cent. <coughs> like, the head. You know how sometimes you're in a situation where anything could spark. Jimmy Hampshire. A, 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 something to happen. And it was there. It been there. Kiss has been one of my homeboys from, you know, the early stages of my career on the underground mixtape level. And Fat Joe is a dude who I got love for in the streets. And I guess the spark was when Game said he didn't have no problem with Nas or, or them other guys. That that was that spark that, that I, I guess that 50 felt was the last draw and it was time to, to execute. I felt like what he was saying was disrespectful on the radio because everybody that I would have differences with at this point is cool with him. While Game was overseas, he was hearing things that 50 was saying and then the Vibe magazine came out. Ain't this the same dude? Oh yeah, I recognize the name. Ain't this the same dude that ordered, put out the hit to Tupac? That's tough. I ain't gonna ever conjure up yeah, all the things that's, that's been said and what's going Can't on on these radio stations, but uh, I guarantee you when I find out, man, I'm gonna make my decision on, you know, what, what what's my next move. G-Unit is here, 50's here, and game can be anywhere in between that and probably even bigger than that. And you can't suppress that. You can't suppress that with just G-Unit. I want it to be on Dre's level. On yeah, Jim, all right, all right. He respected as I a, knew I it. I, I recognize that. me in that aspect. I think he wanted me to be a G on a soldier, which I'm not. He got a whole coast that he represent. So it ain't the same thing. These ain't no guys out of your neighborhood. Third on, party in beef. Queens. This is a guy who has a whole coast that didn't have anything for 10 years. I don't even know how this whole beef came apart with me. I mean, came about with me and him because we're all under the same roof. But he started it, and uh, and you know I'm I was ready to finish it. Have you two tried to sit down or talk about? I it haven't or... even had a conversation with him. But there's no need for communication after so you've you... been that disrespectful. So you, this is this is it. This is it. This is it. Many industry figures felt the beef was nothing more than a way to promote record sales. However, on a cold day in March, those industry figures would be proven wrong. Well, a member of 50 Cent's entourage is recovering today from I heard about this. The 24-year-old Los Angeles man was reportedly shot in the leg last night while in the lobby of a Manhattan radio station. We were in New York. We didn't have cars. We just hopped out of cabs, and, and we went up there trying to, you know, defuse something and uh, talk to a guy that didn't want to talk. You know, he remained upstairs in the radio station and sent security down. Police say a group was exiting the building. They were leaving and they started to argue and someone pulled a gun. 50. Henchman got Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo's boy killed for Yo-Yo slapping. Who's Yo-Yo? Was not injured during the incident. Victim is in stable condition. No arrests have been made. On the security yeah, Jimmy Henchman, yeah. You know, 30 black Wall Street guys outside and they start shooting at the ground. Some shots skidded up. 
skidded up off the ground and hit my man in his leg a couple times. Most news reports got the story wrong. When the dust had settled, it was discovered that it was actually the game friend who had been shot, not one of 50's entourage. People say, uh, they, you know, they like to say, well, 50 Cent, you know, shot one of games, you know, cohorts or whatever, but that's not what happened. 50 Cent went out the back door. Oh, yeah, yo, I'm stupid. I said, yo, yo. Well, he said, yo, yo. I was like, who is yo, yo? Yeah, yo, okay. So, Jimmy Henchman sent, put a hit out on, uh, Oh, he got Tony Yayo boy killed. Okay. ...in his security, armed security, which were more, had more been than a likely typo. NYPD. All right, yeah, Tony, out. you good, and bro. Were, you know, Tony Yayo. They were, they were scared, so they pulled out guns, and dude got the shooting at the ground, skidded up, hit Kevin. He was bleeding in the snow, and I feel embarrassed by what happened, and I felt like uh, I let every all my guys down and, and leading them in that, you know, in that, in that situation where we had to retreat because we were, you know, we were out, out gun. My whole thing to game was, if we do this, if you do this, we fuck hip hop up. Mm. And it's hard for me to say that because I come from the streets too. And for me to look at game and say, dude, he shot your friend, but don't do anything. So. When we come from a, a culture of, you shoot me, I shoot you back. You kill one of my friends, I kill two of your friends. You kill three of my friends. That's what, how we understand uh, the resolution of me. And that's why I have to commend game because we talked them out of going that route. With the situation rapidly deteriorating and another showdown bound to take place, 50 Cent reached out to the game to squash the beat. On the anniversary of Biggie Small's death, the two met up at Harlem's mm. famed Schaumburg Center for Research and Black Culture to donate over 250000 to youth charities. I just want to apologize on behalf of myself, 50 Cent, and uh, to the fans, the uh, radio stations, our labels, and uh, I'm almost ashamed to, to have uh, participated in the things that went on the last couple of weeks. In the shadow of the untimely death of Biggie, Today marks the anniversary of his death. We're here today to show that people can rise above even the most difficult circumstances and together we can put negativity behind us. I feel like this is an opportunity for people to see us make peace. You know, it's funny throughout all this, I recently seen a video of Game dissing 50 Cent. So they still, not 50 beefing Game, I think he passed that, but Game still calling out 50, so this, this really, I mean, it kind of settled the beef in terms of, like, going to the streets, but game still calling out 50, so, yeah, I don't even, it is what it is. For them guys to say, you know what? Yeah, apologize to the audience, but not to each other. They they, they probably even shake hands, then say, I'm sorry, man. That's why I, it, it just be for show sometimes. I got a choice. I can do what I've been doing when something like this happened, or I can not mess up a game that is getting us paid. And it ain't only for the money. We're talking about a whole generation that if a retaliation would have happened, especially if it was a casualty, that would have been like how Pac and Biggie was, the whole game would have been crushed. We making a statement that is, uh a lot louder than the sound of just two voices. Oh, lyrically. Okay. And uh, we showing that uh, you can you can control your destiny, not only your destiny, but your future. I feel like that I'm out of a situation where I was uh, muffled, you know what I'm saying? It, it, like muffled like a killer dog or muffled like they do, you know, horses, man. I, I feel like now that I'm out of that situation, I can breathe a little bit and I'm able to do the things that I want to do as far as my company and my career is concerned because, uh, you know, being over there, just, I guess it's just one thing <laughs> for me. Fake so now, do we call game a fake gangster rapper only because he didn't retaliate when 50 or whoever did something to one of his friends? Or do we commend him for being a man to standing up and saying, you know what, this is bigger than me for, for an understanding history of hip hop and saying, you know what, I'm not going to take that route. But I'm going to go ahead to a press conference. And I'm going to take these pictures. 
And I'm gonna give a speech. Where the hug mind. at? Does that make him less of a gangster rapper? You know what I'm saying? And that's our responsibility. Do we encourage the bull crap and then criticize it later? Or do we encourage, hey, and commend and say, yo, you did the right thing by doing what you did? Because it was really in Gang's hand. It could have went either way. Trust me, it could have went, it could have been terrible. So critics question. That fake ass hood. Question whether the truth was sincere. But as for now, only time will tell. You know, I got the teardrop on some, you know, on some some fucked up shit in the streets. You know what it, you know how the teardrop comes about, man. And I kind of felt like with me having, you know, a new company and me having my guys and just new life. My son's almost two years old. You know, my mom is happy. You know, my, my, my grandmother's looking down on me and, and I'm finally doing something positive. I just donated. Uh, over, you know, a little bit under half a million dollars to the Compton Unified School District. So it's all about new life. You know what I'm saying? The butterfly is just a representation of new life. That's what it is. I did research on it and, and I, you know, I looked up something that meant or, 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 or kind of defined new life and it was a butterfly. Shit could have been a lion, but it was a fucking butterfly, man. So I got a butterfly tattooed on my face, but that don't, that don't mean that, that I won't run up and punch your fucking teeth out if you say something slick. It just means that I'm trying not to punch your teeth out, so watch your words. So With that's why he got the coast it. Oh my out God. of control. Many of the biggest names on the West Coast were summoned by Snoop Dogg, who put together the Protect the West Conference. Snoop wanted to squash beefs. Game got up there, talked about he didn't want any beefs with anybody. He's out there doing his thing, and, and the talk was that we got to support Game because he's the one out there representing the West Coast. He said the teardrop. Tat stands for being a stripper. Come on, bro. Every time you hear me say bloods, you don't hear me say crip. Or when you hear me say problem, you don't hear me say cuss. Snoop know what it is. The other reason I'm here is because I wanted to see dads and, and, and come up behind each other again. Compton is me. It's the West Coast. It's how I live, man. Four fingers up, two twisted in the middle. <laughs> the West Coast is big in this game. DLC. It's time for this voice to be heard again. In a nutshell, what happened today was it was an organization of all of the West Coast rappers, you know, past and present, coming together, trying to get on one accord, on one page, trying to work out our differences, trying to squash all our beefs. It just, it, it looks successful. I'm, I'm proud to, that, I was, that I was in attendance, and I'm proud to, to have seen all of those West Coast rappers in their line, man. And like I said, at this point, you know what I'm saying, in, in hip hop, I feel like the West Coast. Yeah, this thing. Was that resolution good? Was that was that a good ending? Was that a good resolution? Y'all let me know. Man, y'all y'all let me know, bro. Man, this was a fun live. How long we been live? For almost five hours. Was that a good resolution at the end? Where they just made up? Because I ain't gonna lie. That I don't know about that because I continuously hop on social media and still see game dissing everybody. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess so. I guess so. I mean, at the time, I guess. It could have went left. It could have went to the streets and all. Uh, I think I did the first beef. Did I? Yeah, I did do the first beef. Deep. Yeah, bitch ass. This nigga. Some sort of. Man, you said a million yeah, I did do the first beef. You got to rewind the uh, stream back. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if it's another part, bro. Bro, game beefing all all three parts. Game beefing one part one part two part three, and now at the end he won. I feel it though. I right, I guess that was a good resolution, bro. The first beef you did was edited. Let me see. Cause I let me see. I gotta get out of here though. I ain't gonna lie. If it, I can I can review the uh, Ja Rule and Fifty Cent one another live stream for sure. We've been on here five six hours, bro. I appreciate everybody that came through. If it's a if it's another beef I miss, I'm gonna review it on my next live stream. I promise that. But I appreciate everybody that came through the stream. Fun ass live Sunday, fun day ass live stream, man. 
want to keep on doing one of these, like basically watching documentaries. I'm going to start doing this a lot more. But appreciate everybody that came through, donated, whatever, came through, showed love, had a great, this is probably the best live stream we ever did.